Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku became a demon slayer part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist so let's start the video. Izuku Midoriya was reminded that this world was not fair. That not all men are created equal. It was a normal day for a 12 year old Izuku got out of bed went to school and tried to keep his head down so no one would notice him, especially the explosive star of his school Katsuki Bakugo. He was by no means proper hero material, just a kid who got lucky and born with an incredible quirk that made everyone around him feed his ego. Though after school Izuku could work on his hero journals and find hero activity around town. Today was good. He was able to see the new hero Hawks in action taking on a man who was a giant puffer fish. Izuku was amazed at how Hawks was able to maneuver around puffer's spikes. Izuku was on his way a few blocks down where he heard Death Ems was fighting a bear man. When he heard something near the park. What did you think you were better than me screamed the master of Ego Katsuki Bakugo. Izuku saw him and his cronies standing above a group of kids from another school in the middle of the park. Bakugo stopped yelled Izuku earning the explosive user's glare. I'm sorry did you say something Deku? said Bakugo, sporting a mad grin at seeing his favorite punching back. Izuku began sweating yo you can't beat up people Koch and it isn't becoming of a hero. He said nervously while trying to look for a way out of the situation. Bakugo began to march straight up to Izuku while a sinking feeling began to take a hold of him as he knew what was about to come next. Izuku began to block out Bakugo rant about him just showing so and so how much better he was Izuku had heard all of this before he had grown up with Bakugo. All the way from when they were friends until now. Izuku didn't try anything as he already knew that the cronies had already blocked his escape, like they did whenever someone tried to pick a fight with Bakugo. Well aren't you gonna say something you damn nerd? Well D.E.K.U. Whether it was the constant taunts or if it was Izuku knowing nothing could change what was about to happen, Izuku looked back at Bakugo with a hard glare and calmly stated you will never be a hero not because you're weak but because no one will accept a hero who acts like you. This caught everyone by surprise and the glare just made Bakugo's blood boil to a point Izuku could say that was the worst beating he had ever received from Bakugo. He eventually left with cronies after leaving Izuku on the ground, angered that Izuku would ever say someone as great as him would never be a hero. I'll show that useless nerd when I become the number one hero. He'll see when everyone sees how great I am thought Bakugo as he left Izuku on the ground. Izuku laid there on the ground for what felt like hours, wondering what he was going to do. If I don't stand up to him how am I going to be a hero? Maybe I should just give up, he thought. These are some good notes. Ha thought Izuku as he looked up and saw someone sitting near him reading his notes. Izuku slowly got up and got a better look at the newcomer. It was a man with blackish burgundy hair with a scar on the left side of his forehead, with Hanafuda ear rings on his ears. He was dressed old-fashioned real old-fashioned in a green checkered haori with some kind of uniform underneath. Izuku could tell he was quite athletic, maybe a hero in training perhaps. Um who are you? Oh I'm sorry I saw you laying there while I was out for a walk. When I came to see if you were okay I saw your notes here on the ground next to you and couldn't help myself. These are fantastic. You got some great analytical skills and a good pair of eyes. The man said with a sunny smile for a moment Izuku could have sworn he was on a clear lake. When the man smiled, it was so honest and pure. Um thanks mister said Izuku as he got and started to pick up his things. I should be going now. You want to be a hero don't you? Izuku turned to see the man looking at him. It wasn't a cold glare. It was as if the man was waiting for Izuku to do something. But he wasn't sure what. Yes more than anything. He stated with an amount of confidence that even surprised him. You want fame and fortune. No, I want to save people. I want to save people with a smile on my face like all might. Even though he had just been beaten Izuku became more determined than ever to be a hero. Do you think you can be a hero as you are now? Reality was cruel. Izuku knew that he was born quirkless and was too weak to even stand up to someone he thought of as a friend. Some people are more lucky than others, said the man as he stood up. Some people are born with people who are willing to train them or with talent that allows them to excel more than others or in that boy's case he was born with a great quirk. Though it definitely hasn't done him any good for personality that for sure. Wait you saw that. Izuku had just assumed that he came after. To close such gapes people need the drive and determination to become better despite their circumstances. The man bent down a little to look Izuku in the eyes. Do you think you have what it takes to pursue your dreams? Izuku looked down for a moment before meeting the man's eyes again. As I am right now I can't but that won't stop me. I will work hard and I will get strong enough so I can save people with a smile on my face. The man gave another sunny smile good answer. Then we will begin right now. What? There's no better time to start than the present. The man said as he took a few steps away before stopping and taking a deep breath. A good run should be a good start for your training. Training. Izuku was confused even though he had just met this man he was slowly jogging after him. 
He didn't know why but for some reason he could tell this man honest and trustworthy. And Izuku couldn't argue if he wanted to pursue his dreams he needed to start training to cover the gap. Izuku then quickly caught up to the man. What are you gonna huff train me? Huff, who are you? MMMM I guess you could say a hero of old. Huh, pay attention. Use your eyes and pay attention to my breathing. Focus on the breathing and try to mimic it. Izuku was confused and ready to call it quits until he tried to breathe like the man lucky it was still early spring and he could see the man's breath in the chilled air. Izuku didn't know what he expected but when he tried to breathe like the man running became easier. Incredible so that he felt like he could have run for hours, maybe even days. They both kept running for a while. Izuku didn't know he had lost track of time and just tried to keep up the breathing technique. Before he knew it they came to the bottom of the mountain. When they stopped Izuku was huffing and puffing and felt like he would collapse at any moment but when he looked over at the man he saw that he was perfectly fine as if their massive run was nothing more than a walk down a city block. If anything this just made Izuku even more curious about this mysterious man. Hey huff your huff quirk. Oh I don't have a quirk. Izuku shot up looking at the man in shock and were at the bottom of a mountain. They ran all the way here from a city park in Mustafu which was in the middle of the city and Mustafu wasn't anywhere close to a mountain they must have ran 20 miles to get here. Wait a minute we're miles away from the city. We ran here. I ran here. Izuku was surprised at his own sudden realization on how far he just ran but the man in front looked like he made this run daily. Now Izuku was sure he could learn something incredible from this man. Maybe even something that could make up for his lack of a quirk. He now saw this man as his ticket to become a hero. Over here, said the man as he walked to what looked like a small shack. You can put your backpack in here. What exactly are we doing now? Said Izuku as he slowly made his way to the shack before the man put his hand up signaling for Izuku to stop. This in a way you can say is the point of no return. If you put your bags down and follow me up this mountain you will begin a test that will push you to your limits and I warn you this test can be fatal and there is a very high chance you will get hurt. The man paused for a moment to let his words sink in though to his surprise the boy in front of him had a determined look. Though if you pass this test you will be trained and will be one step closer to becoming a hero, do you accept this challenge? Izuku's look of determination didn't falter. He walked towards the small shack and put his bag inside. I accept your challenge. Then follow me, said the man as he began to walk up the mountain. I'll admit I'm a bit surprised at how little hesitation you had to accept this test. Well it's like you said I need to be ready to put my life on the line if I want to be a hero and I'm already rather behind than a lot of kids my age so I need to work several times harder to make up for it. Is that all? No, I need to do this. I need to prove to myself that I can become a hero and in less than a day you have already taught me so much. That breathing technique alone will help a lot during long nights while I'm on patrol. That's a good one to remember but you're going to need a bit more to pass this test. You're going to need to use everything I've told you today and everything you've learned from those heroes and what you've gained from that explosive boy from earlier. Izuku was a bit confused about what he had gained from Bakugo that could help him. He was about to ask when he noticed that the fog began to cover that mountain and air was beginning to get real thin. It was getting hard to breathe. Do not worry. I used to walk up this mountain daily as part of my training when I was your age. I know this place by heart. The man stopped dead in his tracks. Prepare yourself. Izuku Midoriya, your test is about to begin. Right? Wait. When did I tell you my name now that I think about it? We never did introduce ourselves. How do you know my name? The man ignored Izuku's question we are near the top of Mount Senjiri to pass this test Izuku your goal will be to get back down to the bottom of the mountain before sunrise if you do this then you pass. Good luck, said the man before he was enveloped by the fog and disappeared. Wait, he said at sunrise. What time is it? Izuku yelled before turning around and rushing down the mountain. Mom is going to freak out when she wa was all Izuku could say before he felt his foot hit a wire. And by the time he processed the wire a small boulder was launched right at him. Izuku was able to dodge the boulder. Click Izuku hit the ground as several shurikens impaled the tree right behind him. He isn't pulling his punches. I could really die here. How am I supposed to get out of this? The fog is so thick I can only see only a few feet in front of me. That's when the man's words echoed in his head. All the things I've learned. Calm down Izuku. Try breathing. Once Izuku calmed down a little. He took a few steps down the mountain then he noticed how odd the ground was in front of him. He kicked a rock only for it to fall into a pitfall. I was lucky I was able to notice that. Wait a minute. Izuku brought a hand to his face. My eyes. He mentioned how well I noticed details. I just need to look out for anything that's too out of place. He thought as he moved around the pitfall. But if I keep going at this pace, I'll never make it down in time. Izuku sprinted down the mountain. A hero wouldn't hesitate. Hesitating could cost lives and even cost me my own life. He thought as he dodged another rock and then jumped over a wire. My reflexes are better than I thought. When could I react so quickly? So this is what he meant by Kachin giving me something. 
I've been dodging Kachin for so long my reflexes are better than most. Izuku's confidence grew as he sidestepped a group of blades. Alright let's do this. Oh, Izuku was able to make it to the bottom of the mountain as the glow of the sun was on the horizon. He was so exhausted he could tell he was going to lose consciousness. He was able to make it to the walls of the shack where he put his back. He leaned against the wall and slowly slid down the side. He was covered from head to toe with dirt and small wounds all over his body. He had aches and pains that he knew would last days before he would be able to move properly again. You made congrats. Izuku's vision was becoming spotty. He could barely make out the man as he walked towards him. Don't worry none of your wounds are life-threatening and I have a friend that can fix you right up. The man kneeled down to take a closer look at Izuku. I'm sorry nowadays such form of training wouldn't be accepted but if you're going to become strong enough to reach your goal of becoming a pro hero then I'm afraid this was necessary. Are you going to train me? Izuku was slightly afraid of his answer. He would like a good rest before he tried anything else. Though his worries washed away as he saw the man have such a sad look in his eyes. Don't worry you will be trained but not by me. This was definitely a confusing day for Izuku. Looking back he was beginning to wonder if he was sane following this man. Do not worry Izuku you are quite sane. What? And no I'm not reading your mind. This was the only way I could help you. For you see I don't have long for this world. Izuku could only stare at this man. He may not have known him for a very long but even he could tell this day has changed his life for the better he could actually see himself becoming stronger. He could see himself standing up to Bakugo. He could see himself becoming a hero. You're dying. The man gave Izuku a bright sunny smile before slowly taking his Hanafuda earrings off before placing them into Izuku's hands. I can tell you are the right choice with these there is no way he'll say no to training you. Don't give up. Follow your dreams. Become a hero. I know you can. Before the man could stand Izuku grabbed his arm with his open hand. Wait, what's your name? Tata Tanjiro said a voice but it came from neither the man nor from Izuku. Izuku looked to see a pale teenage boy in a white kimono staring in shock at the man in green. Hello Yushiro it's good to see you again. Tanjiro, Kamado Tanjiro. The pale boy visible shaking. Tanjiro Izuku repeated. Yes, that is my name said the now named Tanjiro before turning to Yushiro. Yushiro I would like to watch over this boy and train him. He wishes to be a pro hero someday so please train him well. Izuku knew now he was losing his battle to stay awake because Tanjiro looked like he was slowly fading away. Tanjiro what's going on? Don't worry Izuku, you're in great hands, I trust Yushiro with my life. He will make you into a pillar in no time. He said this when he suddenly became see-through. And Yushiro, this boy is very talented, he will make a fine warrior someday. Izuku could no longer see Tanjiro and before he lost consciousness Tanjiro said one last thing to him. Welcome to the Demon Slayer Corp. Izuku didn't know how but found himself in total darkness. He couldn't see anything or hear anything it was as if all of his senses were somehow being numb. All Izuku could do was keep walking and he did until he saw something in the far distance. A light that seemed to be far away as Izuku walked closer to the light he began to hear a rhythm of a drum that slowly got louder as he got closer to the light. Soon he could feel the light breeze on his skin and could smell something burning. He could even somehow taste the light itself. Before Izuku could think on how he knew that what he was tasting was the light he finally got close enough to see what it was. It was a masked man dancing in a circle of torches. The dance mesmerized Izuku. As the man continued to dance Izuku could see the beauty of his movements. He could smell the scent of the dance, feel the breeze dance was making on his skin. He could hear the rhythm of the movements and even taste it as if Izuku was the one that was dancing. Flickering at the edge of Izuku vision made Izuku look away from the man to see another circle of touches exactly the same as the other one. Izuku walked into the new circle as he too wanted to try the dance he saw. Izuku watched the man for a moment before trying his best to mimic the man's moves. Izuku fumbled a bit from either moving out of sync or also trying to simultaneously try to dance and watch at the same time. Though after a few tries he began to get the hang of it. As Izuku began to dance his movements became more fluid and he began to tune the other dancer out. He continued this and as he did he could feel his senses grow stronger with each movement he made until the world became clear. The world was no longer dark as he could see the mountains around him, hear the animals, smell the grass, feel each movement in the air, and taste the morning air. He didn't dare stop yet. He kept moving increasing his pace until it seemed that the world was see-through not until each breath looked as solid as a rock. Before Izuku realized his body was on fire though not regular fire. It was as if Izuku's body was the sun itself. He was filling the world with light so bright he was shining more than the sun. Then he suddenly realized he actually stopped dancing. He looked around a bit and then noticed the man had stopped dancing himself and was looking right at him. Did I do this? The man brought his hand to the mask. Yes you did Izuku revealing himself to be Tanjiro. Tanjiro Izuku stood there for a moment not really sure what to say. He was angry at him for the mountain death traps and for being way too cryptic than was necessary. 
But he was thankful as well he didn't know exactly why but he knew he had just experienced something no one else has and that this experience will be the key for him moving forward. So he decided to ask the only thing that he could think of. Why, why show me, of all people this? Tanjiro gave him a look of confusion. I'm nobody, I'm not strong, I'm not fast, and I don't have a quirk, so why do this for me? Izuku, do you really think anyone can do what you just did? I'll admit some people could do this but it would take years, maybe even decades to do this with serious dedication and you were able to pull it off in one evening. You were able to shine as bright as the sun and you can do that for the whole world to see. What did I just do exactly? Was it a quirk of some kind cause all of my senses just became heightened to the point I could tell what was inside things very far away and that alone could have several applications for search and rescue or even training and by that extension could even help in several fights or even mumble mumble mumble. As Izuku carried on Tanjiro could only smile at the boy who would change the world. I'm sorry I wish I could tell you more about the breath of sun and the other breathing styles. Tanjiro raised his hand to stop Izuku from asking why. I can't help you though Yushiro can. He'll explain and answer all of your questions and more. I just hope he has matured more than how I had left all those years ago. Though I don't know if he has moved on from Tameo yet. Tameo, the loved one he had lost so long ago. Tanjiro said with a sad face. She was a good friend. Izuku was going to say his condolences though Tanjiro cut him off with a sunny smile. Either way I wish you luck in your journey Izuku may your dreams bring you great joy. It's time to wake up. Oh, Izuku opened his eyes and realized something immediately. This wasn't his bed as Izuku got up he also felt how sore his body was and that someone changed his clothes for him as he was wearing a light green sleeping robe. He looked around and saw what he assumed was the inside of an old-fashioned Japanese house. Seeing no point in just laying there, Izuku got up and made his way to the door. As he exited the room he came face to face with a girl. She had dark hair and a ponytail. She had brown eyes and looked or as Izuku would guess was a few years older than him so maybe around 17 or 18 years old. She was wearing a purple flower pattern kimono and was holding a tray with a tea kettle. Ah you're awake my master has been wondering when you would wake up, she said in a neutral tone. Izuku had no idea how to respond since no girl had ever really talked to him before and he didn't know what to do. Please follow me, was all she said as she passed him and continued down the hall. Izuku, not knowing what else to do, decided to follow her. They made their way to an above-average living room area that opened up looking down the mountain. In the center of the room sat the pale boy in the white kimono that Izuku remembered before he had lost consciousness. He was currently sitting at a small table looking at a tablet. As they entered the boy looked up to see them. You're awake, that's good. My name is Yushiro. Please have a seat we have much to discuss. Oh okay as Izuku sat across from Yushiro not really knowing what he had gotten himself into. They sat in silence for a moment as they looked at each other wondering what to expect from the other as the girl began to serve them both tea. Izuku thanked the girl as he began to drink the tea. I have many questions for you young man, but the first would be who are you? Said Yushiro breaking the silence. Oh my name is Izuku Midoriya thank you for taking care of me while I was out of it. Yes, speaking of you collapsing at the bottom of the mountain, what were you doing there and why did you have these? He said, putting the Hanafuda earrings on the table. Oh Mr. Tanjiro gave me those. Yushio and the girl froze in place with a look of shock on their face as the room grew uncomfortable as the silence grew. The girl recovered first as her shock turned to anger as a knife suddenly appeared in her hand. Don't play with us boy. Do you really take us for fools? She yelled pointing the blade at Izuku. Whoa wait I'm telling the truth he saw him too. Pointing to Yushiro. Tomo stop and put that knife down right now. He is our guest until I say otherwise. Yes master. She said suddenly putting the knife down on the table, losing all of her anger. Yushiro gave her a look to make sure she wouldn't do anything before looking at a frightened Izuku. I apologize for Tomo. She can jump the gun at times and yes I saw what I saw when I found you but I would like you to tell your part. Now how about you explain everything from the beginning? Izuku then began to explain everything from how he first met Tanjiro to his gauntlet of death down the mountain he even told them about his dream he had. He had no idea how they were going to react by the end of his tale Izuku could tell they were processing this information differently. Tomo gave a look at Izuku that said she didn't believe him but she gave Yushiro a look of concern as he was thinking very deeply about this information. Yushiro was in deep thought until finally he stood up from where he was sitting. Please wait here for a moment. I need to grab a few things. As he left the room leaving Izuku with Tomo. Um, could it be possible for me to make a phone call? My mom is probably worried I've been gone for a whole night, said Izuku, worried his mom hasn't melted down yet, mmmm. That may be a little harder than you might think, she said, giving him a one-eyed look. For starters I guess I should mention you've been out for four days. What his mom was beyond melted by now. Izuku fell down just at the thought of her crying. Oh man she is going to freak out. How am I going to explain this one? Um you okay? She asked probably shouldn't mention the fact that he somehow stumbled on a government secret just yet and his chances of seeing his mom again are getting a little slim. 
Oh well no skin off my back. She thought as Izuku wept. As long as he doesn't do anything to master Yushiro he'll live a little longer. As she simply drank her tea. The door slid open revealing Yushio holding a picture frame and a bakken. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. He looked to see Izuku sobbing on the ground. Is he alright? I may have mentioned that he's actually been out for four days and he didn't take it so well. Midori I need you to take a look at this. He said as he put the picture frame in front of Izuku. Izuku looked up at the picture. It was an old black and white photo and even though the picture itself wasn't the best quality Izuku could make out, one of the faces is that Mr. Tanjiro. When was this taken? Over 400 years ago. What no way, said Izuku. Looked at him in disbelief that's impossible. The first quirk ever recorded was 240 years ago. There's no way he's still alive today if this picture is that old. He isn't alive. He died of old age 400 years ago. I was there when he passed. Izuku could only stare at the supposed teenager in front of him. Even though it sounded impossible Izuku was slowly piecing things together. Yushiro sounded wise and even Izuku could feel as if he was older than he looked as if he has been walking on this earth for years how. Old are you? Yushiro simply held the bakken out for Izuku. Come show me the dance you saw in your dream. Izuku took the bakken before he was led outside to a small training area where he saw a familiar circle of unlit torches. Izuku walked into the circle and after looking at Yushiro's gaze, Izuku began the dance that he saw in his dream. When Izuku started the dance he expected himself to just go with the movements he didn't expect the same levels of feelings to occur as it did in his dream but it did. As he started to pick up the pace his senses started to go into overdrive. Izuku kept going faster than it felt as if the bakken he was holding lit on fire. Wait, it is on fire, screamed Izuku as he dropped the flaming bakken before trying to stomp it out. I'm so sorry I didn't mean for that to happen. How in the world did that even happen in the first place? No way he heard Tomo yell. Izuku looked over to see both of them in complete awe. You can use the breath of the sun. How in the world can you do that? She yelled in disbelief while Yushiro remained silent. What? Okay what is the breath of the sun and what exactly did I just do? A little scared but also a little excited did he just unlock his quirk. You just used an ancient ability that predates quirks. A power so rare I didn't think I would ever see it again. Said Yushiro as he picked up the burnt bakken. Izuku Midori you have done something that no one else has done in over a hundred years. This ability you now possess was instrumental in taking down one of if not the greatest threat to mankind has ever faced. I am willing to train you and teach you everything about this power and tell you everything including the origin of quirks and other secrets that very few people in this world know. Do you accept? Izuku stood there stunned for a moment. The amount of information in Yushiro's speech opened his curiosity. And this ability could be the key to his dreams. And these people are the first to ever be willing to help with his dream. I accept please teach me. Teach me how to be a hero. Yushiro smiled. I don't know about a hero but a demon slayer should do just fine. Katsuki Bakugo was having a bad day. Mainly because he was currently being suffocated by a giant sludge villain trying to use him as a skin suit. As Bakugo struggled trying to break free from the slime he saw around him the heroes who were just staring at him helpless to do anything. He wanted to scream at them for being useless and not doing anything only to see the destruction his own explosions were making. For some reason it reminded of the past few years. His life flashed before him, the day he got his quirk, the day he announced he would be the number one hero in the world. Then he remembered the last day he saw his childhood, the guilt he felt when Ms. Midoriya came looking for her son. He clearly saw the sadness in her eyes as she cried for her son, the rage in his own mother's eyes as she told him the amount of damage he has done. It was the first time he remembered her telling him off without actually yelling at all. Then today when he told everyone he was going to UA. Those hypocrites actually tell him off for causing their fellow classmate to run away or worse be the cause of his death when none of them not even the teachers did anything to stop him or save Izuku. Now he may die right here. Tashinori Yagi stood there at the back of the crowd watching the scene unfold. The number one hero in the world. All Might felt useless sitting there having to watch. What kind of hero am I if I can't save a single child? Hey mister you mind hold this box for a moment. Tashinori looked over his shoulder to see a young man with messy green hair wearing a green hiori hold out a large wooden box. Without thinking he grabbed the box and almost dropped under the weight. Wow, hey kid. He then noticed the young man had a katana at his side. Is this kid a hero? No he's too young to be a hero. Even for one in training All Might was about stop him when he disappeared. Everyone in the crowd felt a rush of air as what appeared to be a flash of lightning pass over them. Past the heroes and heading right towards the villain. In a split second Bakugo was ripped from the villain's grasp and was on the ground. Bakugo coughed as he tried to get air into his lungs. He was able to get to steady his breathing and got on his hands and knees trying to get up. Long time no see Bakugo froze. He looked up to his savior to see the back of a man in green with Hanafuda earrings. The man slowly turned his head towards him. Good to see you again Bakugo. Deku, you little brat screamed the villain as he launched himself at Izuku. 
Izuku calmly began to step forward as he grabbed the hilt of his katana. Form 11, Lull. For a moment everyone there could have sworn they were on the surface of a calm lake that was pure and undisturbed until a ripple appeared with Izuku at the center. The next thing everyone saw was the villain blown to pieces being scattered across the alleyway. For a moment silence before the crowd erupted in cheers. The kid did it that was awesome. He blew the monster away. He's strong. No that was definitely a speed quirk like Samurai X. He didn't blow the villain away, said the hero Death Arms. What do you mean? Asked a fellow hero Mount Lady. Death Arms continued to watch the swordsman as he butt his blade back into his shelf. From what I can tell he sliced the villain so many times the force from all those blows blew him apart. Makes sense said Kamui Woods. One moment he was just standing there with his sword sheathed and the next it was in his hand and the villain was in pieces. Okay but what was with the calming lake? She said noticing the weird look of her co-workers. What? You saw the lake too. It but have something to do with his quirk. Hey wait kid. Yelled Death Arms as he saw Izuku making his way through the crowd. Tashinori stood there dumbfounded, not sure what to say to the he had to think of something quick as Izuku was approaching. How did you do that? I had an excellent teacher said Izuku as he took the box from the skeleton. He paused for a moment. You should really retire soon or take it easy it doesn't look like your body can handle too much anymore. But how did this kid know about his injuries? Who is this kid? Hold it kid you can't just leave yet. Yelled death arms as he and the other heroes made their way through the crowd. I'm sorry I need to return to my teacher. D.E.K.U. screamed Bakugo still using that name Hakachin. As he smiled, Izuku took a deep breath before he was suddenly surrounded by mist. Please tell my mother she will have to wait just a bit longer before I can come home, he said as the mist enveloped him. When the mist cleared he was gone. Oh, after the whole incident with the slime villain and the mysterious appearance of the young swordsman, Pakugo, the heroes and All Might were taken into the police station, where it was revealed to the heroes that the swordsman was a boy who disappeared two years ago. Whereas my son came a scream caused everyone to turn to see a green-haired woman standing in the doorway. Everyone could tell from her eyes she has been crying. A lot. Hello you must be Ms. Midoriya. I'm Detective Naomasa, said the detective as he pulled out a chair for her. Please have a seat. Meow. This sound caught everyone's attention. They all looked to see a cat coming through the door. A cat, said Death Arms. Who let the cat in asked Mount Lady. Is it a stray? Kamui Woods growing some branches to grab the cat. Chacha how'd you get here? Said Inko as she went and picked up the cat. I'm sorry this is my cat. I don't know how she got here. I left her at home. Maybe she knew that you needed some comfort animals will go to great lengths for their owners. Said Death Arms with tears as he remembered his loyal dog. Such a brave dog. One that's a cat. Mount Lady poking Death's arms back to earth. Two why were you to use your quirk on the cat? She asked Kamui Woods. Well about a week ago I helped a child get his cat down from a tree and well I never owned a cat myself so that's when I learned how. Furious they could be. He said a bit embarrassed. My son do you know where my son is? She said everyone could tell the desperation in her voice. It was apparent that she has been trying to find her son for a very long time. We are doing what we can and we were hoping you could clarify something for us. She nodded. Can you please tell us what your son's quirk the only files we have here says that your son is quirkless. He is quirkless. He never developed a quirk. What are you sure ma'am? We can confirm with several heroes and other eyewitnesses that he moved at super speed, caused a mass hallucination and somehow created a thick mist to get away. My son has never been able to do anything like that are you sure we're talking about my Izuku here? That Hugo finally spoke up confirming it was him, telling her how even though he's changed he still knew his old nickname. He wanted me to tell you he was sorry and that you will have to wait for him a little longer. And Ko began to cry partly tears of joy and relief knowing her son is still alive and tears of sadness and pain that he wasn't coming home held her cat as she quietly began crying. Tashinori sat there watching the scene while also glancing at Izuku's file mainly the part about him being quirkless or was quirkless. The boy did just save his old classmate like a hero but he knew of a way for someone to get a quirk and he just showed several different ability and if his theory was correct then this boy Izuku made a deal with the devil himself. Ms. Midoriya there was one more thing he did mention before he disappeared, catching their attention. After I gave him his box back I asked him how he was able to do well whatever he did and he said he had a great teacher. Do you know what teacher he's talking about? Though my son has never mentioned a teacher or any kind he was always quiet and an introvert he didn't really have any friends, said Inko hoping whoever was this teacher was keeping her little boy safe. The detective saw where All Might's questioning was really. You don't really think this has something to do with him do you? All for one he whispered to his friend. I'm not sure. I defeated him years ago but it's sounding more and more like it by the second. I just can't think of any other way this kid could have gotten multiple quirks all might harden his gaze as the picture of the boy on the wall. It might be too late for him but I will try and do what I can but if this is his handy work and if he is alive. Then this boy's vile demon of a teacher may soon know my fist of justice once more. Oh, a chew sneeze you Shiro. Master are you alright? You're not getting sick are you? 
said Tomo overly worried for her master's health. I can't get sick Tomo, said Yushiro as he continued to read on his tablet. But you sneezed. There are several reasons for someone to sneeze. Not all of them are due to illness. Yushiro Sensei. Tomo Chan I'm back Izuku said as he walked into the room. Welcome back Izuku Kun. Welcome back did you get what I asked for? Asked Yushiro as he set down his tablet and grabbed the remote on the table. Yep as Izkuk sat the box down opening it up to reveal several books. Got them all right here. Perfect said Yushiro as Tomo asked what the books were. They're old books that once belonged to a family that was a descendant of an old friend of mine. But they were stolen a little over a century ago and the family has long since lost their roots. I'll keep an eye on them for a while and have them restored. After that I'll most likely give them to a museum. Though it looks like you had an eventful day. Everyone looked at the TV as it showed a recap of today's events. Sorry sensei I know the guy who was in danger and I couldn't just sit by and do nothing. Izuku said as he bowed an apology. Yashiro raised an eyebrow while Tomo began to brought his hand to Izuku and flick him on the head. Izuku I don't care that you helped out your friend in fact I'm quite content with you helping out those heroes. In fact you will have several opportunities to do so again here in the near future. This got curious looks from his wards. Since I began training you I've reconnected with several people who are in need of some assistance. The government has been more than hesitate to allow it. By the way, did you ever find out what happened that made them so jumpy about you doing really everything? Asked Tomo. Apparently the one person they don't want anyone to know about got into a really big fight with All Might. That must be how he got injured. That makes sense. I think I meet him today. Did he look like a skeleton with his internal organs in ruin? Yeah, I could just tell that he looked terrible. Is there anything you can do for him? Certainly. The only problem is that I've never met him before. I only knew his predecessor, Nana Shimura. The last time I spoke to her she told me she passed her quirk to All Might, offered her help then with her quirk and even to watch over her child but she admitted that I should stay far away from any of them. Even though we were on speaking terms, I could tell that the truth shook her. So I never met All Might but if given the chance I wouldn't mind helping him. Don't get too excited Izuku you can't just bring him here. We have rules for several reasons, reminded Tomo. So All Might and All for One got into a fight and the government got scared and said you couldn't leave them out. They requested I lie low for a while. Tomo I've told you before I've learned working with some people is better than working against them or going off and doing things my way, said Yushiro noticing the slight anger in her voice. Besides these years gave me an opportunity to teach Izuku, reevaluate the schedule for a few projects and it gave the government time to quiet things down, to make sure that all for one didn't leave any information about my past that could cause a panic. Izuku couldn't help but agree with the government on that one. He did feel bad for his sensei but with how he reacted to learning he was an 800-year-old demon and the nightmare origins of quirks. He could only imagine how the populace would react if they learned the truth. It wouldn't be pretty. Though now they are letting up a bit and I have a few people who need help with some very interesting projects that I wouldn't mind taking a look at. So I'm going to need you to be my go-between either delivering information or making runs for me. And if you so happen to come across a villain or two while you're out you have my full permission to intervene if you feel the need to. Really but won't that cause problems I don't have a license. I mean I know my abilities isn't a quirk but I still need a license to do hero work. Tomo began to laugh. Izuku, Master Yashiro knows so many people in the government he could make all your crimes disappear with a simple phone call. I don't know about that, said Yashiro while he drank some tea. Though I can't deny that I do know some people who will more than happily brush any vigilante work you do under the rug. Really? Oh yes, remember those people who need help with those projects. Izuku nodded. Some of them are also people in the government and they will happily look the other way for our help. They would be willing to turn the other way for us. Tomo chuckled. Izuku, Master is just being modest. He has several world leaders on speed dial. Heck at the turn of the 21st century he owned half of Japan. What really? No Tomo, I didn't own half of Japan. I admit I began to invest a lot into real estate but that had its purposes and I do admit I know some powerful people but I don't have them on speed dial. Master, please be honest if you picked up the phone and asked for I Island right now and I'm not talking about one department. The whole thing right now and tell us they wouldn't give it to you. Silence. Yushiro couldn't honestly answer. Even he couldn't deny if he wanted to he could have several people eating out of the palm of his hand. See, no way really. Tomo held her head high. Master is well respected throughout the whole world. The amount he has contributed to the world so staggering. They come crawling at the drop of a hat. She said with pride. As Izuku stared in awe. Yushiro sighed. I can't deny I know people, but calm down Tomo. I wasn't that bad with my lady was I he thought. Back to the subject at hand. Are you up to being my running man for a little bit? It will be excellent for training. Of course. Are you sure? Asked Tomo you're finally able to cut the boulder and you have learned to use quite a few breathing styles. So you have master's blessing to leave the mountain, don't you want to see your mother? That question cut deep into Izuku. I want to but I'm not ready for that just yet. 
Izuku wouldn't deny he wanted to, but with everything he has learned and done, he needed time to think. He also just got permission to leave the mountain. He's been stuck there for over a year, but he didn't feel ready. He felt guilty and both his friend and sensei knew that. They also felt guilty. Neither of them liked the idea of keeping him away from his mother. Though with the secrets that they had told him they knew to a degree this was necessary. Even if Yushiro had his mother under watch just in case this somehow pushed her over the edge. Yushiro never really tried to make connections with anyone mainly because he would outlive them but Izuku became his student and someone who he could trust even with some of his deepest secrets. As for Tomo Izuku became somewhat of a little brother to her. Before he came around it was really just her and her master. Yushiro knew he needed to say something. Izuku, I know you feel like you don't know when you can see her again or explain everything but you need to decide on a date to see her and I won't accept any date past the UA entrance exam. You still want to go to UA? Yes. Yes sir. I know for a fact your teachings will help me become a great hero. He said giving a sunny smile. The exam is in 10 months and in those final months I would like to increase my training so 5 months that's when I will see her. I'll put a reminder on the calendar, said Tomo as she cleared the table. Don't worry Izuku will be right there with you. Tomo is right. We may not be able to tell her everything but we will be there for you. Thank you sensei. As waterfalls sprouted from his eyes. I know you're touched but would you mind not ruining our floors? Oh. And so the days continued as several sightings of a boy in green taking on muggers, gangsters and other criminals of the underworld. Currently bank robbers. All right boys. Are those hostages tied up? Yeah boss. They ain't going anywhere have those cops brought the van like we asked? Not yet. Said the boss robber as he looked outside he could clearly see the police talking with some of the local heroes. They got 10 minutes before we start killing off some hosta. He couldn't finish as what appeared to be flowers growing on all their guns right before their weapons shattered into several pieces. What the? My rifle my pistol. That was a desert eagle. Is cost a fortune. Are you guys okay? All the robbers turned to see a kid with a katana freeing their hostages. Hey that's the kid that's been playing hero around town. What do we do? We beat his ass and of course. I got this. Said the boss robber as walked towards Izuku. Izuku turned to him as the hostages were getting scared as the boss robber raised his now metal fist and put right in front of Izuku. My quirk allows me to produce metal from my skin something your sword can't cut through but you're more than welcome to try go ahead I dare. What surprised everyone was Izuku reached with his empty hand to the metal arm and grabbing it. He took a deep breath before squeezing, crushing the metal hand. The robber collapsed to the ground writhing in pain holding his broken hand. So who's next? He asked before all the robbers surrendered. Oh, Bubble Girl realized too late she bit off more than she could chew. Come out so I can fry you. Said Burn and the two girls had met up while chasing down a jewel thief to a construction site. It was near midnight so the site was empty which did little to comfort the heroes as they had no idea where the thief disappeared to. One moment they were chasing him down. When they entered the construction site he vanished. Before they knew it a spike hit Burnin in the leg when Bubble Girl went to help she was shot in her arm from the opposite direction. That's when they realized they were dealing with a sniper. The next 10 minutes the duo tried their best to dodge the spikes and get to cover but when they thought the found good cover they were just shot at again. This sucks, said Burnin as they were hiding behind their third pillar. They both were covered in cuts and scratches, not to mention exhausted from the worst game of hide and seek. Where is he? Burnin. The spikes even though they've been coming from different places, they always come at a downward angle meaning he has to be higher than us. Okay so, so it means he has to be somewhere higher than us. Okay what good does that do us? This construction site spans this whole block, said Bubble Girl. If we figure out which of the highest points he's shooting at us from we can at least cover the exits. Waiter you says we should wait him out. Burnin getting in Bubble Girl's face. That bastard has been shredding my uniform and been a pain in my ass. I'm not letting this guy go before I teach him why they call me Burnin. Well right now we don't have any better ideas we can't find him and none of our attacks have the range he has and we both don't like the option of running away. I wouldn't be able to show my face in public again if I ran from a chump like this. Um are you guys okay? Both girls turned to see Izuku staring at them. They stared back wondering what a kid was doing here. Kid get out of here there's a villain nearby trying to get us. Run and get help call my sir night eye he'll know what to do. What call endeavor he'll smoke this bastard out. Before he could respond Izuku sidestep left as a spike came at him. Then leaned back to dodge one from his left and after raised his foot to barely miss the last spike. How they both said. Does he have a precognition quirk or a reflex quirk? They thought as he expertly avoided the spikes. He's rich hawking the spikes, said Izuku as he kept dodging the spikes. I can hear the spikes bounce off the support beams. So it isn't hard to tell which way they're coming. Give me one sec, he said as he put one knee down and extended his arms out with his palms open. What's he doing? I don't know. Found him. Huh. Breath of lightning, he said as he grabbed his sword and disappeared in an explosion of lightning. Both followed the trail of sparks up the support beams, only then to hear a grown man scream. 
They both saw the jewel thief hit ground with spikes coming out his arms along with a bag of jewels. Don't worry he's out cold. Well I gotta go. See ya. Wait. Yelled Bubble Girl but it was already too late as Izuku was already gone. Oh that was the sword kid vigilante sir wanted to meet. He's not going to be happy we let him go. He's not happy. I'm the one that's pissed right now. Yelled Burn and he took our bad guy. The brat took our crook down without us doing anything. That brat owes us a fight. Bubble Girl could feel the sweat drop on her head as she watched Burn and fume for not being able to fight. Well at least we can bring the thief in and return the jewels. But I'm all fired up. Oh. The night was quiet over Kyushu. Just the way Hawks liked it. A nice quiet night. Maybe I can get a late night snack on the way home. Kaboom. Me in my stupid mouth he turned to see a building with smoke coming from the top. Okay let's find out who ruined my night. As Hawks got closer he saw more and more windows burst open. Hawks was about to dive into the building when a person shot from one of the windows almost colliding with Hawks. The figure stopped and hovered in midair revealing to Hawks a woman with four metal wings. What are you serious first the sword brat now Hawks. Oh wow a pretty lady like you knows who I am. I'm flattered. Said Hawks getting his feathers ready for a fight. Wait, did you say sword brat? Well, it's the number three hero Hawks both flyers turned to see Izuku on the roof of a building fanboying at seeing a high-ranking hero. Hey aren't you that kid everyone is talking about? The flying woman thought this would be a good chance to escape but when she tried she saw Hawks' feathers blocking her path. Sorry beautiful but outdate just started and it would be rude of me to leave you on your own. Oh what a gentleman but I'm not your girl. I'm Steel Angel and I fly solo. Said Steel Angel as she wiped her wings creating a wind blade right at Hawks. He was about to intercept it with his feathers but another wind blade appeared in intercepting the first. They both turned to see Izuku with sword in hand. Breath of air. He began to strike with his sword creating several wind blades at Steel Angel. You brat. She screamed as she dodged as she flew higher trying to create distance between them. This is a fight I can't win, but this is a fight I can run away from. As she began to spin into a small tornado creating several wind slashes in all directions, sliced through Hawk's feathers and forcing him back. She didn't let this opportunity go to waste she flew as fast as she could. Hawks cursed as he began his pursuit. She's faster than I thought. Even though this is fun I need to stop her quick. They continued their game of cat and mouse until Steel Angel had to make an immediate stop or else be pierced by another wind slash. Huh, the brat. They looked down to see Izuku pursuing them jumping from rooftop to rooftop. He was able to keep up with us on foot, said Hawks impressed. Not many heroes could do something like that. This kid ain't half bad. That's it this damn brat is dead. Yelled Steel Angel as she dived at Izuku before launching a massive wind blade at Izuku. Izuku was in mid-air at the time but was able to use his blade to not only block the attack but also cancel it. The only problem was that it also caused him to stop mid-jump while he was above an intersection. Gotcha eat concrete you little shit. Oh no the kid's gonna fall thought Hawks readying his feathers until he saw the impossible. Oh, Tomo what are you doing? Master Yushiro, said Tomo flustered as she quickly tried to clean the table full of notebooks. I was just doing some light reading. Aren't these Izuku notebooks? Said Yushiro as he recognized the well-detailed notes. Did you take these from his room? I'm sorry master she said guiltfully I just couldn't help myself I was just so curious on the new techniques he was working on. Really I thought you had no interest in the demon slaying techniques. Well I do admit I didn't think there would be any point in learning the techniques since I have no real desire to fight but I have read the books in the library and some of Izuku's techniques don't match with any of the books I've read. So I was just curious. Yushiro couldn't help but chuckle. I forget sometimes you're still a child. She began to pout. But to answer your question, the reason those techniques aren't in the old text is because they were impossible back then. Does this have something to do with your different training methods? I'll admit that's one of them. I've lived hundreds of years and in those times I've trained several people in a variety of subjects and learned how to improve on several training methods, especially the demon slayer techniques since I've tried to preserve their knowledge while the world forgot it. A um, master I kind of know that already. Well clearly not all of it because I also preserved the techniques that were only theories back then. Here, grabbing a specific notebook and handing it to Tomo. Those are the notes he made on techniques that could be possible to learn and use based on those old theories. Wow these are super detailed, she said as she skimmed through the notebook. Izuku's analytical skills are incredible and these were based off of theories. She said in awe as Yushiro nodded in confirmation. But wait that only explains how he came up with those moves how is he able to pull them off when the masters of old couldn't? Is it because he got an early crash course in the breath of the sun? No. While Izuku was given an opportunity others weren't and his eyes are top-notch his greatest advantage is high genetics. His genetics. Do you know what quirks his parents have? His mom has a low form of telekinesis and his dad can breathe fire. Wait, his dad. Yes while Izuku doesn't have a quirk himself his father was born with a quirk that must have improved his lungs incredibly and some of those genes were passed down to Izuku along with the natural evolution of quirked humans. 
Izuku can use abilities that the masters of old could only dream of. Oh, Hawks had rubbed his eyes in disbelief. One moment the kid was falling then the next he was standing. Standing in midair. F whoosh. F whoosh. He can fly they yelled as Izuku began to run on air. Cloud walk. Okay what the hell is this kid's quirk? Yelled Steel Angel. How should I know? Says Hawks wondering the same. Hey kid how are you doing that? Hoping to get at least some info on the kid. I figured it while I was being chased around a mountain for two weeks by an Okama. Okama. They both said not sure how to respond. Izuku's face grimaced as the memories came back. It wasn't fun. My sensei's friend could be a hellish gym instructor. It was a nightmare. The only good thing that came out of is I learned how to run on air. This only confused the two more. Anyway you ready to surrender yet? Gyarararara. No way. I don't do jumpsuits and orange is a disgusting color. She cried out as reality seemed to set in. I ain't going to jail. Not like this. As she gave one final wind slash at Izuku. Very well. As his sword light ablaze. Breath of the sun dawning flame. Izuku sent a fire slash going right through her wind slash and directly hitting Steel Angel. She would have fallen if Hawks hadn't caught her bridal style. After he made sure she was okay he turned to Izuku who was still somehow standing on air. Nice job kid. I don't suppose you would mind helping me take her to the station. Sorry but I can't do that just yet. If I went with you I don't think they would let me go just yet. Besides it looks like you got your hands full. He said before running into the clouds. Before Hawks lost sight of him he sent a single small feather and smiled when he felt contact. I'll leave that on him for a while and see what he does next. That kid is definitely interesting. He thought as he felt the woman in his arms begin to stir. Well sleeping beauty it looks like it's time I take you to the police. Ijiro Kirishima was having a dilemma. Early that day he tried to help out one of his classmates from some bullies only to be easily beaten and his friends were of no help as they only pointed out unoriginal he was and how weak his quirk was. How can I be a hero if my spirit breaks so easily? He said feeling powerless to save anyone. He was currently walking home from school when he noticed one of the TVs in a store showing news of the mysterious child swordsman in green with Hanafuda earrings. He was helping out pro hero Lightning Max with a villain attack. The news reporter ended reminding everyone that he was committing a crime for doing vigilante work. Why can't I be more like him? He looks to be about my age and he doesn't look like he's afraid of anything. I wonder if he'll tell me how he does it. He thought as he began to walk away from the store. He continued down the road a bit before he heard a scream. He looked to see the scream came from two girls from his school with a giant of a man standing before them. He was well over three stories tall, wearing a massive cloak over his massive body. Where is the spring hero office? The two girls were way too scared to even respond all they could do was cower. Are you not going to tell me? He said as his hand began to crush the building above the girls. There's no police or hero around to do anything. Thought Kirishima. Come on he told himself move but he was unable to he was unable to move past his own fears. He stood there wanting to move and be a hero that protected people. Mina dashed in front of the giant in defense of the girls. It's two blocks down turn right and across the street. Fankayu said the giant before he suddenly tensed crushing the wall causing rubble to fall. Kirishima could only look on in horror as he saw his classmates were crushed. MMMII and Aie. Oh you know these girls. Said a voice Kirishima turned his head to see guy from the TV the swordsman in green. Izuku Midoriya. Would you mind looking after them? Past him was Mina and their classmates. Perfectly safe. Thanks. Huh wait. Kirishima didn't finish as he noticed that the giant was now staring in their direction. In particularly Izuku. Kirishima knew this was about to get real. As Izuku began walking towards the giant, the giant began to shake, but not out of excitement. Though he was scared the mountain of a man was scared of someone who was barely a tenth of his size. Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. Repeated Kirishima confused on what the giant meant. So you know who I am, said Izuku as he stared down the giant with one hand on his sheath with his thumb on the hilt pushing his sword out just enough to see the blade. Who are you? Who do you work for? The giant couldn't answer as memories flooded his head. Memories that weren't his but scared him nonetheless. To him the boy in front of him was his longest and most dangerous enemy that has killed him time and time again. He felt true fear of countless before him as they faced their death at the hands of numerous swordsmen. The giant then did something that none of the onlookers thought he would do. He ran. He ran down the street and turned down the first street. Izuku gave chase but stopped in front of the street the giant turned. Hey wait up, said Kirishima as he ran after them. Demon Slayer wait. He yelled but as he turned the corner all he saw was Izuku standing in the street. Hey Demon Slayer where did the big guy go? Izuku closed his eyes and sniffed the air. It seems someone with a teleportation quirk grabbed him. A teleporter wait how do you know that? It may be hard for you to notice but if you look on the ground you can see that all the dirt and pebbles make a perfect circle meaning that a portal took it somewhere else. He said as he pointed to the ground. It was hard but Kirishima could see a perfect circle of dirt. While I would have never noticed that. Not many would but another big giveaway is the smell. The smell. He sniffed the air and smelled something. 
Alcohol I smell alcohol and definitely the strong kind. Exactly. There isn't a single bar nearby yet you can clear smell something like the inside of a bar. Hiroshima was impressed so was the crowd that was forming around them. Many of them wanting to know more about the newly named Demon Slayer. Though for him personally this was his chance to speak to him maybe gain something that can help him be a hero. Wait Demon Slayer I got a question. Izuku was about to leave but stopped and gave the boy in front of him an interesting look. Okay what's your question? How? How do you do it? Aren't you scared? You're not even in high school and you're taking guys on like a pro. Izuku tilted his head at his question and thought for a second before walking up to Kirishima. Do you want to be a hero? Kirishima a little unsure of himself. Yes, Izuku remembered something the Yashiro sensei told him. Wisdom can come from everyone and from everywhere even yourself. You or whoever you're divulging the information to just has to be able to accept the wisdom you're giving. Then he remembered how it started with him. Do you want to go for a run? How that was the last thing he thought he was going to be asked. He was skeptic. Sure. Izuku gave a sunny smile before grabbing his shoulder and enveloping them in mist. When it finally cleared both boys were gone. Oh, it was the hardest run of Kirishima's life but he pushed through. He chased Demon Slayer through the streets and back alleys. After a while Kirishima was about to call it when Demon Slayer finally started to teach him something. Alternate the hardness on your legs. Kirishima was breathing too hard to respond but the confusion on his face was enough for Demon Slayer to get the question. When I grabbed your shoulder you harden a little bit. Now alternate your hardness and absorb the shock from your legs. Kirishima did as he said it was tricky at first but soon he got the hang of it and running became easier and so did his breathing. While I can run. He said as he felt the wind as he ran. Though he stopped when he noticed Demon Slayer stopping. Hand me your bag and your shoes. My shoes. Harden the soles of your feet should give you way better traction than your shoes will. After Kirishima got the idea he quickly took his shoes off and handed them to Demon Slayer. When they continued running Kirishima easily increased his speed. I've never thought of this before. He yelled as he picked up speed. Izuku grinned. This guy is a quick study alright now I want you to follow me. But I am going to begin some quick turns so hard in different parts of your legs to turn easier so you don't lose speed or momentum. He said before speed through the alleyways of the city. Taking every quick turn he could make. Kirishima almost crashed twice but began to understand what Izuku was talking about. By hardening certain parts of his body and keeping other loose he was able to turn easier and keep his momentum going. Good you're getting the hang of it. You got hardening quirk it does give you a small strength boost but your big hits will come from increasing your speed like a battering ram. Izuku turned down a long alleyway with a building at the end. Okay we're switching it up we're going straight. We're going straight through the building, said Kirishima shocked. He didn't want to pay for property damage. Izuku laughed just because your quirk seems straight doesn't mean it is nor should you be we're climbing the building so everything you've done with your legs are going to do with your hands as well. Ready go he said as he dashed forward and went up the building. Kirishima had come this far and wasn't going to back down. He made a quick decision on which parts of his hands to harden and rushed forward. He jumped and dug his hands into the wall as he tried to use as much of his speed as possible and climbed the side of the building. Even though he was tired but when he got the rhythm down he practically flew up the building. In fact he did he moved so fast his momentum carried him above the roof. Lucky Izuku was there to catch him. So what did you think of your first run? He said as he put him down. Thank huff you huff, said Kirishima before inhaling a lot of air. I never thought I could climb a building like that or well really anything you just showed me. I'm not strong like you I could never do anything like this. Izuku slapped Kirishima's back more than hard enough to leave a good bruise. Don't sell yourself just look at where your own hands and feet have brought you. He said as he pointed over to the other side of the roof. Kirishima walked to the edge and say one of the most breathtaking views of the city he had ever seen. This is incredible I've never seen the city like this before. The only way you can get a great view like this is if you get up here with your own two feet. But I'm only here because you brought me here. I guided you here I did not carry you I did not activate your quirk you did that and even without me you could do this again with your own strength. Hiroshima couldn't help but smile and blush a little at the compliment. Yeah I guess I could do this again. Though his smile quickly turned into a frown. Though I couldn't do anything back there I was so scared I couldn't move. How can I be a hero if get so scared I can't even move? He said his self-doubt set in. How do you do come you're not scared? Are you kidding me I'm terrified. What? But you always rush in head first. You never hesitate. Do you remember seeing those girls almost getting crushed? Yeah of course I do. It happened like an hour ago. Do you remember how you felt before you realized that they were safe? Kirishima knew that feeling. He had let them die. Remember that feeling and make sure you never feel it again. The thing that scares me more than me dying or getting hurt is the thought that someone is going to get hurt because I didn't do anything. I don't want to regret anything. As Kirishima listened to Izuku he couldn't help but feel like he heard that somewhere before. Hey that sound like something Crimson Riot would say. Oh are you familiar with Crimson Riot? Familiar. He's my all-time favorite hero. He's so manly. 
He's a hero who doesn't back down and saves people and serves justice with a chivalrous spirit, said Kirishima enthusiastically. Well maybe you should rewatch some of his interviews there may be something there that you missed. As he began to walk to the side of the roof, the fire escape is this way. You should try and see how much of your body you can harden at a time and for how long. Maybe do some training. Wait hold it are you leaving? Asked Kirishima a little sad. Yep I still have a lot of things to do today and there is something I need to talk to my sensei about. Your sensei. Kirishima couldn't help but wonder what kind of man he was. Do you think I could meet him or if he would train me? I'm afraid not. Immediately shooting down the request. There are reasons why he can't train you. In fact the only reason he trained me is because his friend asked him to. Really what kind of hero was he? Oh he wasn't a hero but he's been around a very long time and knows a lot. Actually a lot of my physical training was either done by his assistant or one of his friends he would call in. Like a guest lecturer. So he's not some teacher who runs a school or anything hut Izuku nodded dashing his hopes man after seeing this guy in action I kinda wondered what his sensei could teach me. Aw oh man looks like I'm back to my own training. Speaking of your training, I think there are a few points you should focus on, said Izuku as they began to make their way down the fire escape. One you should stick to trying to increase your overall physical abilities. Two try and see what other moves you can do by hardening certain parts of your boy and what patterns yield what results. Three see how long you can maintain those patterns and how long you can maintain a full body hardened state. Hiroshima quickly brought out his phone and began to type them down. Okay I think I got it. Good, I'm no teacher but hopefully those ideas will help you become a hero. He said as he was about to say goodbye and leave. Wait I have two no three questions to ask before you leave. Okay, shoot. Why do you go around like this? You're pretty much doing vigilante work were you sick of waiting or something? Hello no, said Izuku getting flustered scratching the back of his head. I just can't really help myself. I don't know why but when I see people in danger my legs kind of just start moving on their own. I don't really mean to break the law or anything. I respect the laws and the heroes that enforce it. Mutter mutter mutter. Ah oh, hey dude you okay? I think you left earth or something. Ho oh, sorry well I get flustered or think too hard I start to mumble. It's a habit I'm trying to break. Okay well next question. Hiroshima had to make himself serious. Why did you go home? The question clearly caught Izuku off guard as his face began to fill with sadness and self-disappointment. I'm sorry for asking it but I felt that I had too. I've seen the news one day you just disappeared and then suddenly you just reappeared kicking ass and taking names. Your mom is on the news with a few interviews. I know I've seen them, said Izuku as he gathered his thoughts. I didn't want to go back as I was. I didn't want to stop my training and I didn't know what to tell her to keep her from stopping me or even how to tell her. Izuku looked at his new friend in the eyes, ready to lie. That day I disappeared a man found me broken and beaten up. He knew I needed help and brought me to the man I would soon call sensei. One of my broken ribs punctured my lungs and needed medical attention. My sensei patched me up but I fell asleep for four days when I woke up and told them I had gotten into that state for being weak and unable to save somebody from a bully they wanted to help. The man who found me asked me to take a test. It was a tough mountain obstacle course. I passed and the man convinced my sensei to train me. That mountain showed me I could follow my dreams so when my sensei told me he could train me I jumped at the chance. Even agreed not to leave the mountain until I completed the first part of my training. You see I didn't have good control over my abilities and he was worried that if we left too soon I may be a danger to myself and others around me. I finished the first part within the first few months. To be honest I've been kind of avoiding going home. I know I should or at least call but every time I try I freeze. Hiroshima digested everything he had just heard. So nothing is stopping you from going home just you. Yep my sensei knows this and has given me a due date to go home before he drags me home. Kirishima breathed a sigh of relief. So you're all good there then I guess the last question I got now is are you going to become a legit hero then? Izuku's sunny smile came back. Of course that hasn't changed. I will become a hero no matter what. I will become a pillar of hope for all. Alright. As he raised his fist. That's a goal I can get behind. I'll see you at the top demon slayer. Izuku Midoriya as he bumped his fist. Ijiro Kirishima. Well then Ijiro Kirishima. Keep up the hard work and I will see you at the top. Said Izuku as he ran back to the mountain. Hiroshima went home as well planning to go over everything he learned today make a plan and watch an old video of Crimson Riot Izuku reminded him of, only to find reporters and police at his house. His night was only just beginning. Oh, Izuku made it back to Mount Seijiri as Tomo was finished putting dinner on the table. Oh Izuku welcome back. Hey Tomo do you know where Sensei is? I need to speak with him. He's out back checking the little wisteria tree. He actually wants to talk to about that kid you kidnapped you didn't bring him here did you? What I didn't kidnap him. I was just trying to help him a little. He had some serious self-confidence issues. He just needed someone to show him what he could do. That sounds familiar. She teased. Izuku could only look away in embarrassment. Well you should go see him and good luck. 
Just like Tomo said Izuku found Yushira looking at the small wisteria tree in the back of the garden. Izuku bowed sensei I've returned. Izuku before we talk about anything else I need to ask did you tell that boy anything? No sensei I stuck with the lie we came up with. Good though I would like to hear about your day in detail. Yes sensei. Thought there is one part I need to tell you immediately. Izuku then told his sensei about his encounter with the giant. He knew who I was and was scared. I've never seen this guy before and even I could tell he outmatched me. So why did he run away? Gigantamasha. Gigantamasha. That is the name of the giant you meet today. He works for or I should say the man who created him was the man I warned you about. The man who reminds me most of him. All for one, said Izuku remembering the stories he was told. The man who was more demon than man. A man who should be avoided at all cost. He had brought many heroes to their knees and killed at least ten times the amount. Indeed the reason that Gigantamasha was so scared of you is because all for one gave him more quirks enough to activate memories deep within them. Memories that don't belong to him. Memories, said Izuku confused before horror dawned on his face at the realization. What does that mean all for one knows about demons and about him? Izuku calmed down. You see years ago all for one tried his best to learn everything there was to know about quirks since his revolved around other quirks. He figured out a long time ago the truth about them. Wait you mean he knows about everything? Not everything. He knows about the existence of demons and a little bit about the demon slayers and the history of both but not all of it. Years ago he tried to create a demon but the human physiology has changed too much. The quirk factor counters the demon blood too much so he failed but he learned that if he mixes these too many quirks together or the right pattern of quirks he will get visions of the past so will anyone else who he has packed with quirks. It's why I warn you to avoid people with vision or memory quirks. Okay so what do we do? For now nothing. We have no idea where he is or any of his associates. So don't worry too much for now. They have made several enemies, me included. They will be found eventually and will face justice just like he did so many years ago. Hey I don't mean to interrupt said Tomo coming outside. But dinner's ready. We better eat it while it's hot. We're on our way. Come Izuku. I think food will do us both some good. Right. Oh, right. This doesn't look good said Detective Naomasa. He has been reading the report and statement of Ijiro Kirishima. The kid has been doing a lot of our work. Has the police gotten in any trouble? Asked Tashinori Yagi as he sipped some tea. They were currently at UA office going over all the information they had on the newly named Demon Slayer. They had brought the info to Nezu in hopes he might be able to shed some light on the situation. That's something else that's bothered me, said the detective pulling some info up on his computer. We haven't gotten in trouble at all. Isn't that a good thing? I'm afraid you're wrong all night, said Nezu. When vigilantes start showing up the government is usually the first to get angry. Yet I haven't heard a single politician on the news talking about arresting Demon Slayer. This is quite odd. The principal is right, he said as he showed them his laptop. These are all Fromer vigilantes. The police had several orders to arrest each and every single one of them. Even the trio of vigilantes that saved Captain Celebrity had order to arrest on site. But this kid hasn't got a single order from the government. The only orders we got are from the chief of police himself. So wait no one in the government has put anything out on this kid, said All Might shocked. He expected the government to be up in arms. What about all the damages or laws he's broken? Nothing. If you watch any interviews all of them just deflect or don't answer the question. Well they answer but it's just a politician answer that doesn't answer anything. HHMM this is quite troubling. Said Nezu if the government is going to such length to let this boy go and play hero then something must be going on. I've never heard of the government paying for the damages or reimbursement of a vigilante no matter how good they were. That's because they're not. Said a voice as the doors slammed open. Grand Torino said all might not expected to see his former mentor. What are you doing here? I called him here. I thought it would be a good idea to have him here as well said Nezu greetings Torino thank you for coming. No problem, said GT as he put several papers on the table. I've been following this kid since he fought that sludge villain. I called in a few favors and I found something I just couldn't believe. Someone has been paying for this kid out of pocket. What but that can't be, said Nezu. On my calculations alone the amount needed to cover all of these payments would require a small fortune. That would be if it was just the boys' activities but several officials and construction companies have been paid off and to top it off every person involved in each incident whether they be villain or victim has had their hospital bills pay. Grand Torino's statement left the other three in silence. Even Principal Nezu had nothing to say. Principal Nezu sir, how much would something like that cost? Asked All Might somewhat scared of the answer. Nezu had to think a moment to figure it out. It was way too much for him to have the answer on the top of his head. I can't make an accurate answer with this many variables but the amount of money needed, maybe around a national budget. What you mean someone is paying the same amount of money it takes to run a country for a kid? Screamed All Might as blood poured from his mouth. Well that makes it easy at least, said Detective Nayamasa wiping the sweat off his forehead. 
We just need to check the top richest people in the country and see which one is missing a fortune. None of them are, said GT getting their attention. I found out about the government's lack of involvement in the first month for the past two I've been checking every rich family every corporation, every government institution. Nothing. This money is coming from some private citizens with a bank account bigger than Japan. How is that possible? It isn't said the principal or at least they couldn't of this amount legally. It would take several lifetimes for the average person to get that money maybe a whole lifetime for a rich CEO. Did you find where the trail leads? The trail ends with people who have been dead for over a hundred years. All the accounts that were used were even before I was born. So let me get this straight, said the detective. We got a very rich person supporting a kid with an impossible amount of money to legally pay all of this out of pocket using accounts that are over a hundred years old. The child in question has remarkable abilities, who according to out files was born quirkless who now shows signs of several quirks and combat abilities that don't even compare to several pros, said Nezu no one his age has ever shown such talent, but he's been using his powers for good, spoke all might as he looked at the ground, I mean he seems like a good kid, Grand Torino almost smiled at his student, still just a kid yourself Tashinori I'm not talking about the kid himself, he said I will not deny the kid has done good. However we know next to nothing about the man who trained the boy, who this mysterious sensei is. Villains have used kids before, said Niyamasa. According to his own mother he always wanted to be a hero added Nezu. I can only think of one man who has the power, money, influence and evil enough to manipulate a kid to do something like this. Let's face it this has all for one written all over it. All Might's form began to enlarge as he changed into his hero form. You're right. I can't think of anyone else but evil demon. Oh, A-C-H-O-O. Sensei are you getting sick? I'll go make you some soup, master. For the last time I don't get sick yelled Yushiro. Izuku wondered about some of his master's friends he just got done doing a small delivery. The man had a screw going through the side of his head. Izuku asked if it had something to do with his quirk and said his friend in America accidentally put it there. Izuku was just happy that was going back to America his deliveries were just weird. Though he wondered about the girl he mentioned. Apparently Izuku reminded him of one of his students that uses a sigh. Izuku was broken out of his thoughts as his phone buzzed. He checked the ID and say it was Tomo. Oh hello Tomo-chan. Hey Izuku you get that delivery done? Yep. Well take your time coming back. Master's meeting with the scientists is going a little longer than expected. Apparently they really want him to be a part of some program on an island, but they don't want to give out all the details. That will never work out well. Izuku knew how much his teacher hated working on a project if he had no idea what exactly it's for. Anyway dinner gonna be late so if want to get snack on your way back go for it. Take a bit of a break. I saw the news nice job with the bear guy. Thanks will do. I'll see you later. As he said goodbye Izuku hung up. When he did his phone flashed the date. The date to reunite with his mother was just one week away. Izuku was scared he felt terrible leaving his mother the way he did. He made his decision and he was going to have to live with it but none of the secrets or training he learned were a good enough excuse leaving his mother the way he did. He knew she was doing okay. His teacher sent one of his cats to watch over her. The cat comforted her, made sure she got to work on time and also accidentally sits on her phone and dials Mitsuki's number whenever she's feeling down. Though it didn't make him feel any better. He knew he was really the only one in her life. His father only called after he saved Bakugo. The only thing his father has really done since he left was send more money to his mother. Though his mother stayed strong and from what the cat has informed us, she was preparing for his return. He still wondered how his sensei taught a cat how to use a phone or even type for that matter. Don't worry there will be more crying than there will be yelling. Izuku froze as he turned his head to only find a very cute girl in a pink hiori right in front of his face. When did this girl get so close? I didn't hear her or sense her at all. Who is this girl? Thought Izuku as he got a closer look at her. Wait I know this girl. Are you Tanjiro's sister? Nezuko. She smiled as she looked at Izuku fondly. You really are like my brother. She then turned and began to walk down the street. Come, there is someone in need of you. Izuku didn't hesitate and began to follow her down the street, ignoring the onlookers and fans. I wonder can they see her or is it just me? As they turned down into an alleyway. As they delved deep Izuku was wondering who she had asked him to help. She then stopped. Izuku looked around and couldn't see anyone in sight. He was about to ask when she kneeled down to a cardboard box and slowly opened it. Izuku was surprised to see a small girl with white hair red eyes and a small horn on her forehead. But what got his attention was the rags she was wearing and the bandages on her arms and legs. Whatever monster did this will know my blade. Don't worry little one, this man her is the hero that will help you, said Nezuko trying to reassure the girl. The girl still seemed frightened but her words eased her even if it was just a little. This girl has been through a lot. I've helped her as much as I can with the time I have. Do you think you can take care of her from here? Izuku gave the girl his brightest smile. Don't worry I will protect her. I will protect you. Wait miss, said the girl you're not going to leave me. 
Are you? I'm afraid so. But but. The girl began to cry. You're the first person to ever help me you you. Please don't go. Nezuko gave her a big hug. I'm so sorry little one. You deserve so much better but I can't give you that the most I can do is make sure you are in good hands and this man's hands are the best. My brother helped him when he was in need and he will help you. With those words Nezuko faded. You will be safe your hero will help you. After seeing Nezuko disappeared the girl got scared and hid herself in the box. Izuku slowly approached the box knowing that the girl was watching him from inside. Hey don't worry I don't know who did this to you but I promise I won't let them hurt you again. She didn't respond. She just continued to watch him from the cracks between the cardboard slits. Come on I know some place safe where we can go. So how about you come out of that box? No yelled the girl yelled. Nezuko said this would keep me safe. It keeps me away from them. It keeps others from my curse. They can't find me in the box. Okay. Did Nezuko tell you the box was safe like the one she had? Asked Izuku remember the tale of Nezuko. Yeah she said opening the box slightly. Did you know her? In a way, yes I do know her. She had a wooden box that kept her safe while she traveled with her brother. Oh I have an idea we'll just take the box with us. He said as he grabbed the sides of the box. Ready 1 2 3. As he lifted the box with girl inside. Can you tell me your name? My name is Iri. My name is Izuku Midoriya. Are you hunger? Oh. Every person who was in the McDonald's went silent as they saw the now famous demon slayer walk into the fast food restaurant talking to a box. He put the box down onto the table and ordered a chicken sandwich and some apple slices. The manager made sure they got his order done quick but she had them double check to make sure they got it done right. Meanwhile he sat down at the table and then began to talk to the box again. It confused everyone until the manager brought the food. Here you go sir one chicken sandwich and apple slices, said the manager as she put the food on the table. Thanks, said Izuku as he grabbed the apple slices here you go re apples just like you asked. To everyone's surprise a little girl popped her head out grabbed the apples and shut the box. Izuku saw their confusion, as well as fast movement outside the window. I kinda found her hiding in this box. I couldn't just leave her there and saw she was hungry so I came here sorry. He said as he bowed to the other customers and the manager. Oh it's no problem sir, said the manager bowing back. In fact I'm happy my store could be of service. Thanks here, he said as he handed her several bills. What no there's no need to give us more you've already overpaid sir. I insist we've caused quite a commotion here so please take. He said giving her a sunny smile she couldn't refuse. She left the two to eat. As Izuku ate he kept talking to Uri. Even though she never said anything back she stayed in the box. He kept telling her stories of his training, his sensei's cat, and even his mother. You know my sensei once told me he meet the devil at a McRonald's once. Said he worked here. Probably just some guy who messed up his order. And who could imagine the devil himself working part-time at a fast food restaurant? Um excuse me sir. Izuku looked and saw a man in a cheap suit with a scar across his bald head. I'm so sorry that my girl caused you so much problems. If you don't mind, I would like to take her home. Izuku gave him a deadpan stare. Along with half the restaurant. He wasn't even trying to be convincing. Seriously, you're kidding right? Izuku sighed as he put some money on the table and grabbed the box with Iri in it. He could feel her shaking inside. Miss manager I'm sorry for not cleaning up after myself but something tells me I should leave now before I create a bigger mess. He said with a smile then calmly left the restaurant. Iri please stay in the box I won't let you go but it will get a little rough. He said to Iri now before we begin are you and those men hiding behind that truck sure you guys want to do this? The man stood there for a moment wondering how the heck the kid knew about the others. I knew that lie wouldn't work oh well. Before yelling, get him now before he draws his sword. The moment those words left the man mouth several men jumped Izuku. Izuku noticed one of them controlling a chain and trying to snare him. He grabbed the chain with one hand and pulled it along with the man and smashing him into his friends, knocking several of them out with one move. Another tried from behind and with being as careful of Iri as he kicked the man into a truck. Trust me when I say this, I don't need my sword to beat any of you, said Izuku as he vanished from their sight. Izuku quickly with one hand gave each of them a good chop on the neck knocking each of them out. When they wake next they would be in police custody. Iri popped her head out to look at Izuku and his handiwork. Come on Iri. Let's go home. Home. Izuku nodded as he made a dash back to the mountain. The bald scared grunt got up and rolled them in, getting as many of them as they could into the trucks. Come it. Move it. If we don't get her back overhaul is gonna kill us move it. He screamed at them as they speed down the highway way over the speed limit. Until, suddenly the lead driver hit the brakes. What in the hell did you stop for? Screamed the man as they stared at the driver who began sweating bullets as he looked ahead in sheer horror. They all looked forward only to regret everything in their life. It was back and it put a hand on the hood of their truck. I'm sorry but I can't let you do that. As her hands erupted in flames. You haven't finished playing with me. Screamed Nezuko as she ripped their engine out with one hand. 
By the time the police arrived ever would be gangster had already soiled their pants and raving about a demonic girl in pink. They should have worn the brown pants. Oh, hey I'm home yelled Izuku as he returned to the mountain. Welcome back. I got curry cooking and Masti Tomo stopped as she saw Izuku with a box with a little girl inside. Master, Izuku kidnapped a girl. I didn't kidnap her. Yashiro walked into the kitchen. Okay what's going on here? After seeing the girl Simple raised an eyebrow. Well this is unexpected. Sorry sensei. I know this is unexpected but I have good reason to bring her here. She needs help. I can see that. She seems frightened half to death just by looking at us. Aw oh, don't worry, cutie. We're all friends here. Said Tomo as she reached to pat the girl's head. She stopped as her face twisted with horror as every single one of her instincts screamed at her to stop. She quickly backed away. What the hell? It's her quirk. Said Yushiro keeping calm. Her quirk is going out of control. Izuku why exactly did you bring her here? I'm sorry sir, I didn't know about her quirk. It's well. Iri tell him who brought me to you. Iri was quiet for a moment. It was Miss Nezuko. Yushiro could help but be shocked. Izuku forgot with how much his sensei tried to be stoic. That even he can be shocked. Izuku you said brought to her by someone. It was her sir. Pink Hiyori and matched the photos perfectly. Nezuko brought me to this little girl. Yushiro up to the little girl and put his hand out. Don't warn Iri almost jumping out of the box. If you do you'll die too. My curse will kill you. Ishiro gave her one of his rare smiles. Don't worry little one. It takes a lot to kill me and I'm very familiar with curses. As he put his hand on her head. Iri was surprised when nothing happened when he petted her head. Both Izuku and Tomo knew he was doing more than just comforting the girl and it showed as his eyes began to narrow. Tomo make sure you make extra for dinner. Izuku prepare an extra bedroom for Iri. As he grabbed the box with Iri. He saw Iri become scarred. Iri I promise that I won't hurt you but I need to make sure your quirk doesn't hurt anyone. You can make it so I don't hurt anyone anymore. I will try. As he took Iri to the medical wing of the mansion, Izuku made sure the room next to his and Tomo's were set. He even found Tomo's old pajamas she said Iri could us. He returned to see Tomo finish dinner when Yushiro came back with a tired Iri, with no box this time. Both Izuku and Tomo wanted to ask questions when Yushiro mouthed after dinner. The four had a peaceful dinner. Shortly after dinner Iri fell asleep holding Izuku. Tomo took he and changed her before putting her down to bed. They looked to see a peaceful sleeping Iri in her bed before closing her door. As they went back to the living room, Yushiro let out a heavy sigh. That girl has truly experienced hell. What do you mean? Asked Izuku as Tomo brought tea. For starters she's been killed several times. Crash Tomo dropped a teacup. Izuku couldn't help but notice she was shaking. I'm sorry sir but could you repeat that? She has had a bit of a similar experience like you Tomo. Tomo put everything down as she took a deep breath. Okay I'm good. Please continue master. She said forcing herself from shaking. Izuku grabbed the teapot and poured everyone a cup. Ishiro took a drink before he began retelling his experience of the child's past. When I was putting her quirk under control I took a peek into her mind and into her memories. For starters some way her parents were related to a villain a Yakuza member to be precise. When her quirk activated revealing it to be some sort quirk that could rewind an organic being to a previous state. I believe one of the Yakuza members then gave her a quirk enhancement drug thinking it will give him some sort of fountain of youth. In the end it made her quirk go out of control. She undid the man into nothing. After that she was taken by the head of the Yakuza. That's when the nightmare began. Calling it Turchu would be too easy. They discovered her blood holds her quirk. The blood has been key to their quirk enhancement drugs it increased their performance tenfold. By continually studying it they learned how to use it suppress quirks and even how to eliminate quirks entirely from someone. So much from her blood. Yashiro grew angry. To get this much blood the head of the Yakuza used his quirk to literally turn her entire body into blood. Then used it again to turn her back. His quirk allows him to deconstruct and reconstruct anything even people. He deconstructed her and reconstructed her over and over again. Yushiro stopped there to let the information. Both Izuku and Tomo were in shock that slowly turned into anger. Izuku began to wonder what type of twisted monster could do this to little girl, while Tomo was just wondering where she could find him and spill his guts. Yushiro could see in Tomo's eyes as several painful memories came back to her. He could tell whoever did this was no at the very top of her kill on sight list. Luckily he wasn't the only one to see. Tomo. She looked up to see Izuku with a worried look in his eyes. Izuku became a good friend to her over the year he stayed with them at the mountain. He was now like a little brother to her. She couldn't stay mad not with that worried look of his. She took a deep breath and suppressed the bad memories and reminded herself this is about the girl. Master is Iri going to be alright? It's hard to say. Physically she will be fine after a few days of rest. Mentally she will have to live with the scars that have been given. The most we can do is help them fade so she can smile and have a bit of normal life. Though her main problem that we need to solve is one that I have never seen before. What do you mean sensei? It may even help her mentally but the biggest problem she has is her quirk. 
He paused. Please explain Sensei asked Izuku if there's any way we can help her. I would like to help. He's right we have to help, said Tomo agreeing with Izuku. Don't worry we will help her and I was getting to that. You see the problem with her quirk is that has been mutated too much. I don't think the man fully understood what he was doing or even cared for that matter. You see she is still just a child her quirk is still developing and the man kept destroying her and recreating her ad drugs and whatever other chemicals they were pumping in her have changed her quirk it's mutated it making it volatile and uncontrollable. If I had to take a guess I would say her quirk originally reverted anything organic back to a previous form state by state. But now it rewinds at an unpredictable rate and the raw form of her quirk in her blood is so broken down it's pulling her into several different directions. They both digested the information. So how do we help her? She is going to need several genetic quirk surgeries. I'm going to have to alter her quirk change it into something more manageable. You can do that, Izuku said in a bit of a shock. I know how quirks were made and I've been studying them for years. How do you think I was able to get her to stop earlier? That was actually a question I had. I can explain in better detail later. For now we have to prepare. It's not going to be easy I'm going to need several items and ingredients. Izuku I know we agreed that you would see your mother next week but this takes priority so many things can go wrong with an unstable quirk like this one. I completely understand sensei. Izuku said Tomo getting his attention. You're not off the hook. You're still going to go see your mother before you a. She's right. First we make sure Uri is okay then we see your mother. After that you get into Yue, said Yushiro finishing his tea and giving them a look filled with pure rage. That's when we hunt down whoever did this to Uri and show them our fury. Uri for the first time she could remember slept peacefully. It was strange and foreign but she liked it. She was safe. Though that didn't stop her from panicking when she awoke in an unfamiliar room. She calmed down when the memories of the previous night came to her. She didn't know what to do. They were nice to her but the Yakuza would come looking for her. Shisaki would come and then the nice people would die because of her. Yuri then began to wrap herself in the sheets wanting to return to her peaceful slumber. Are you still tired I can come back later. Yuri then saw Tomo looking over her with a big smile on her face. Yuri didn't know what to say she wanted to say sorry. She didn't want anyone else to die because of her. That's when another part of her decided to talk. Ggrru. Well it sure sounds like someone is ready for breakfast. Said Tomo as she picked Yuri up. Yuri tensed up a little but soon relaxed to Tomo's gentle touch. How do pancakes sound? What's a pancake? Super yummy food you're going to love. They soon made their way towards the living room where they found Yushiro watching the Izuku train in the courtyard. Good morning Tomo, Iri, said Yushiro without taking his eyes off Izuku. Don't forget to watch your stance. You're going to lose power if you don't get a good stance for the breath of the earth techniques. Yes sensei. Morning, said Izuku not looking as well. Morning, said Tomo. Morning, said Iri in a small voice. Can he see us? HHMM. No he's most likely using his other senses to tell where we are, said Tomo as they watched Izuku for a minute. Would you like to stay and watch? Iri was a little surprised she wasn't used to getting asked what she wanted. She was honestly afraid of answering but nodded. Okay then, you can stay here with Master Yushiro while I go make breakfast, she said as she put Iri down right next to Yushiro before going to the kitchen. Iri sat there quietly watching as Izuku ran through several drills as Yushiro gave him some advice ever now and then. Iri was still scared to say anything or to ask anything she just stared at Izuku and glanced at Yushiro every minute or so. I can't give you a proper answer if you don't ask a question. Yushiro smiled at Iri. I will try to answer any questions you have to the best of my ability. What are you going to do to me? Well with your permission I would like to help you and give you a permanent fix to your quirk. You can help me. You can take the curse away. Yes I can help you. I'm very familiar with quirks and I know a way to turn your curse into a gift that you can use in any way you so desire. But I would like your blessing to do so. He said with sincerity. Iri almost couldn't believe it. It was almost too good to be true. Why? Why would you help me? Iri I know I might not look like it but I've been around for a very long time. During that time I've seen people happy and I've seen people suffer. I have suffered as well so has Tomo and Izuku. An old friend of mine showed me that people can be happy that they can become better no matter what life has thrown at you you can still turn it around. He gave me hope after I lost the only love of my life until the day he died. He still showed me the hope of life. I want to help you because I want to and because I have the power to do so. I want to give you a helping hand like my friends did for me. Yuri began to think over everything Yushiro just said not really understanding it. She didn't really know what to think. A helping hand was so strange to her and Yushiro could tell. The way she was squirming he could tell she had barely known what kindness is. I know this might be too much for you but believe me when I say we will help you we will protect you. Yuri looked at Yushiro and saw no lies. It calmed her enough to feel peace. She felt like she could trust these people. She knew now they wouldn't treat her like Overhaul did. They sat in silence for a little while. Do you have any other questions? Um what is he doing? 
Izuku is going through some of his breathing styles. He's trying to get better at the ones he's not good at. Breathing styles. Breathing styles are different ways to breathe. Depending on how you use the breathing style changes the way you fight and the fighting style used. It was the main form of combat used by the demon slayers. What's a demon slayer? Heroes who fought a secret battle against monsters that threatened many people. They had made many sacrifices to do so. They won in the end but since many had no idea what they were doing they became lost to time. I spent a good part of my life gathering and preserving their knowledge and even learning many of their techniques. I thought it was terrible that they would be forgotten so I made it a goal that they would be remembered. So can you use the breathing as well? Somewhat. Unfortunately I'm not exactly built for them. Though I made sure I understood it enough to pass it on to others. Like Izuku. I think he was born for it. Is he strong enough to beat the bad man? Or he said afraid of what would happen when he shows up. By himself I'm not sure. I've never met this overhaul but he won't be alone. I've already contacted several people this morning. The government already has their eyes out for him and if I ask for backup they will give it. Government. That's the people in charge of Japan. Asked her she didn't know exactly what it was but she knew Overhaul didn't like them. You work for them. No, I work with them. You see years ago as technology advanced it became harder and harder to hide and I didn't want any of my hard work to go to waste. I thought it was high time I introduced myself to the government after I showed them the truth of the demon slayers and the benefits of my advanced knowledge in science and technology. They agreed to make a deal for me. They helped me keep the knowledge of old safe and help keep me hidden from others and I would help them on certain projects that I would agree upon. I learned that I would need something to occupy my time before I went crazy with boredom. Though when quirks first started to appear things got real busy. It's been that way for a while. Eventually I became acquainted with quite a few people of power around the world that are willing to help me and in turn I've helped them one way or another. Hiri stayed quiet after that mainly because she had no idea how to take the information. Even Yushiro had to admit that was quite a bit of information for someone so young to take. But he wanted to be honest with her so he could build a bond of trust. Even though she may not be able to understand everything he was saying she could at least tell he wasn't hiding was about to say something to make it easier to understand when Izuku finished his drills. I believe so, said Yushiro checking the time, though I have to say she is taking a bit longer than usual. Toma what is this? Izuku could only stare at it. There's pancakes, waffles, omelets, bacon and eggs. So much more. I don't even know if we can eat all of this. I'm sorry. I wanted Iri's first breakfast to be special so I just started cooking and kinda didn't stop. Tomo said Yushiro pinching the bridge of his nose as he was lost for words. It would seem that our new friend's hunger has gotten to her. Said Yushiro come on. This food isn't going to eat itself. Oh, to say Overhaul was pissed would be an understatement. First he lost her he went on a high's men dropped her when he apparently saw some sort of demon girl in pink. Still trying to figure out what that was. The brat known as Demon Slayer took her and with little effort beat several of his men who were now arrested. Overhaul tried to bribe the officers to let them go when the government stepped in. That was a very unpleasant surprise and before he knew it this morning three of the Yakuza branches were hit. Not by the heroes or the cops but a special ops unit from the frickin' military. Why the hell would the military be after him? They barely do anything domestic nowadays they're only really called in for international conflicts or a supervillain goes apocalyptic. One of them even tried to jump him while he was out looking for Eerie. He even needed to dirty his hand with one of their fethly disgusting blood. Why the hell were they going after him now? They weren't even using warrants or even trying to arrest them. It was like they were ordered to kill on sight. None of this made any goddamn sense to him. He hasn't even told others about his overall plans. He hasn't even perfected the formula, yet they were treating him like a global terrorist.
Kronos then put a letter down on the table. No, he was actually saved by another group of villains. Overhaul knew Kronos long enough to know he wasn't joking. He put his rag down and picked up the letter and began to read it. The League of Villains. I've never heard of them. Neither have I they seem to be new and it appears they know a thing or two about this demon slayer kit and what to do something about it. Overhaul put the letter down. So they want our help and it seems they want to talk to us as well. Would you like to give them the usual response? Meaning to go and tell them to shove it. Chisaki thought for a moment before coming to a decision. No, right now we aren't in a good position. We refused before because we didn't want to get absorbed or taken over. Though without Uri we can't make more quirk removal bullets and with the military hunting us, it might benefit us from making a few friends, even get a few new recruits to refill our ranks. Makes sense so you want me to tell them we'll help them out. Yes but tell them I want info on that demon slayer brat first, said Overhaul as he thought about the brat that has put the brakes on his operations. His anger began to reach a tipping point. I want to find that brat and turn him into a pool of blood over and over again till I get bored. Oh, Izuku was feeling great as he walked out of the bathroom just getting done with taking a shower. Even though Yoshiro's home was an old Japanese-style house it was quite advanced with a lab and medical wing. It even had the basic household needs but those were definitely better than anything other people had. If he didn't know Yoshiro was an immortal who got bored easily he would never believe he built all of this stuff himself. Though he did feel slightly bloated, Tomo made a lot of food and with so many options Izuku tried a little bit of everything. Tomo is a great cook. There was no way he could deny that. Usually he would finish his plate but this is the first time he could remember where they had leftovers. Izuku went into the living room to see Yushiro and Tomo sitting on the porch in the sun with the wooden box between them. He knew they would be there apparently when Yushiro was able to stand in the sun again after not being able to see for over 200 years. He spent a whole year just watching the sun. He still loved sitting outside in the sun. Sensei, Tomo, Izuku how was the shower? Izuku patted his stomach great. Though I think I can wait a bit for dinner. Tomo scratched her head and apologized. You know you don't need to make so much all the time. I don't need to eat food to live, said Yushiro as he was reading something on his phone. I'll always make food for you master. Wait, don't you get hunger sensei? Not really. To be honest if it wasn't for others telling me to eat I would forget for days. All I need is to take my medicine and with the recent improvements I've made I only need to take it once a year. Though of course I do eat if others are offering. The rare craving or the food's too good to pass up. Tomo puffed her chest with pride. That's why I always provide the best so you'll keep coming back for more. Izuku couldn't help but chuckle a little. Hey where's Iri? Tomo reached into the box moving the blanket revealing Iri sleeping at the bottom. She fell asleep real quick after breakfast. After I put the leftovers away she had already climbed into the box and fell asleep. I just bought her the blanket. They couldn't help but think how cute she was. She's so peaceful when she sleeps. Though why would she go to the box to go to sleep? We have plenty of beds. It probably brings her comfort, said Yushiro when she ran into the spirit of Nezuko she suggested to hide in a box. It was most likely the only reason she wasn't found and was able to stay safe. Some part of her believes the box is a safe place. This reminded Izuku how he met Iri and what horrors she's lived through. Sensei what's going to happen now with Iri? Yushiro closed his eyes as he thought everything that needed to be done to help this girl. She's going to need surgery. Even though she's in one piece the villain overhaul had used his quirk to destroy and recreate her over and over again. Though clearly it has had an effect on her quirk in more ways than one. Her quirk not only went out of control but also tried to heal her. Even when overhaul used his quirk to repair her, her quirk was also trying to repair itself. Over time it has moved and distorted several parts of her internal organs which lead to her quirk to go crazy even more. Not to mention the drugs used to increase her blood cell count. It may not be a problem now but as her body grows it could cause many medical issues as she gets older, so the first thing she needs is basic surgery to correct the organs and after that we can tackle her quirk. Until then I'll simply redirect her quirk to keep it under control. While that shouldn't be too hard, said Tomo we both have several years of medical practice we can easily handle her surgery to help her out. I'm afraid it isn't that simple. The reason we were going to focus on fixing her body first is so that I can safely redirect her quirk because it clearly can affect her physically like self-healing and the effects on the horn. This way we can not only get rid of the buildup of her quirk but also hasten her healing process. In short we will be working with her quirk and can you tell me what would happen if we mixed her quirk and yours together? Tomo was silent for a moment as she looked at her hands and then to the sleeping girl. That would be a disaster. I'm sorry Tomo I know you want to help her especially since you know somewhat of what she's going through, but your quirks are too risky together. One wrong move and we could create a bigger problem than the one we were already dealing with. Izuku put a comforting hand on Tomo's shoulder. So what do you need if there's anything I can do just say the word. Yushiro smiled. Don't worry Izuku you'll have plenty to do. There will be numerous things we'll need to make this work and I'm going to need you to see some people personally. 
The doctors needed to make sure this surgery goes off without any problems are a bit stubborn unless you grab them in person they won't come. Tomo raised an eyebrow at Yushiro's words. Stubborn doctors. Wait a minute. You don't mean those maniacs do you? Tomo they maybe have some egos but... Egos that's what you're going with. Okay they're crazy. Tomo simply just gave him a deadpan stare. Okay they're batshit crazy but you can't deny their skill. Izuku sat there partly confused on who they were talking about and happier he was still peacefully sleeping through this bit of madness. Um who exactly are we talking about here? I'm only guessing here said Tomo but I think Master is thinking of calling a doctor called the Dissector. Another one that has a flaming serpent. One that is obsessed with a perfect body. An old snail lady and an old mountain witch that has a talking tanuki and one that's called the Dissector. You already said the Dissector and the mountain witch has a reindeer not a tanuki. One thing I've learned over the years is that the most talented people in the world have the S the sooner we get that done. The sooner I can personally fix her quirk so the Yakuza will never use her again. Tomo seemed to accept his reasoning but it just gave Izuku more questions. How exactly do you know these people, Sensei? Around five years ago during there was a villain attack with a quirk that allowed them to create a super play. Though luckily he was an idiot and gave us time to get several doctors together to find a cure. I met them there and yes, several doctors came from more than questionable backgrounds. They also know I'm hundreds of years old. What they both yelled in surprise. SSSSHHH as Yushiro pointed to Uri. The villain may have been an idiot but he found out about the doctors and attacked the hospital where we were. During the attack several of the other doctors ran away but a few of them stayed and fought. During the attack I may have lost a few limbs so when I got back up. Well let's just say there were a few questions they wanted answered of course I lied about most of it. They accepted I was one of the oldest people on the planet and one of the first people to get a quirk that healed me and stunted my growth. So not only are they good but they know who I am so they'll help. Master with all due respect they're crazy. Isn't there anyone better for the job? Asked Tomo not wanted people so unhinged near Eerie. Don't worry I'll make sure they stay in check. The government owes me so they'll pay them off and just in case I can call a few people in for security if needed. Said Yushiro also thinking of what else they'll need. Though the equipment here is good they will need an upgrade to make sure we can monitor Eerie's condition and the amount of energy her quirk outputs. Looks like I'll be calling shields a lot sooner than expected. Wait shields as in David shields all am I first psychic. Said Izuku shaking trying to control the hero nerd deep inside of him. He was failing. Yes he was here yesterday before you brought Nuri home. Wanted my help on a project but he refused to tell me what it exactly is. Something to do with enhancing quirks but that's as much he was willing to tell me. That and a personal request to check what I assume is a patient. I guess I'll need to give him a call. Yushiro began to make sure he had Shield's number as a contact before reassuring Izuku that he could get David Shield's autograph. That's when his phone began to ring. Hello. Yes. Really already. I gave you that info this morning. I see. I guess that makes sense. There's no need to apologize. I understand how this could have been a political problem. Thank you. Please keep me up to date. Said Yushiro as he hung up the phone and smiled at the sleeping child. The government used the info I gave them and took out several Yakuza bases. Apparently they've been paying attention to the rumors of a quirk erasing bullet and have had their eyes on the Yakuza for quite some time. When I told them about Uri they jumped on the chance. Izuku was shocked and somewhat confused. What I thought they would only get involved if a villain was going to somehow destroy the country entirely. Surprisingly Tomo decided to answer that question. Izuku they were working on mass producing a bullet that could destroy quirks can you imagine what would happen to the country that has relied on quirks for years if that bullet got out. It would end the country. Izuku played the scenario in his head realizing how much damage it would do to society. That would be bad. Yushiro nodded indeed but that aside we have work to do. So we're first going to need he stopped as they heard a cute yawn as they looked to see Uri waking up in the box. Oh good morning again, Uri. Uri stretched a little before rubbing the sleep out of her eyes. What happened? What's going on? Tomo couldn't help but smile at the cuteness of the girl. You fell asleep right after breakfast. I think food coma would be more accurate. Oh, David Shield was currently laying down in his hotel room just staring at the ceiling in his own failure. Weeks ago the scientist was ecstatic to learn not only the legendary immortal doctor was real but also willing to talk to him. He had come all the way to Japan to ask for his help. He wanted his help into finding a way to increase the power of a quirk but the immortal said no even when David said it was for a hero. He had also figured out that the immortal Yushiro had somehow unlocked the quirk to the new hero Demon Slayer. But the second he asked about it Yushiro was silent and David could tell he was making Yushiro angry. He then informed him that he's willing to help with projects that will help society as a whole and will not help any personal project without being given proper information. Even though this doctor was a secret himself he couldn't reveal his friend's condition. In the end he had gotten nothing. He was now just waiting for his plane later tonight to take him back to I Island and back to his daughter Melissa who has been calling him over and over again. 
David had already deduced his assistant had told her that something had happened. There goes his phone again. Time to finally tell her he failed and would be on his way home. He picked up the phone without looking at it. Hello Melissa I'm sore. This isn't Melissa. David immediately shot out of the bed. Mr. Yushiro. Hello Mr. Shield said Yushiro. What? Why are you calling me? As you know I don't get involved with projects when there are secrets involved. But I need help to be more precise. I need some special medical equipment to help a friend. So in turn helping me with my problem I will take a look at your quirk project and your patients. Really you're willing to help. Said David a little bit in disbelief. Wait patience. Yes. You are trying to make a quirk enhancement device for a hero who's injured right. I already have an idea who it is. But I won't push just have their medical records with you when we meet again. You can redact their names if you want. As for the second one you'll need to either bring them with you. When you began asking me how I unlocked Izuku's quirk that was for someone else wasn't it? Someone who's having problems with their quirk correct? Oh yes. A quirk enhancement device is for a hero and the questions about the boy's quirk was for someone who has problems with their quirk. David never mentioned anything about Melissa being quirkless. He had done some research and saw that Izuku was medically stated to be quirkless. He had hoped that Yushiro could somehow give Melissa a quirk he knew how much she had looked up to All Might and how much she wanted to be a hero. Every time she came up with some new invention she always mentioned. She wanted to see an action helping heroes but he knew she wanted to use them herself. He knew he could have mentioned her to Yushiro but was afraid since he knew how well quirkless people were treated. He didn't know how well someone who was immortal would take helping a quirkless person. That was like asking a god to help a peasant. Little did David know Yushiro would have helped. He's a nice guy. Very well then it looks like we have a deal. I'll be emailing you a list of items we are going to need. It isn't much but I do need these quite soon so do you think you can return exactly a week from now? He would have to change a few meetings but if this could help his friend, his daughter he would make it work. Yes I can make that work. Good I'll inform all the necessary contacts on my end. I'll see you in a week. Wait before you go I have a question about quirkless people. There's no such thing as a quirkless person. Well at least not for anyone younger than 50. It may be weak but everyone should have a quirk now. Izuku Midoriya is proof of that. Said Yushiro hoping David would buy it. Damn it I had forgotten that. Thought Yushiro. Nana mentioned her successor was quirkless. Did All Might tell him about one for all? David was his first psychic so maybe. He seems desperate to help his friend as if he's about to do something rash. David stood there as silent tears fell from his face. As Yushiro's words filled him with hope for his daughter. David always felt he had failed his daughter when they found out she was quirkless. It had eaten him up on the inside every time he saw her looking on the computer at Heroes. If he couldn't help her then the next best thing was to find someone who can. I see thank you so much. It's fine we'll talk more next week, said Yushiro as he hung up the phone. He's definitely a smart one. I'm going to need to come up with some solid lies for him to get him to stop digging into the origins of quirks. David's smile keeps growing as he may have found a way to help two of the most important people in his life. Then his phone rang again. Hello Mr. Yushiro did you forget something? Mr. Yushiro. No dad it's me, Melissa. Are you okay? Your assistant said you were down. Did the meeting go that bad? Melissa. Yes the meeting didn't go so well at first but he just called and changed his mind. Really that's great dad so are you two on your way back to my island? No not exactly. In fact in a week you and I will be visiting him here in Japan. What? Oh, I see. Thank you Lockrock and congratulations on the child. Said Sir Night Eye as he hung up the phone exhausted. Is everything alright sir? Asked his very enthusiastic intern Muriel. Both of his psychics were also wondering what was going on. Ever since this morning Sir Night Eye had been on the phone calling hero agencies all over the country. He was so busy that everyone else had become non-existent. He hadn't realized that he ran out of tea two hours ago. He had been sipping an empty cup for a while now. Night Eye sighed as he collected his thoughts. I've been calling heroes across the nation regarding the sudden intervention of the military special forces. Three days ago they began immediate raids on the Yakuza hideouts we and some other heroes have been following. Something just doesn't seem right about any of this, he said as he began to rub his forehead. I'm guessing I'm missing something here, because to me that sounds like a good thing. You need to see the bigger picture Muriel. Bubble Girl. Senate Piter, did we get any message from any kind of official about this or even another hero agency? No sir we've checked every hour today and yesterday and nothing. The military moved suddenly in several populated areas without notifying a single hero and without any official word from anybody. The break too many rules to count and as far as we know they didn't deserve this level of retaliation. What incidents happened with the Yakuza 3 to 5 days ago? Bubble Girl quickly went through the computer. Nothing from any official hero agencies, but it seems that the Demon Slayer kid got into a fight with a small group of them saving a child. Demon Slayer. Night Eye had been trying to figure the boy out for months. He was wrapped up in Mysterious and the official reaction made it even more strange. Did he have something to do with what was going on? 
Night Eye began to get lost in thoughts as he stared at one of his various All Might posters. Sir, Mirio if at any time you wish to switch internships I'll help find someone to take you in. Wait what? Bubble Girl, Centipider. The same can also go for you if at any point I cross a line that you feel uncomfortable with. Say the word and you can leave the agency. Huh. Right now the government is acting strange and somehow Demon Slayer is involved. If the government keeps withholding information and keeps us in the dark, I may be forced to start doing things off the books. This left the three in a bit of shock. Centipider recovered first. Sir do you really think that is necessary? Yes. If things continue this way but for now we will wait and keep an eye on Demon Slayer. Though for now I think it's time for me to reconnect with an old friend. Takuyu Tenshu had been a cab driver for years and has seen several things in his years as a cab driver but nothing made him more nervous than his current passenger in the back of his cab. It was a girl in what he assumed was in middle school wearing a white bandana on her head covering her long dark hair and hunting gear from the 19th century. In today's society that wouldn't be too weird maybe a reenactor or maybe a hero in training but what was really making him nervous was that she was cleaning a rifle right in the back of his cab. How in the world did this kid get a gun? What should I do? It looks like an old rifle used in hunting. I have heard of people who use old flintlock rifles for hunting so would this be grounds for me to call the cops or is it just an antique? Well here goes nothing. So miss if you don't mind me asking where exactly you headed. I'm heading to a mountain to do some hunting. She said without taking her eyes off of her rifle. Mountain, who missed this address you gave me is nowhere near any mountain. Said Taku. All he saw was nothing but fields along the highway they were currently driving on. A few trees here and there but no mountains. No, you are going the right way. I apologize if this is a little confusing. Usually I would run the whole way there as a form of training but I want to save my strength for the hunt. She said as she began examining her ammunition. Hunt, what exactly will you be hunting? A dangerous prey. Maybe the most dangerous. She grinned as she looked out the window. The turn is coming up by the way. Ooh right. Soon the cab turned down a long dirt road that ended with a group of trees. Thanks for the ride mister, here keep the change. Taku took the roll of cash which was easily double the amount the trip actually cost. He was about to protest the amount but she had already stepped away from the cab. He watched as she disappeared into the trees. Yeah I'm definitely gonna need to tell someone about this. Oh, the girl continued to walk until she exited the group of trees where she saw the mountain ahead of her. She began to walk up the mountain as she tried to calm herself. Six months I've been waiting for this. I need to calm down. I've barely climbed the mountain, can't get to worked up before the hunt begins. She continued to walk up the mountain for a while until she saw her destination in sight, Mr. Yushiro's estate. She was about to enter when she heard something from behind her. On instinct she hid herself behind a tree as she peered around it. She saw a girl around her age with a blonde hair and a ponytail, in jogging attire. The blonde ran around the side path to the other side of the estate. Who's she? I don't remember a foreigner staying here. She followed her to the other side to see someone else she didn't know. Come on Melissa you can do it. You're almost there. Cheered a little girl in a pink hiori. She had white hair and a small horn on her head. Melissa breathing hard tried to make a strong finish as she made it back to the starting line. She pushed herself to stay running as she passed the lap robot at the end of the path. BZZT running track completed. Melissa almost keeled over right then as she tried to catch her breath. Thanks Uri. Taking the water bottle from her. A taking a long drink. A-H-H-H. How does Izuku do this? He makes this look so easy. She said clearly exhausted from her run. Even though she has progressed by leaps and bounds, it was still quite tough and threw her out of her comfort zone. She was determined to keep going. He's been doing this for a while but you were able to shatter your previous record. Dad. Hey sweetie. Said David Shield hugging his daughter. How have you been? Great dad but what are you doing here? Not that I'm not happy to see you. Can't a father check up on his daughter? Well of course but you were here not too long ago. Melissa smirked Yushiro it's been almost two months since he dropped you off here. What really? It hasn't felt that long. Time flies when you're busy. This reminded her when she first met them. Oh. David and Melissa arrived and were led into the living room by Tomo. Where she saw Yushiro at a small table reading some papers. Ah oh, David good to see you again. David gave a small bow. Yes. It's good to see you too. I am happy to hear that you reconsidered what we discussed early. He said as he took a seat. Melissa followed her father's lead and took a seat, getting more and more confused why her father treated a kid who looked no older than her with such respect. Was he a genius or something? And who might this be? Oh my apologies, sir. This is my daughter Melissa. Hello, she said a little nervous. Greetings Miss Shield. She had already said hello and was confused on what to say next. Tia's day was getting weirder and wider for her. First her dad takes her to Japan. Then to a mountain that she could have sworn wasn't there a moment ago and now she is sitting across the table from a strange kid. Is something wrong miss? Ha. Huh. Oh no just wondering when Mr. Yushiro is gonna get here. 
This made her on the receiving end of two very confused stares. Did I say something weird? Maybe I should break the ice. Suo, what's it like to be Mr. Yushiro's assistant? Yushiro then gave David a deadpan stare. David scratched his cheek a little out of embarrassment. I may have forgotten to mention a few things to my daughter. Yushiro let out a sigh. I guess I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Yushiro. What but dad said Yushiro was a world-renowned doctor and scientist. You're my age. Melissa, I know it may be hard to believe but Mr. Yushiro here is immortal. Melissa's eyes nearly popped out in surprise. You're immortal? No. Well somewhat. I can die but it will take a lot to kill me. As for my background, my quirk is regeneration. Because of that I have nearly 200 years of medical and scientific knowledge and before you ask I'm 223 years old. 223. She yelled in shock. Before calming herself down. No way. I'm sorry but there's no way. I've spent years studying the first cases of quirks and all scientists related to the research and I've never heard of you or your quirk. HHMM I guess a demonstration is needed. Tomo board please. Tomo then came through the door with a board and plastic trash bag. She set the trash bag down in front of him and the board on top, then put a knife on the board. Melissa was confused but her father connected the dots first. Wait, you're not gonna do what I think you're gonna do are you? Before Melissa could ask what her father meant, Yushiro lifted the knife in the air and in one fluid motion severed his free hand. Melissa yelled in horror as she saw his severed hand on the board, though her horror soon turned into shock and then into intrigue as she saw Yushiro's hand grow back in a matter of seconds. You're like a starfish. Starfish. That's a new one. So you have been alive for hundreds of years and you're a scientist to boot, said Melissa then why are you here? Why haven't I heard of you? Your quirk alone is groundbreaking research. Melissa, said David raising his voice. I'm sorry Mr. Yushiro. The reason I didn't tell my daughter much was because I know how personal it is for you. It's fine, said Yushiro cleaning up his old hand giving it to Tomo to be properly disposed. Though maybe it's time I returned to society. You see Melissa things were different back all those years ago. I went into hiding for the safety of myself and for others around me and in hopes of helping the world from the background. In doing so I have acquired knowledge that most people don't have and said knowledge can help fix your problems. Problems? What problems? To heal all might of course. Huh. David too was also a little surprised but didn't really show it. So you knew then. It wasn't that hard to figure out. He has been slowing down a lot and he only works about 3 hours a day now. Honestly if you would have just told me who it was for we could have figured something out a week ago. Wait wait wait. Hold up what's wrong with Uncle All Might. There was silence as David tried to think of what to tell his daughter about All Might's condition. This is when Yushiro decided it was best to be honest. All Might currently has a hole in his side. After a fight with a powerful villain he lost half of his stomach a bit of his spleen and most other internal organs were shredded. He said as he handed her All Might's medical papers that David sent him. She quickly glanced at them. Daddy she said in a quiet voice. David gave his daughter a quick hug. Don't worry. With Mr. Yushiro's help we'll have All Might back on his feet, better than ever. Comforting his daughter. No. David and Melissa turned to Yushiro. What? I said no. What but you said you would help him? Yelled David borderline hysterical. We need him do you have any idea what would happen if we lost him? We need him back at full strength. I already have support gear for him. Please just heal him and make him better. Sure. David brain froze not understanding where this was going at all. Melissa wasn't faring any better but she was less frozen than her father. I don't get it. I'm fully willing to help All Might, fix up his body but that is not what I'm saying no to. Then what? Yushiro grabbed his tablet and put it on the table showing David's quirk-enhancing device. I won't help if you want to tamper with his quirk, said Yushiro. Melissa looked over the tablet studying the device while David was about to protest but Yushiro beat him to it. Let me guess he's the symbol of peace, the number one hero in the world. And you're gonna go on how we need him at full strength then let me ask you this simple question. What happens after he's dead? This stopped David in his tracks. He was already coming up with his arguments in his head to Yushiro's response. Though nothing he had was good. He's my best friend. He has helped so many people. I just can't imagine the world without my friend. He somberly said. It's a sad fact of life but one day he will be gone and when that happens the world needs to be ready. That's what I'm trying to prepare for. That's why we should be looking towards the next generation. I'm still willing to help him heal his body that alone should double the time he has for hero work. Really, yes I promise. I will help him if he accepts. Though I would like to talk to him first. Thank Io he said with a bow that Melissa followed. Just promise me no more of this quirk enhancement business. I've seen it done before and it didn't end well. David reluctantly nodded. Now who is your other patient? Did you bring them with you? This perked David up. He had waited for this. Yes the other patient is my daughter Melissa. HHHU. Daddy I'm fine. I'm not sick or anything. The doctors back at I Island gave me a clean bill of health. She said a little shocked. 
Yashiro you said over the phone that there weren't any quirkless people anymore but the doctors said my daughter is quirkless can you prove them wrong, please? Okay he said but inwardly he was cursing himself for not thinking this was a possibility. The quirkless factor wasn't for All Might but for Melissa. Melissa quirkly gathered all the information in her head on what this was about. What are you saying I could have a quirk? Of course you do, said Yashiro not missing a beat. I'm this far time to dive deeper into the rabbit hole. He thought as he stood up. Please stand up. She did so. David, remind me what was your quirk again. David showed him his hands and his fingers bending in odd directions. Bending fingers. Okay we'll start there. Melissa please show me your hands and arms. Good something I can work with. He thought as he began to examine her hands. Melissa what form of physical activity do you do? I'm um, not much the most I do is a bit of lifting when I carry junk or use one of my inventions. With that information Yashiro began moving her right arm while also measuring her pulse. Um if this is a medical checkup shouldn't we do this in a doctor's office or something? Getting a little embarrassed. We do have a medical office here but going there now would be pointless. I already got a good idea of your quirk. What that quickly? Yelled both shields in shock. We're home yelled Izuku getting their attention. The three then hear a small padding noise in the hall. They then open the hall door to see Izuku and a very excited Iri talking to Tomo. It was so fun. We ran the mountain, then to the fields and then and then we ran back to the peak of the mountain and ran on some fluffy clouds, said the excited child. Piggyback rides are so much fun. Yashiro walked up to them. Perfect timing. Izuku I would like you to meet. David Shield said Izuku somehow materializing his notebook. You're all Emite's first psychic. He as he disappeared only for Yushiro to catch him by the collar of his Hiori. You can fanboy over him later. Right now I need you to prepare the running course outside. He said letting the fanboy go. Tomo, I need you to outfit Melissa here with some workout clothes and a heartbeat monitor. Yes master. Oh and if you wouldn't mind on your way drop these files off in my office. You can just put them on my desk next to the wisteria plant. For a split second Tomo's face was stunned before she bows. Yes sir. Before taking Melissa to get changed. As the others made their way outside to the training grounds. No notice Tomo's reaction but Izuku. Who made a mental note to ask his sensei later. It didn't take long for Tomo and Melissa to come outside now sporting running top and shorts and her hair in a ponytail. Okay so what do you want me to do now? Asked Melissa. I want you to play tag with Izuku. All of them stood there as if they were stone. Huh. Tag that's a game right. Asked Iri can I play. Not this time Iri. Smirked Yushiro as he patted her head. This game is for Izuku and Melissa. And Izuku I don't want you going easy at all. Melissa this will be the toughest workout yet. So without further ado begin. Melissa was shocked by the suddenness of the situation and didn't move until Izuku poked her in the head. Hey. She complained as she tried to quickly grab him only for him to jump several meters away within a second. Without hesitation she chased after him. She tried several times to get close to him but could never reach him. This went on for several minutes with Melissa doing nothing but tiring herself out. David was getting worried. Izuku began to see some change in Melissa. Same with Tomo who expected it along with Yushiro who was ready to move to the stage and Uri who was wondering what's for dinner. Tomo, begin stage the next stage, said Yushiro. Okay, she said as a small weight disc appears in one hand and small coin in the other hand. She raised the coin the air as it began to glow. As the coin glowed the ground beneath Melissa began to move. In the span of second a small mountain raised below Melissa. She had no chance to react as she fell down the new mountain. The most she could hear were her father's cries, but something inside her knew what to do. She used her legs and jumped off the side of the mountain and did a double backflip before making a ten-point landing. How did I? Yep, she said as Izuku crashed in front of her as he tried to catch her. Yushiro took the weight from Tomo. Melissa think fast, as he threw the weight right at her. Without even thinking she caught it with ease. That alone left her stunned but when she opened her hands she was left speechless. She had somehow bent the disc. For a moment she thought the disc was fake but she had been working with metals for too long and could tell it was very real. Her father ran to her to make sure she was okay. Melissa are you okay? Yeah dad I'm fine. Look what I did. Showing the disc. How? He said looking at the disc before turning to Yushiro yelling. How did you know she was going to be okay? What if she fell? May I see the weight he asked and Melissa silently gave him the weight before dropping right where Melissa would have fallen. Only for it to bounce like a bouncy ball. Come now, she wasn't in any danger. Whenever we do something like this I have Tomo change the ground so if anyone falls they won't get hurt. David was going to continue but was interrupted by Melissa. How did you know I had a physical quirk or even a quirk in general? When I've been studying quirks for hundreds of years and come to the conclusion that everyone below the age of 50 or at the least 30 must have a quirk. Two, when I was examining your hands and arms, they felt more like the hands of a gymnast than one of an inventor also your ligaments didn't feel normal or I should say now the average that other people have. 
And before I get to the third I would like everyone here to check their heart. A bit confused everyone slowly put their hands on their chest. Except for Melissa without thinking she put her hand on her wrist checking her pulse. Huh what? You want us to check our heartbeats right? The best way is to check our pulse right. Yashiro slowly took her hands. Melissa, I hate to tell you this but you can't feel your heart. How what are you talking about? She said a little worried. I can feel your pulse right now through your hands. Can you feel the beating of your own heart in your chest right now? She couldn't. She stood there silent for a moment trying to feel it without using her hands but she couldn't. You just ran more than you ever had before in your life. Even though you're catching your breath right now your heart should be beating hard enough for you to feel it, you can't. She slowly shook her head. No but why? Ishiro let go of her hands as he put his hands on Izuku's shoulders. The third reason was when I met Izuku he was told he was quirkless. But I knew he wasn't because I had to operate on his lungs I knew that couldn't be true. That added with my calculations of quirk progression and the fact that quirk to the quirkless ratio has plateaued. It led me to a theory and discovery of what I believe to be a new gene in all of us that make us unable to feel the part of our body that our quirk affects. In Izuku's case it was his lungs in your case it was your heart. So the reason I didn't know I had a quirk was because I couldn't feel my heart. How come I didn't notice it before? How can anyone notice it? When you get medical checkups doctors use a stethoscope to hear your heartbeat. When a teacher wants to show the class they show you your pulse because your heart beats too quietly when you're not doing any physical activity. Your quirk seems to activate depending on your heart rate and blood pressure which while hard is hard but not impossible to control but even then you can't feel it. So unless someone had a quirk that could tell them or was physically checking for it, no one would know, not even you. But my toe joint. Oh don't even get me started on that stupid joint exam. Said Yushiro with annoyance. Several people with quirks have several joints in their toes. Honestly it's the laziest way for a doctor to tell whether or not if someone has a quirk. It doesn't even work and we have two people right here as proof of that. If it was up to me every doctor who uses that test would have their medical license stripped from them. While Yushiro was fuming about current medical practices, the shields were celebrating. David was so happy Melissa could have sworn he broke her back. But at the moment she was too happy to care. I got a quirk. I have a quirk. She kept crying into her father's chest. Yes. Yes you do. Now you can finally follow your dreams. Thanks dad. I promise I'll become a hero. One the greatest in the world. I'll help you every step of the way. I'll call the gym back at I Island and we can get you started and maybe All Might can help you get into UA. No, said Yushiro interrupting the touching scene. Getting everyone's attention. Oh for the love of. Said David getting really sick and tired of him saying no. What is it this time? Let me rephrase that. No that doesn't sit right with me. You see the reason I didn't let Izuku go back home right was one he was in no condition to go back. Two I'm still considered a global government secret which doesn't really apply to you but. Three we don't know the extent of her quirk that directly affects her heart. Like Izuku his abilities affect his lungs which in both cases can be a real medical issue. Not enough to stop them from becoming heroes if they train with them. So with your permission I would like her to stay here so I can keep an eye on her. To make sure nothing bad happens and I can guarantee with my training I can have her ready for the UA. Exam in 5 months. And if it bothers you so much you can stay here as well. We got plenty of room with state of the art equipment to keep up with your work if you want. The father and daughter looked at each other not really sure what to do. We may have to think about it. Ishiro nodded in understanding. Well while you think about it how about we go inside for some dinner. Said Tomo some of us haven't had anything to eat in a while. As two mightly growls come from Izuku and Iri's stomachs, they all laughed as they went back inside to eat. Over the course of the meal Melissa convinced her dad to let her stay so that she could train and become the hero she always wanted to be. While the other residents of the house had a conversation of their own. So you just messed with her heart, said Izuku wrapping his head around what had happened. Tomo simply nodded. So when Sensei asked you to put the files next to the wisteria plant that was code to somehow alter someone's heart, though we keep a spare phone next to the wisteria plant that I texted instructions to while you guys weren't looking, said Yushiro. As for the whole mess with her heart bit, I'm sure you can guess that one. Tomo's quirk right. They both nodded. Okay I get that part but what about the whole quirkless people don't exist thing that you said? Some of that is true. Doctors do need to look deeper for people's quirks and I already have a few ideas how to fix that in the meantime we need to start getting our lies straight cause all of this has shown me is that sooner or later we all are going to have to start walking in the line. So we're not going to tell them anything. Some half-truths here and there but for the most part no. I was willing to tell you and everything because my old friends brought you to me. To be honest I'm sure you already figured out I haven't exactly told you everything just yet. Yeah I kinda guessed. Knowledge is a powerful thing we need to be careful on how much we let others know about it. So I'm open to suggestions. Oh, incredible, Melissa, said David in two months your stats have already exceeded those of candidates to UA, who had years of training. Honestly I didn't think you could grow this much in such a short amount of time. 
Melissa glowing with pride and blushing a little bit out of embarrassment. Aunt Jez Dan thanks but the credit goes to Sensei Yushiro. If it wasn't for him I don't think I could get this strong. While I won't deny my hundred years of experience did help teaching you. Said Yushiro drinking his tea as he, David, Melissa, Tomo and Uri were drinking tea on the porch. But the years of teaching have taught me that students grow as fast as they are willing to learn. You're definitely determined to learn that for sure. Unbeknownst to most of them a girl with a rifle was watching them. Waiting for her prey to show. Hey guys. Yelled Izuku getting back from a delivery. I'm home. Izuku Oniai-chan yelled Uri. Izuku we're over here. Yelled Melissa. We're having tea. Oh hey Mr. Shield. Said Izuku running to his friends. How are you? Here to Viss as he was about to get the porch. He ran face first into an invisible wall. Izuku said both Melissa and Uri. As they and David stood up to check on him. Only to find the wall separating them from Izuku. As Izuku was getting up. Before anyone could question what was going on. He heard something. A click. Boom. As an explosion hit the invisible wall covering the outside with smoke. Nice call on the invisible wall. Tomo said Yushiro drinking his tea calmly. Thank you sir. What's going on? The three screamed while wondering why they were so calm. Don't worry she won't hurt us. She. Outside the wall the smoke was clearing revealing Izuku coughing slowly getting up from the surprise attack. Wait that attack. I know that attack. Well well well. Said a voice. They turned to see a girl with a rifle over shoulder standing on a rock. Long time no see Izuku Midoriya. Or should I call you Demon Slayer? Y-A-E-R-Y-O-S-H-I. He grinned it's time for round two. I-Z-U-K-U. Wait what are you doing? Asked a frantic Izuku trying to get a grip on the situation. What does it look like? Said Yi jumping down from the rock. I came here for a rematch. Raising her rifle at Izuku. So come on then let's do this. While Yi was threatening Izuku. Iri Melissa and David were getting a little worried about the whole situation. Seeing this Yushiro decided he should step in. Tomo bring the wall down for a second. Tomo complied and followed her master out towards the two. Yi, it's good to see you again. Hey old man how's it going? Not too bad but I'd wish your surprise visit didn't scare our guest over there. Pointing to the others. Was the sneak attack really necessary? Hey he started it. She said pointing at Izuku. What? Before he remembered how their first fight started. That was an accident. I didn't mean to crash into you. Well you jumped right in and went for the kill. No I didn't. Yes you did. As they began arguing back and forth. Melissa tapped Tomo on the shoulder. What are they talking about and who exactly is she? Yushiro answered. She's the daughter of my former bodyguard. They come by every now and then. Though six months ago the two agreed to have a friendly spar after Izuku got done with a delivery I asked of him. Okay so what happened? Tomo chuckled a little. As per usual Izuku got into a fight with a villain and was running late. So when he rushed back he kinda forgot to look where he was going and crashed right into Yi. She didn't take it well and began firing at him the second she stood up. Said Yushiro. Though in the end Izuku won and she lost. That's when she vowed she would return to defeat him someday and it looks like today is that day. Yushiro watched the two squabble a bit before stopping the farce. Okay then enough stop both of you. Izuku and Yi immediately stopped arguing. While Yushiro was thinking how he wanted this to go. Sir, do you want me to delay dinner? Wait said Yi I want my rematch. Yi the rematch can wait. Said Izuku getting a little annoyed. I'll go help set up dinner. Izuku was about to go inside and help Tomo only to be stopped by Yushiro. A dinner and a show that sounds like a lovely idea. S-E-N-S-E-I. Yes, cheered Ye. Oh before I forget. She pulled out a letter handing it to Yushiro. My dad wanted me to give this to you. Better give it to you now before we get started. Hold it, said Yushiro putting the letter inside his kimono. Tomo set up dinner on the southern side overlooking the mountain. You two can fight on the lower side where we can watch. It's flatter with fewer trees to get in your way and you will begin fighting at the sound of the gong. Agreed. Agreed. Izuku sighed a little. Agreed. Oh, it didn't take long for Tomo to set up dinner. Everyone was eagerly waiting for the fight to get started. Melissa and Uri were slightly worried. Tomo and Yushiro weren't worried at all though Yushiro did make sure if that things got too out of hand that Tomo would put an end to it. David though was curious. So Mr. Yushiro how good is Yi in a fight? Well last time I saw her she was already at a pro hero level. Though last time her and Izuku fought it was clearly one-sided with Izuku beating her without really trying. So do you think he's going to win? Without a doubt, said Tomo putting the food down. Izuku has been fighting real villains. I hate to say it but he doesn't really stand a chance. This should be over quickly. I'm not so sure, said Yushiro looking at the two ready to fight. He is different now. What happened to her? He thought as both fighters got ready down below. Looks like both of them are ready to fight might as well get this started. As he walked to the edge of the hill. Are you two ready? Yes, sensei, said Izuku hand on his sword. You know it, old man, said Yi loading her rifle. All right then on the sound of the gong you may begin. The fight will end if either one of you is knocked out or is unable to continue or surrender. As he walked back towards the gong. Hey ya, yeah. 
No hard feelings when this is over, said Izuku ready to get this over quickly. Just you wait, I'll show you what I can do. Trying to keep her emotions in check, Yashiro was about to hit the gong when Ri asked if she could do it. Yashiro gave the mallet to the little girl who carefully gave the gong a good hit. Ji Uang, the second she heard the gong he fired six rapid shots at Izuku. Izuku carefully looked at them before deflecting them. Strange none of them looked like explosion rounds. That's what she opened with last time. He thought as he dashed forward at Yi who launched another barrage at Izuku. Izuku quickly deflected and dodged them. He was about to use the breath of lightning to close the gap before a bullet grazed him from the side. He quickly turned to see more bullets coming at him. They're curving, as he dodged again. She's curving the bullets, said Melissa as they saw Yi fire at different angles and for the bullets in mid-air change directions and attack Izuku at different angles. While she has improved last time she wasn't able to curve the bullets that well, said Yushiro. It's going to take more than that to beat Izuku, said Tomo. Izuku was having enough of this and made a dash at Yi once he saw an opening, and as expected she aimed her rifle right at him and fired several shots. Izuku got ready to deflect the bullets though as his sword made contact with the bullets they turned into liquid metal before hardening around his blade. What he yelled forcing to lower his blade as it began to weigh a lot more. She melted the bullets weighing down my blade. When could she do that? He quickly put his thoughts away and tried to move only to look down and see his foot stuck to the ground with metal. When did she? Gotcha now, said Yi as she fired more rounds at him. This time the bullets had a distinctive red glow. Explosive round. Critted Izuku breath of flame Izuku quickly used the flame to melt the metal on his blade and foot, before using it to counter Yi's exploding bullets, caused the area around him to be covered in smoke. Yi knew he would come out running and had her rifle pointing at the smoke ready for him to come out. She waited for him to make a move. She waited and waited until the smoke finally cleared. What? Where is he? She quickly scanned the area. He didn't dash out of the smoke from any direction and he doesn't have any ability to go underground so above. As Izuku came down fast as she brought her rifle up to intercept but Izuku was faster and with the tip of his sword deflected the barrel of her gun. Izuku was about to end the fight when suddenly she stepped forward and blocked Izuku's blade with her own. What the? said Izuku as he looked at Yi's gun which she was using to clash and lock with Izuku's sword. It now had a blade on the bottom of the barrel that turned it into a gun blade. Didn't see that coming did ya? said Yi with a cocky grin. Well you're not gonna see this either. Bang! As Izuku felt the kick directly to his head. Izuku barely had time to see his smoking foot hitting him in the face. Shit, I really did underestimate her. Thought Izuku as he disengaged and ran for cover. The others above stared in shock as they saw Izuku run for cover. Wow, how did she do that? Asked Melissa was that some sort of equipment? Like a gun on the bottom of her foot. Like a witch? Asked Iri. Not all witches have guns on their feet. Iri said David but if I had to guess it's her quirk isn't it? Yes, said Yushiro not taking his eyes off the battlefield. Her quirk strange metal. Iriyoshi quirk, strange metal. He can produce a strange metal substance from her body that she can control. She can make it bouncy like rubber, hard as steel or ignited it causing it to explode. She can even change its shape. The only problem is she can make a lot of it at one time or else she begins to hurt herself. So she can only make small objects like bullets or a large knife. Wait I thought she could only produce and control only a bit of her metal at a time. Asked Tomo how was she able to make a large blade. It most likely isn't a full blade. Said Yushiro most likely she simply used the same amount she would a knife and restructured it so it could hold an attack or two from Izuku. It would probably break with too many hits. Yushiro's guess was spot on as he examined her gun blade. Damn, already chipping after a single attack. Looks like I can't fight him close range with this. She thought as she melted the metal back to the bottom of her gun. Well looks like it's time to turn things up a notch. She said as she reached behind her to the back of her jacket. Hey Izuku you ready it's time to end the warm up. Izuku peered behind the tree to see Yi holding up several gun barrels in one hand. Cause I'm all fired up. Izuku was getting nervous now. And the warm up. What is she talking about and since when was she this strong? She wasn't this good a few months ago. Similar thoughts were being had amongst the viewers. Though all went silent as a huge blast cut through the forest. E-O-O-O-M. What the? Was all Izuku could yell as he felt a massive shock wave hit him. As if a cannonball whizzed by his head. As he got up he could see a smoldering trail of burnt trees. As he followed the trail he saw Yi holding her rifle that now looked like the barrel had exploded itself. Where did that power come from? Thought Izuku as Yi took off the now destroyed barrel and put a new one on. What the hell was that? Asked Tomo now very scared for Izuku. Did she switch guns? No Tomo that was her quirk. Said Yushiro. Those barrels must be coated on the inside with strange metal. Boosting the bullet's power though the barrels can't contain the power and break with a single shot. Hence the other barrels she has. The others had a few questions or concerns but another huge blast broke them out of their thoughts. Damn he's dodging it better than I was expecting. Maybe this wasn't the best idea to open up with this so soon. And oh, 
Get those thoughts out of your head ye, she thought to herself, trying to keep her head in the game. I'm not the same person I was six months ago, she said as she loaded the third barrel. I'll show them all what I can do. Izuku dodged the second blast, though he could tell the shockwaves were doing enough damage to his internal organs. Okay I need to make a move now or else those shocks alone will do me in. He thought as he made his decision and charged. Breath of lightning. As Izuku flashed head on, he hesitated for a second but fired a third blast right at Izuku. Izuku saw this coming and jumped right over the shot. He cursed as she ejected the now useless barrel and reached for another. Izuku was about to get but she did something no one expected and threw her barrelless rifle at him. Izuku used his free hand to deflect the gun and used his sword to try to end this but when he did she used a barrel to deflect his blade and hit him in the shoulder with another. She's using her gun barrels as eskrima sticks, thought Izuku as he began a close combat bout with Yi as they traded blows Nether was giving an inch. Izuku began using the breath of insects to get a few cuts in while Yi began to mix in some of her blast kicks at Izuku. Okay enough is enough as Izuku used the breath of earth to send her back a few meters. As Yi recovered she looked at the dents in her gun barrels. He was able to dent these. That some power as flowers began to appear from her hands and wrists. He instantly dropped her two gun barrels. The second she did they were sent flying away in opposite directions. Izuku was right in front of her. She quickly unzipped her jacket revealing a white tank top and rows of throwing knives on the inside of her jacket. She quickly threw several of them as they exploded in front of Izuku creating a smoke screen. No I'm not backing away, said Izuku as he made a beeline in the direction of her discarded rifle, knowing that would be where she would be headed. He tried to counterattack and threw several knives at him and in his path. Though with Izuku's speed it was tedious at best, he was able to make it to the rifle. Okay E this is over Seren Izuku was cut off as a bullet hit his hand causing him to almost lose his sword. Always have a back plan, Izuku, said Yi holding up a revolver in each hand. Izuku began to move as she began to fire. He tried to dodge when suddenly all the bullets she just fired began to ricochet on the rocks and trees. Izuku quickly tried to turn and avoid them all but was unable to. Come on Izuku you can do better than that. What did a black cat cross your path? Izuku was in pain now each metal that covered him felt like he was getting slapped by all might. The metal made it hard for him to move and the shock waves from early made it hard to breathe but most importantly he was getting angry. As he sent another volley of bullets Izuku used the breath of wind to send several wind blades at he had no choice but to dodge the condensed wind and keep firing until Click both guns ran out of ammo. Izuku in a flash of lightning closed the gap but stopped when he saw what he did next. He quickly created more bullets in her cleavage and used her breasts to bounce them in the air as she spun around she caught, reloaded her guns. It took Izuku and several others to process what just happened. Did, did she just use her boobs to reload her gun? Asked Melissa still not believing it. I never thought I would see something like that. Said David have you ever seen? He stopped as he noticed Yushiro pinching the bridge of his nose and Tomo completely livid. Out of everyone she uses that blonde bimbo's technique. Tomo calm down she's not a bimbo she's just an idiot that loves hot springs way too much. Who are you guys talking about? Past Duri. We'll tell you later for now let's see what happens next. They all looked down to see Yi making Izuku dance with her dual revolvers and with her unique reloading technique she wasn't running out of ammo anytime soon. Izuku had no choice but to use the breath of the serpent to get away. That's twice now she forced him to retreat, said Tomo with her anger replaced with concern. He skills with dual guns is remarkable, said Yushiro I haven't seen such skill in years not since two hands sailed the sea. This only caused a few confused faces. She was a pirate at the dawn of quirks who was an expert at dual wielding guns. Before they could say oh a huge pillar of fire cut through the air. Izuku used the fire to melt the bits of metal still on him as he stared down Yi who was picking up her rifle. Alright that's what I'm talking about said Yi putting her last barrel on her gun. The breath of the sun, your strongest fighting style. I got something for that. As she held up a special round that was glowing blue. I'm at my limit physically and my quirk is pushing it. If I make any more from my arms, feet, or chest I'm going to run the risk of tearing my skin. It's this or nothing, thought Yi as she loaded the round. I'm running on fumes, thought Izuku she's pushed me farther than anyone else. My body hurts and I can feel my lungs fill with blood. If I don't get her with this attack I'm gonna lose. Master we need to stop this, said Tomo now. I think she's right, said David this is going too far. I know and I think the mountain agrees, said Yushiro pointing behind Ye. Crack, alright time to end this, as Ye raised her rifle. Crunch, I agree Ye look out behind you yelled Izuku. Break, really Izuku. That isn't going to said Ye as the top half of a tree hit the top of her head, though to everyone's surprise half a tree wasn't enough to knock her down. No this fight isn't over. As she finally collapsed to the ground, Izuku didn't know what to do but just stared at Yi's unconscious body. It just didn't seem real with how the fight was going. Izuku didn't move until Yushiro came up to him and lightly slapped his stomach causing him to vomit blood. 
I see you Kyu said the others as they joined him. Don't worry he's just fine, said Yushiro as he went to check up on Yi. Izuku are you alright? asked Melissa. Izuku could only shake his head. But you won, said Uri hugging his leg. No he didn't, said Yushiro pulling on Yi jacket causing several bullets and knives to fall out. She had several more tricks up her sleeves. They maybe weren't as powerful as what she was about to hit you with but she had way more in the gas tank than you and her lungs aren't filling up with blood. Izuku could only hang his head in shame. Also during the close combat exchange she scored more hits in and she was able to hit you several times with her bullet. He said walking up to Izuku. Though I guess we should have expected that after the superb performance she showed us but the one thing I expected you to do was not to freeze the second you saw her chest bounce. Izuku's face instantly turned red from the memory. Well how was I supposed to see that coming? It doesn't matter if you were expecting it or not. You shouldn't freeze just because you see a girl giggle a little. He said with a complete straight face. Izuku was still a little embarrassed about that part but overall still hurt over his loss. Is he going to be okay? She'll be fine. For a normal person I would say they would be out for a day but for Yi I'd say about 3 hours. After that you can continue where you left off or start round 3. That's for you guys to decide. But for now, Tomo, take Yi to a spare room and prepare the bean tea for her and Izuku. Tomo nodded before bending down to Yi and in a flash both of them disappeared. Come now Izuku, you still have dinner waiting for you. He nodded as he made his way back to the house. Will he be okay? Asked David staying behind with Yushiro. He'll be fine. This is his first loss since he received training from me. He's fought villain after villain and won each time. His confidence will be bruised along with what little ego he has. Though if I were honest I'd say this was a good thing because it's far better to get a loss from a friend than it is to receive one from an enemy. Hey, said Uri running up to the two men. We'll leave you behind. We're coming, Uri. Hey I got a question. How did the mountain know to stop the fight? David laughed a little at the girl. The mountain doesn't really think. It was just a coincidence. She then looked over to Yushiro to confirm this. Though his only response was a smug smirk, David got an irritated look. If I ask the question you're just going to give me a vague answer aren't you? You're learning. Oh. They all went back inside and Tomo quickly brought Izuku some bean tea. Melissa then explained to her father that the beans used in the tea were actually beans made from a quirk and have super healing properties. Though since the beans take a long time to grow, Yushiro discovered a way to make them last longer by turning it into tea which made a single bean last longer and heal several people. Though the surprising part was that it was made by a cat in a tower. While that was happening Izuku quickly drank his tea and ate his dinner still a little down. Though he made sure to record every part of the fight down in his notebooks. It was actually a surprising sight as he was doing this in the living room for everyone to see. No matter how many times those who have seen it before have, it still was incredible on how well he could take notes. Though Uri was happy Izuku wasn't taking the loss too hard, she still wanted to cheer him up. Hey Tomo, she said pulling on Tomo's kimono. Can we have dessert? Of course, Uri. What would you like? Uri quickly went to Izuku. Izuku Oni-chan, what do you want for dessert? Oh um, I'm not really sure, what do you want? Uri wanted him to say what he wanted. HHMM milkshake. Do you want a milkshake? A milkshake sounds great. Tomo, I can definitely make you guys some milkshakes. Oh wait, our blender is still broken. Melissa instantly tensed at the mention of the broken blender, which didn't go unnoticed by her father. What happened to the blender? Wait did you let Melissa into the kitchen? He said as the words stabbed Melissa. Yep said Yushiro you could have warned us about that one. Melissa felt more stabbies. Sorry to be honest we have chiefs and robots cook for us back at I Island so we never really had to use our kitchen for cooking. Clearly, though Uri, Izuku can take you and get you some milkshakes in the city. Really said Uri hoping this would cheer up Izuku. Sensei, Izuku I know your mind is elsewhere but a distraction may be good for you to clear your head a little. Okay if you say so. Melissa you want to come with? Nah, she said recovering from the words. I think I'm going to work on my project for a bit. Okay come on Uri, said Izuku as he knelt down so Uri could hop on his back. When they made it to the entrance of the house they dashed down the mountain toward the city for a sweet treat. Oh, hey boss the demon slayer kid just entered the city. Really where is he? It looks like he just entered the mall. Alright stay on him while I gather the others. It's time to put that brat in his place. He laid there in the middle of the training hall bleeding from her arms and legs with hundreds if not thousands of bits of metal lying around her. Why a she was barely holding on to consciousness but she could hazily make out her father's appearance. Oh hey dad. She said weakly but at the same time trying to sound like nothing was wrong. He what are you doing? He said gently holding his daughter. You used your quirk way too much. You're ripping the flesh right off your body. I have to get it back. She said, beginning to cry. I'm so weak. My quirk is weak. I can't make a sword or hammer without my skin breaking. I thought when I was able to make complex bullets I could be strong like you. Strong enough to follow. To follow you. To beat bad guys and help you and mom, but I can't. He took it. I have to get it back. 
In a single day he took all my hard work and threw it away. I have to get stronger. I have to prove to myself I'm strong. He stop it. You're strong he said trying to reassure his daughter. No, I have to be stronger. It's all I have. I will beat him. I will beat Izuk you. Oh said Yi waking up in a bed holding her head. My head. What happened? It took a moment for Yi to remember what happened. That stupid tree. Wait a minute the branch knocked me out. Not Izuku. He ran from our fight. She said before grabbing her gear and rushing out of the room. Oh, Melissa sat in the workshop looking at her weapon she was working on. When Melissa discovered her quirk she released that something like a gymnastic ribbon works surprisingly well for her and Yushiro thought it would be best if she learned a little bit of sword play so she has been working on a hybrid sword whip that could collapse into the hilt. She was working on this and several other ribbon themed support items that would work well with her quirk. She had made some progress with some but finally put the finishing touches on the blade. Melissa tested it as the blade successfully retracted into the hilt. Perfect, she said before screaming as the door was slammed open. Izuku, screamed Yi as she entered the room. Where's Izuku? Huh? Oh you're the foreign girl. Do you know where Izuku is? Izuku's not here at the moment, said Melissa as she put her new weapon down. He went into the city with Uri. As she grabbed her I Heart Eye Island hoodie, but the letters were so faded the only thing you could make out was the large faded pink heart. I'm Melissa by the way, she said holding out her hand. Iriyoshi. As they shook hands. Uri. Who's Uri? Is she that little girl I saw? Yep Melissa put on her hoodie and grabbed her new toy, ready to show it to her father. They went out for milkshakes. They went out for milkshakes, said Yi in a neutral tone. They went out for milkshakes and left us. Melissa visible jumped at Yi's sudden yell. Come on, as Yi grabbed Melissa. Oh, so your friend's a little disappointed with the halt of the project, said Yushiro as he sipped his tea. Unfortunately yes, he had a lot of hopes for it, said David also enjoying his tea. Before Yushiro could reply Yi burst into the room. Old man, you're up only after two hours. Impressive. He was about to say something before getting dizzy and Melissa having to steady her. Before anything else how about you drink some of the healing tea we have? Tomo, here, said Tomo holding the teapot and a teacup. It's a little cold so if you want I can warm it up for you. He ignored the cup and grabbed the pot from Tomo and began to drink directly from the pot. Before they knew it, she drank every last drop. But ah, uh, man even when this stuff is cold it still hits the spot. Wow, you are just full of surprises. Ignoring Tomo Yi continued hey old man, can me and Melissa go after Izuku? As long as you two stay together and all four of you are back before ten, I have no problems. Wait hold up sensei, dad, said Melissa surprised about this sudden change of plans. She wanted her dad to say something but he was glowing with happiness. My daughter is finally hanging out with people her age, making it sound like she had no social life, which she didn't but would never admit. Dad, alright let's go. Tomo make us a portal. Wait, said Melissa trying to get Yi's attention. I'm still in sweats and haven't taken a shower or done my. Don't worry about it, said Yi grabbing the hood on her hoodie and pulling it over her head. Just keep your hood on and no one will even know who you are. Tomo pulled a key from her sleeve and put it into the air. And as if opening a lock a portal appeared in the middle of the room. This will take you right outside the mall Izuku and Yuri are at. The mall is within your guy's running distance but if you need a pickup don't hesitate to call. He didn't think twice and grabbed Melissa by the arm against her protests and jumped through the portal. I'm a little surprised how quickly you accepted Melissa to go out, said Yushiro as the portal closed behind the girls. She spent most of her time with scientists and hasn't had a chance to be a kid, said David besides how much trouble can four kids get into. Yushiro and Tomo looked at each other before giving David a deadpan stare. You might regret saying that. Oh, calm down, you need to relax, said Achako Yuraka to herself. The test is in three months just sit down and enjoy your milkshake. As she made her way to a table in the middle of the mall, hoping her sweet snack would calm her down. She was getting more and more nervous about the UA test as the months went by it was starting to get to her. She did even realize she bumped into someone. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay said Izuku. Holding two milkshakes. Demon Slayer. Achako couldn't believe it. She just bumped into the person everyone is talking about. Japan's youngest vigilante in recent years. What are you doing here? Getting some milkshakes to satisfy this one's sweet tooth. He said giving one of the shakes to Uri who happily began to drink up her shake. He then reached down and picked up a cell phone on the ground. It was showing an article on things to expect during the UA entrance exam. Is this phone yours? Yes that's mine. I'm sorry it must have fallen out when we bumped into each other. So planning on going to UA? Yeah, she said while pushing her fingers together. It's going to be tough but I'm going to give it my best shot. Do, do you have any advice for an amateur like me? Advice? Um well. What advice could I give? We're the same age and I'm not a professional yet. I'm not a pro yet. That's right I'm still learning. Maybe I have been rushing a little. Thought Izuku realizing he may have been taking his loss early a little hard. 
I just need to learn from it. Oh uh, Mr. Slayer are you okay? Said Achako pulling Izuku out of his thoughts. Sorry you kinda went silent for a minute. Oh I'm sorry I kinda got lost in thought there. Oh and I'm Izuku Midoriya. Sorry about the late introduction. I'm Achako Uraraka. Well Ms. Uraraka the best advice I can give right now would be to keep calm and to stay on your toes. You won't do any good if you're a nervous wreck. So keep calm and be ready to move. You won't get anywhere if you freeze up in the middle of the exam. Okay I'll give it a shot, said Achako before something unexpected happened. He hugged her and for a moment her mind went blank before he pulled her out of the way as a chair came flying across the dining area. When Izuku let her go she saw several big men walking towards them. Demon Slayer we've been looking for you, said a man covered in metal. He had several goons flanking them. Some of them were still wearing prison jumpsuits. Aren't you that bank robber whose arm I broke? Said Izuku looking at the growing crowd of criminals. What a minute didn't I take several of you guys down? Yeah you did, said a man with spikes coming out of his arms. A good friend gave us an early release so we can come down here and show you our appreciation. The man covered in metal stepped forward. So how about you sit there and let us? Hey said he coming and performing a flying kick to the man's face, sending the man flying. Hey we ain't done with our fight. What? What are you doing here? Asked Izuku more surprised at ye being here than the criminals. You were knocked out. Shouldn't you be in bed or on your way home? I came here looking for you. Said you like it was the obvious thing to do. How was I supposed to leave with an ending to a fight like that? You just kick a man. Said Melissa catching up to her friends. What the? You can't just kick a random person. Actually that was a criminal that's here for revenge. Clarified Izuku and what are you doing here? I kinda got dragged here. Wait these guys are criminals Izuku nodded Melissa began to quietly panic. I'm not ready for this, she said in a whisper. Wait a minute, said Yi getting everyone's attention. All these guys here are criminals. Perfect. Receiving odd looks from everyone, even the stunned criminals. Time for round three. The person who takes out the most criminals wins. What? Yelled Melissa. We're in the middle of a mall and there are already heroes nearby we can get in a lot of trouble. You can join in, if you want. Melissa turned to Izuku for some semblance of common sense. Well we do need to do something about them. Nope common sense has left the room. Izuku grabbed his sword. All right let's dance. Oh, ding dong went the doorbell. Inko opened the door revealing her friend Mitsuki. Mitsuki, it's so good to see. Yo Inko, how have you been? Been doing as good as I can be. Come and I've got some tea brewing for us. Said Inko ushering Mitsuki into the living room. As Mitsuki walked into the living she saw the wall that was filling up with newspaper clippings of Izuku's exploit. Mitsuki was happy to see Inko doing better or as good as can be in this odd situation. She could tell her friend has been suffering with the disappearance and reappearance of her child. Mitsuki herself felt guilty knowing her own child was responsible for the separation. Here you go, said Inko giving a teacup to Mitsuki. So how's Katsuki been? He's been doing alright. He's actually become quiet nowadays. If he isn't studying, he's training. A lot. He's even been training with that Kirishima kid. Really, I didn't think they knew each other. Yep about a month after that kid visited you, Katsuki tracked the kid down for an interrogation. After that the next thing I know the kid came by to train with Katsuki. That's good Katsuki is making a new friend. After Izuku's disappearance Katsuki had become a loner and not many people in his school would even talk to him. Inko's phone gave a quick beep. Oh it's almost time for the news. Oh come now Inko. Izuku has gotten popular but he isn't going to show up every night on the news. Inko tuned on the news. Demon Slayer and two unidentified teenage girls are currently taking on a horde of villains at the Lone Pine Mall. We take you now to the scene. What the TV showed could only really be described as chaos. Thank you, Dekaku. Things here are going crazy. A girl with a rifle is riding on a bull villain while firing what could be described as a liquid metal that is sticking these men to the wall. A hooded girl is somersaulting and tossing men twice her size and using some sort of ribbon sword to counter those with firearms. Look she just did a double front flip on that guy. Wait are those three over there floating? Crash look it's Demon Slayer and did he just summon a water dragon? As the TV showed Izuku slamming a huge water dragon into a group of villains. Well looks like I was wrong, said Mitsuki watching the madness unfold. Yep, my little hero is out there saving the world, said Inko on the verge of tears. I can't wait for him to come home. She might have been crying if the TV didn't recapture her attention. Hold it all of you right now, said the metal criminal who was now sporting a huge black eye and currently holding a gun to a little girl in a pink hiori drinking a milkshake. The odd thing was the girl wasn't really paying him any attention. She was totally relaxed even with a firearm pointed directly at her, as if this was nothing more than a stranger saying hello to her. Crap it's the first one I kicked, said the rifle girl. I thought I put him out pointed her gun right at him and looked ready to fire before Izuku and Hooded Girl began waving their arms and making the throat slashing movement as if warning him of something. Nobody move or the man then swapped the girl's milkshake, spilling the contents all over the ground. This girl gets it, 
That's when the little girl screamed. My milkshake. Oh, dear Master Yashiro. I'm sorry for not coming around more but my work beckons me. You have done so much for my family. I hate to ask you of this but I need your help. It's you. My beautiful daughter has grown up so quickly it's made me realize I may have failed in my duties as a parent. You were right. My work has brought me to every corner of the world and even though it has put food on the table it hasn't provided a stable home for my family. You warned me of this and it is only now to see how right you are. My daughter has been robbed of her childhood and her view had become narrowed. She has spent her life following me in my jobs of hunting elusive criminals. She has only been shown the strength of pros and law enforcements alike causing her to believe she has to be strong and I fear it will bring her down a troubled path. It truly showed after her defeat at the hands of young Midoriya. It also showed what I believe she needs. She needs to be around children her age. She needs to see what life is like from a normal perspective or as normal as a hero society can get. I've suggested hero school before but she quickly rebuffed the idea. Though I believe a hero school would be best for her. Give her the right balance of a normal life and an adventurous one, with peers that she can connect with. So please if you can find a way to convince her to give it a try. I think she will find what she is missing. Please help my daughter. Your humble servant and friend Matazo Ryoshi. Yusiro was staring at the letter when David came back from the restroom. Is that the letter ye gave you? Yep, said Yushiro giving the letter to David deeming it safe for him to read. Her father believes he failed his daughter. I think you can relate to that. David quickly read the letter. From the looks of it his jobs makes him travel a lot. Yes, Yushiro nodded. I definitely can relate to something like that. With my job at Eye Island and Melissa's incredible intelligence, I felt like she wasn't given the chance to be a child or even experience a life with another her age in a stable environment. It was common for scientists to come and go on Eye Island so it was hard for Melissa to keep any friends. Mstazo Ryoshi. That name sounds familiar. I'm not surprised. Matazo is a bounty hunter of sorts. He's the guy they call in to hunt down dangerous and elusive criminals but what he is best known for is capturing animals that have quirks and people who try to use them. Like those kids who were riding giant armored spiders in South America. Or the reindeer near Super Train causing people to hallucinate. Or I know the one you probably heard about the giant red dog in the States. Oh I remember that one. A dog turned giant overnight and ran after a truck full of doggy treats. That's the one. Didn't they make a TV show about the dog? The giant good boy. Yuri's watched a few episodes. Honestly if it wasn't for that show that dog would have eaten them out of house and home. So Matazo was the one who was able to catch the dog and handle the situation. I met Matazo when we were dealing with a highly intelligent gorilla. Afterwards we dealt with various other creatures and over the years his exploits have become bigger and bigger and he has seen a lot of them. The biggest thing she wants to do is follow her father's footsteps. With how much they've moved and how little social interaction she's had, strength and the ability to take down the biggest beast there is, is all that matters in her eyes. Even though Matazo didn't hit her or abuse her, he has unintentionally taken much from her and given her a big shadow to live under. I can relate to that. When Melissa was told she was quirkless, she tried relentlessly to become the greatest support inventor there ever was. Though I could tell her heart was never fully into it and every time I made something her heart sank a little more. All she knew were the science of I Island and the heroes that visited it. Honestly sometimes I wondered if I should have let her live with some relatives or all might. Maybe then she could find something. Don't treat yourself so harshly. I've seen worse and you're trying the best you can and you want to do better. That put a smile on David's face. Same with Matazo. He just wants what's best for Yi and I think he might be right but she's boar-headed and convincing her might be a challenge. Scratch that it will be a challenge, said Yushiro imagining how that conversation will go. David thought it would be best to change the subject. Do you think Yuri will be fine growing up here? Asuhiro was caught off guard by the question. To be honest I don't know. She's more than welcome to stay here after we are done with fixing her quirk but if she wants to go somewhere else I wouldn't mind making the arrangements. Really, you're not worried something would happen to her if she leaves. What if someone attacks her? She's more than capable of protecting herself if she gets in a fight. Does she have control of her quirk? No, though through her treatment an interesting side effect happened. When we started to fix her body and focused her quirk inward, her body began to condense her muscles in a way. What do you mean? You know how when muscles fibers tear and grow back stronger than what they were before? David nodded. Her quirk began to act strange when we began to operate. Her body began to rewind forward in a way. Her muscles, bones and certain parts of her body that were destroyed by overhaul began to return and heal or combine if you will with her body like the muscles of someone who was working out. The muscles and bone fibers broke and healed stronger than before causing her muscles to gain the density equivalent to the amount of times overhaul killed her. I believe it was her quirk's way of adapting to working on the inside of her body. Wait are you saying her quirk combined with your operations cause her body to heal and strengthen to the amount of times she was tortured? Yashiro's smirk said it all. But that means she could have the muscle density of all might. 
Not all might levels of strength but you would definitely mistaken her for having a strength quirk. That's why I pity the idiot that tries to pick a fight with her. Overhaul may have just created his own worst enemy. Tomo instantly appeared in the room causing both men to jump a little. Sorry sir, but you have to see this. She turned on the TV showing a lot of chaos at the mall and several familiar faces at the center. David's jaw fell as he watched the TV. So what was that about how much trouble could four kids get into? Oh, you, slam, killed, slam, my, slam, milkshake screamed Uri as she tossed around the metal bank robber around like a rag doll. Beside the pain the only other thing going through the man's mind was I should have just become a plumber like mom wanted, before throwing the man into a wall. The man was alive but regretting so much. Holy crap, said Yi grinning ear to ear at the display. Where were you keeping her? She's awesome. Uri Chan are you okay? Asked Melissa comforting the girl, who was tired and still sad over her fallen milkshake. Don't worry Yuri, said Izuku putting his sword away. We can get you a milkshake next time. He patted her head. Alright looks like we took care of all of them, said Yi joining the rest of them. Wait who was keeping score? Really yeah, said Izuku looking at his friend. You know keeping score and all that isn't what hero work is all about. Yi only raised her eyebrow. Yi look around not only did we stop the bad guys we made sure no one got hurt. As Izuku said this a crowd began to gather around clapping and cheering for them. Yeah way to go demon slayer. Did you see those girls they kicked ass? The little one is so cute. Can I get an autograph in your number? Chicks with guns can't get better than that. He was visible blushing at the attention. She couldn't help but feel a warm feeling in her chest. She couldn't help but enjoy the attention. She's never been the center of attention before not like this. Hold it right there. You're all under arrest, said a booming voice ruining the moment. They all turned to see the number two hero Endeavor. They could all feel the tension in the air as Endeavor slowly walked towards them with a serious look in his eyes. You kids have caused enough trouble for one day and your days of being a vigilante has ended. Crap thought Izuku. He was ready for a fight while Melissa was trying not to freak out, hoping to not get arrested. Your face is on fire. Yeldery breaking the tension. PFFT Izuku had to stop himself from laughing as he heard some people in the crowd chuckle. Yuri Chan, that's just his quirk and it's part of his costume. Wait that fire's real. Asked Yi wait how do you see? Doesn't the haze mess with your vision? The curiosity was able to calm Melissa's nerves. Actually his quirk should give him some resistance but doesn't that it get into your eyes or do you have some sort of contact lens? These questions only serve to annoy Endeavor. Enough, you're all under arrest and you'll have your questions answered down at the police station. Can't, we got a curfew. Sighed ye wait why do we have a curfew? Again, we have to get Uri home before her bedtime. Informed Izuku. What I'm not even tired yet. Uri said through a yawn. Izuku chuckled. I think we've had enough excitement for one day. As he kneeled down to Lettery on his back. Come on we should head back. Hold it. Endeavor's fire flared. I've already repeated myself enough none of you are going anywhere. He grinned really flame face. She pulled her jacket up slightly causing a few metal orbs to drop from the second they hit the ground the area became flooded with light. Endeavor tried to quickly rush and grab at least one of them but the second his vision was clear he was surrounded in mist. See you next time flame face, yelled the girl's voice, leaving Endeavor angry and having to deal with the cleanup and vowing to catch them next time. Oh, we are in so much trouble, yelled Melissa freaking out as they ran back to the mountain. My dad is going to kill me. If she wasn't freaking out she would have realized that she is finally breaking her running record and was currently running over 60 mils per hour. How are we going to get to UA now? Relax Melissa said Izuku as he ran beside her. Sensei said he had plans to help me and I'm sure he can help. Yeah what are you crying about? This was fun, said Yui. Fun, we could have ruined our chances to get UA, said Melissa with tears rolling down her eyes as the fear of her dreams shattering. UA that's the hero school right? Hey why do you guys want to be heroes? They both slowed down for a second as they looked at Yi and Melissa needed a moment to gather her thoughts before Izuku spoke. I've always wanted to be a hero. I used to watch a video of All Might saving people and for the longest time and most likely till the day I die, I think that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I want to help people and save people with a smile on my face just like him. I will be the number one hero and I will save as many people as I can and I'll do with everything that Sensei Yushiro has taught me so I can be pillar of hope for everyone even other pillars. Other pillars. Of course. If All Might can do so much as the symbol of hope and pillar of peace imagine what more could do. I want to find others so we can all hold up this world together. Melissa and Yi couldn't help but look at Izuku with a bit of admiration. Both of them have been around the world and to have the desire to help all of it seemed impossible but there was no doubt in his voice. He would do it. But to answer your question I want to help people plan and simple. He had one response. Cool. Oh, hey old man. Said Yi running into the living room finding Yushiro reading some papers. Yeah. Said Yushiro heard you an eventful night. Is Izuku putting Uri to bed? No. We ran into Tomo and she wants Uri to take a bath. And Melissa is apologizing to her dad for some reason. I can hear them from here. 
When they weren't talking they could clearly hear Melissa frantically apologizing to her father. She's still worried that her overbearing father may send her back to I Island. Okay now how to convince Yi to go to school. She's boar-headed and likes to fight. I should try to use that. Yi I have something to talk to you about. Hey can you send me to UA? Huh? I want to go to UA. I want to show people what a real hero looks like and it will give me a chance to beat strong opponents like Izuku. So can you do it? Oh yeah sure I can do that for you. Alright. She said pumping her fists into the air. So what did you want to talk about? Oh forget about it. For now let's call your father and tell him you want to go to UA. Said Yushiro a bit happy how easy this was. Let's just hope now she can get along with other students and doesn't kill them. He grinned. I can't wait to add more trophies to my wall. Yushiro felt the sweat drop on his head. This is going to need some work. Oh, hey wake up. How what happened? Asked Ragdoll rubber her eyes. You fell asleep at the computer again. You know there are better places to fall asleep than at the computer. Said Pixabop. What were you even looking at anyway? What are you serious? You're still looking into those urban myths about that missing mountain. You were supposed to put in the report about the hikers we saved. Ragdoll hung her head in embarrassment. I'm sorry. I'll do it right away. Don't bother. You can do it later. We have a guy downstairs. Another rescue mission. No this is something different. So come on we got a guy downstairs. How can you be so interested in those fake stories anyway? How do you know that it's fake? Who knows there could be a missing mountain that has been lost for hundreds of years. Ragdoll we have had satellite GPS for hundreds of years okay. All the mountains around the world have been discovered. Your mountain doesn't exist now come on it's time for some real work, said Pixie Bob. Ragdoll pouted but followed her. Both Pixie Bob and Ragdoll made their way downstairs to see Mandalay, Tiger and a cab driver looking at the TV. That's the S the girl I'm was telling you about. Both of them looked on the TV to see the newscast about a horde of villains attacking Demon Slayer at the mall. Said Target was assisted by two teenage girls. The TV then showed the three easily taking on the group of villains and single-handedly doing it with ease. Hey, I'm sorry did we miss something? Asked Pixabob. Mr. Utenshu, said Mandalay. Would you mind starting from the beginning so our friends here could get the whole story? Yes of course, said the man. My name is Taku Utenshu. I'm a cab driver. Early this day that girl on the TV the one with the rifle asked me to take her to an address in the middle of nowhere. It was really weird all that was out there was fields but the odd part and the reason I'm here was what happened on the way there. During the entire drive she was cleaning her rifle and checking her ammunition. When she first brought it out I thought I was gonna get robbed but she just sat there and calmly kept cleaning her gun. When I finally got up the courage to ask what she was doing, she said that she was going to hunt someone in the mountains but we were nowhere near any mountain. When I brought up the fact she actually said she would usually just run to the mountain on foot but she wanted to save her strength for the hunt. Shortly after that I dropped her off on a dirt road near some tree but the closest mountain was miles away. I told my boss about it over the radio but he said the girl was just some crazy we should just forget about. So I brought out a map and from the direction I saw her walk in. The mountains around here are her destination so I came to see you guys cause you guys know these mountains better than anyone. The heroes waited patiently for him to finish each forming their own thoughts and opinions on the situation. Clearly though she isn't on any mountain, said Tiger as he was looking at the TV. Did she mention anything else? Target. Conditions. Anything that we could use. No, to be honest I was too scared to ask, said Taku. I never had anyone openly clean a gun in the back of my cab before. Well she is definitely not a regular girl, said Ragdoll. Trained and looks like she's ready for a hunt. Even though her quirk couldn't work through screens she has picked up on a few analytical tricks over the years. Yeah but not much of a fashion sense. Said Pixabob that jacket looks kinda tacky and it makes her look like she should be on top of a mountain somewhere. She is not a city girl. This prompted Mandalay to roll her eyes at her friend. Fashion sense aside this raises a lot of questions and I'm sure we aren't the only ones asking. Hey your cab has a video camera that recorded the whole ride right. Do you mind if we have a copy of it? Of course go for it, said the driver. The company is more than happy to assist heroes any way we can. It's just a bit of paperwork. Oh and I'm going to need a spare thumb drive to put the footage on. Alright then, Tiger get the paperwork ready. This has officially become part of an investigation. Pixie go get us a thumb drive and ragdoll. Mandalay took a deep breath. I didn't want to get involved with this but call up Night Eye and tell him we got something for him. Okay, said Ragdoll as each of them went to get their task done. Ragdoll, called Mandalay, causing her to stop after the others had left. Also tell him to save us some seats. We're going to that meeting. Woohoo, team up time. You, slam, killed, slam, my, slam. Milkshake screamed Eerie as she tossed around the metal bank robber around like a ragdoll. The clip ended with Eerie tossing the robber. Play it again, said Overhaul as his eyes were glued to the computer screen. The voice activated computer complied and replayed the video. As he was watching the video the rest of the Yakuza were watching him. 
Hey Chrono, shouldn't we stop him or do something? Asked Mimic as they stared at their boss watching the same clip over and over again. Chrono didn't know how to respond to this situation. T his was the first time he had ever seen him act like this. For years he had never known Overhaul to be so fixated on a video clip. Then again all of them were quite surprised to see Eri on the news man handling a man ten times her size like he was some sort of stuffed animal. It actually made some of them nervous because they knew what she had been through and she was currently on the other side with very powerful friends. We just need to give him a moment. When we get the military off our backs and get the deals flowing things will go back to normal. Mimic was a bit hesitant but nodded in agreement. If you ask me I don't think that's healthy, said a voice right behind them. They both on instinct brought their weapons out and pointed it at the origin of the voice, which turned out to be a mass of black mist. Both slow down they were friends remember, said Kirajiri the ambassador and portal man of the League of Villains. I just came to grab you guys for the meeting. The members of the Yakuza lowered their weapons as they remembered that the latest meeting between the two groups was today. They've had an okay relationship with the League for a bit. The first few meetings were a bit rocky between Overhaul and their leader Shigaraki, though it looks like they are getting along a bit better. Somewhat. Now they could at least get through a meeting together without one of them firing off one of their quirks, though they mostly play nice out of respect for all for one. Though none of the Yakuza members could deny the benefits of working with them, they had more manpower and new places they could lie low for a while. Sorry about that, said Chrono holtering his firearm. We are just going to need a minute too. Don't worry about it Chrono, said Overhaul shutting down the computer. We're ready to go. Grabbing a suitcase. Come on let's get this meeting over with. Oh, when is this meeting going to get started? Said Endeavor in a demanding voice. Both he and Burnin were sitting and waiting for the meeting about the child vigilante problem to get started. Calm down, Endeavor. Said Hawks leaning back in his chair with his legs on the desk. This meeting is off the books with quite a few heroes in on it. It's going to take a bit for everyone to get here. Hey I'm just surprised with all the heroes that are here in the first place. Said Rukyu the dragon hero. I honestly didn't expect to see some high-ranking heroes here today. These vigilantes have been the talk of the town lately, said Manadley sitting next to the other members of the Wild Wild Pussycats, not to mention all the questions surrounding them. Actually I have a question, said Tiger. Why are students here? This is a hero meeting and one that's technically not sanctioned. PFFD the sound came from Burnin. My big question is why a team of second-rate heroes are here, said Burnin antagonizing the Pussycats. This isn't a rescue mission. This did not go well with him. Pixabob got out of her chair fast. Hey we're here because we got some important information. Information that can help us catch these kids. Yes yeah, so back off, said Ragdoll backing up her friend while sticking her tongue out at Burnin. This got Endeavor's attention. Really? Well then hand it over. You're all wasting my time here. Whoa whoa, let's all slow down here, said Fat Gum. I got some extra takoyaki if anyone wants some. As for your question Tiger, these three are heroes. Each of them have a hero's license and they are brave enough to take the job. Mirio nodded from his seat with Bubble Girl and Centipider. We're ready to do what it takes. Yep. Najira I have so many questions for all of you and Demon Slayer ain't that right Tamaki? Tamaki stayed silent hanging his head to shy to say anything. Ew. How about I ask you guys some questions? Many of the heroes began to get annoyed by the energetic girl. You can do that later young Hato. Said a booming all might as he, Night Eye, Detective Naamasa and Grand Torino came through the door. Sorry to keep you all waiting. Now let's get started. Night Eye. Oh my god a question, said Ragdoll raising her hand as if she was in school. If the police aren't supposed to be involved why is a detective here? Detective Naamasa smiled as he took his jacket off. I guess I'll go first. As you all know the police have been extremely lax in arresting Demon Slayer and his friends. The reason for this is even unknown to us. The chief of police has questioned government officials several times about this and all he's got are vague answers. He's fed up to the point of asking a few people to investigate off the books to get some answers. So even though this meeting is unsanctioned by the government you do have the backing of the police department. This took some weight off the shoulders of some of the heroes present. So wait not even the police have any answers about this. Asked Hawks as Naomasa shook his head. Well that gives us an even bigger problem. Why is the government protecting this kid? I don't think I've ever heard of the government protecting a bona fide vigilante. That's kinda why I'm here, said Fat Gum between chewing. A few years ago I worked with some vigilantes and the government deal with some drug traffickers. The vigilantes in question were two kids and an old guy that kinda got dragged into the situation against their will. Got give those civs props for handling the situation as well as they did. But that's beside the point. The government only helps vigilantes out if they had no choice but to become vigilantes for a good reason like they are a relative has been targeted by a villain. To do this though they need to have to work with the government and not a single one of my contacts in the government have ever talked let alone make a deal with Demon Slayer. Out of everyone here I most likely have had the most experience dealing and working with the government. 
If he is working with the government then it has to be high up, very high up. All the heroes took a moment to ponder over Fat Gum's words, before Burnin thought of something. Wait, do you mean to tell me that my tax dollars are going to a kid so he can play hero? You can rest assured Burnin, our tax dollars aren't going to the boy, said Night Eye adjusting his glasses. Thanks to Gran Torino here we have discovered someone else is paying for the boy's escapades. Person, said Rukio it would have to be one rich son of a gun to pay off the government. Unfortunately it seems no one in the government is being paid off, said Night Eye typing on his computer. All Might gave a dry chuckle. Here comes the scary part. You see every incident that the boy and his friends are involved in. Every single bill for the destruction, reconstruction, hospital bills for both the villains and civilians are all paid off by the same person. What? That's impossible, said Hawks the amount of money would be astronomical. We asked Neza the principal of UA to check the math and in my free time I double-checked it, he said as the bills and math appeared on the projector behind him. Every person in the room could only stare at the amount at the end, no one could say a word. For a moment you could clearly hear a pin drop in the room. Hawks actually fell out of his chair looking at the number. Um Mandalay slowly raised her voice. I think you added a few too many zeros to that. Afraid not little lady, said Gran Torino. That's every bill added up since Demon Slayer appeared up to two weeks ago. How in the hell screamed Burnin, Pixabob and Bubble Girl. Tiger was slowly coming out of the shock as Ragdoll's eyes kept swirling. Hawks slowly picked himself off the ground as Fat Gum began to drool thinking of all the takoyaki he could buy with that money. If some of you could please return to reality we got some more information to go over, said Gran Torino. This just proves that whoever is doing this isn't obtaining this money legally, said Endeavor. This has to be the work of some supervillain working in the shadows. You are absolutely correct, Endeavor, said All Might. We did some research on where this money was coming from and to our surprise it was coming from bank accounts. Bank accounts from people from over a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, said Rukyu remembering what they said about the government. So let me get this straight. Some guy is paying for all of this, using money that hasn't been touched for a hundred years and is most likely paying off people in the government for these kids? Why? It doesn't make any sense what could anyone have to gain from any of this. They all frowned at this. We don't know, said All Might. It doesn't make any sense at all. What good does manipulating the system so a child can freely do hero work? The more I think about the more it makes me think something big is going to happen. Hawks needed some clarification. Wait, how does the kid fit into all of this? I've met Demon Slayer and he seemed like an alright kid. To be honest I can't really see that kid doing anything evil or even villain related. I agree with you, Hawks, after reading his file and history. Not to mention all the people he's saved. I'm not all that worried about him, it's this so-called sensei of his. He has mentioned to a few people that he has a sensei that has taught him and has encouraged him to operate outside the law. And to commit acts of vigilantism. I would wager that the boy might be being played and that his sensei has ulterior motives. It doesn't matter, said Endeavor cutting in. The boy and his friends are committing acts of vigilantism and are working outside the law. I've read the boy's file and I agree he might be manipulated but we won't know until we grab them. We know about Midoriya but what about the other three what do we know? Unfortunately we know next to nothing about some of them. The most information we have gotten is from the mall incident from a while ago, said the detective taking the floor as a picture of a girl with the heart hoodie appeared on the screen. The hooded is the primary one we don't know about. None of the pictures we were able to obtain had a clear shot of her face. So we weren't able to ID her. The most we know about her is that she is wearing some sort of a heart hoodie but the letters are too faded and that she has blonde hair coming out of the sides of her hood. We can't even properly identify her quirk because in a few shots it looks like she is doing gymnastics and tossing people around with some increased strength but at the same time several criminals were found floating in the air for some reason. We believe she might have something to do with that as the screen showed three men floating in the air, before switching to a picture of Uri drinking a milkshake. This girl as far as we know is named Uri. I've checked the face recognition records and she doesn't exist. There is no one named Uri around her age with a horn on the side of her head. We have no idea where she came from all we know is that she's been sighted piggyback riding on Midoriya, and that she clearly has strength enhancement quirk and a pretty good one at that. As the screen showed the video of Uri slamming the robber into the ground, some of the heroes present couldn't help but let out a chuckle. Unbeknownst to Eerie, her slamming the robber became a viral video and was trending for a few days. This is all we have on these two girls, I'm afraid. What about the other one? Said Endeavor the one with the gun. You mean the one that called you flame face? Said Pixie Bob earning a glare from Endeavor and causing a few heroes to chuckle. She is a different story. Mayamasa catching the room's attention. Her name is Iriyoshi. She is Japanese but has spent most of her life abroad. No school record. No previous criminal record. She travels the world with her parents for her father's work. 
Matazo Ryoshi. He travels the world looking for animals with quirks. He has a pretty good record, but some of his movements have been questionable. But since these incidents are in other countries we don't have much to go on. We can assume she's received training directly from her father, but we can't confirm cause we can't get in contact with him. From what we can tell he's been in Australia for quite a while hunting some sort of monster gator. As for his daughter we can confirm she has been in the Americas for the past few months. We confirmed with airport footage that she has been traveling alone for at least the past five months going to various wild areas of North and South America for reasons we don't know but the last sighting of her was at the Lax Airport in California. And that is her last sighting until the mall incident. There is no footage of her in any airport in Japan so we have no idea how she got here. All other history and abilities are in the file we sent each of you along with all the information we have on Izuku Midori and his abilities. After Naamasa ended his briefing the others went silent for a moment. Is that it? Asked Bernan anything else we know about ye. I ran into her, said Rukiu, during my patrol the other day. I ran into her as a shop was being robbed. She was apparently across the street looking at a hunting shop. She fits the bill of a pro hunter, guns, jacket, wildlife expert and when we spoke she said she was sad that I wasn't some wild beast cause my head would look good on her wall. Before throwing down a flashbang and escaping capture, she's unique to say the least and after talking to her I can say she seems like the type that could be manipulated easily. Hawks then imagined a stuffed dragon over a fireplace. She wanted to turn you into a stuffed dragon. She sounds like a handful. Endeavor was getting angry. We have nothing. This is a waste of time. Come burn and we have more important work to do. As he and his sidekick got up to leave, Mandalay smiled. Okay Endeavor you can leave, but you'll miss the part where we may have located their hideout. This stopped them in their tracks. Mandalay got up and walked to the computer. Night I stepped aside for her. We have lead where they may be. The day of the mall incident a cab driver came to us because earlier that day he gave a ride to Yiraioshi. She was dropped off right here. As she pulled up a map and moved the cursor over a section of fields with some trees. The driver gave us the cab footage and in Yi's own words. This was her destination and this is the direction all of them go when they're done catching a criminal or when they're running away from a hero. So it's safe to say somehow around this area is where they are hiding. Can you confirm this? Asked Night Eye. Mandalay couldn't confirm if it was the place before Hawks chimed in. That sounds about right. Getting confused looks from the other heroes. A few months ago when I ran into Demon Slayer I was able to tag him with one of my feathers. After I was able to get the villain Steel Angel to the police I tried to track it down and for a while it stayed in one place before it was either destroyed or someone cut my connection to it. Wait a minute let me get this straight. Said Night Eye walking up to Hawks. You've had this information for months and only now divulging it. Yep. Night Eye took a deep breath. Why? He's a good kid. Honestly I think he just needs a good talk. Not serving the rest of his life behind bars. Not to mention how much of a hassle it would be to bring him in and explain to the public why their vigilante who has been doing more work than a lot of heroes is in jail. To be honest the main reason I showed up today was to make sure you guys didn't go too hard on the kid. If I had the authority I would strip you of your hero license. Hawk's wing feathers began to twitch try it. Enough, said All Might. Hawks, well I understand where you're coming from. But withholding this information has only prolonged this confrontation and furthered spiral it out of control. Night I calm down I know where your anger is coming from but now is not the time to act upon it. This seemed to calm the two heroes down. Though the sound of the door opening caught their attention. Endeavor where are you going? I have a location. I'm going to go and end this farce and arrest whoever is behind this. But please don't let my absence stop your meeting. Continue to waste time for all I care. As he and Bernan left, Ryukyu stood from her seat as well. Come on we all better go after him or else he'll burn down every field in the valley. Very well then, said All Might. This unsanctioned meeting has turned into a full-blown investigation scene. Let's move out. As the heroes moved out to solve the mystery of the demon slayer. Though, clap. All right people, today is the big day. Said Yushiro getting everyone's attention. All the residents of the mountain were waiting in the living room. The doctors are in the medical wing and their assistants slash guards are on standby in the waiting room. It's time for your last surgery Iri. Really, said Iri on the verge of tears. With this the curse will go away. Yushiro knelt to Iri and held his hand out. With this the curse will become a gift for you to use as you wish. Iri took his hand as he picked her up. In Yushiro's she turned to look at Izuku. Izuku, don't worry Iri I'll be right there with you through it all. He said reassuringly. Don't worry, short stack. Said Yui. We'll be right here waiting for you. She's right you've done this before. You'll do just fine. Said Melissa. Iri turned to Tomo who had yet to speak. Tomo, you'll come right. No, said Tomo cheerfully nearly breaking the girl's heart. Because I'll be here making your favorites for dinner tonight. Iri began to drool a little. Desserts. Tomo smiled. Yes Iri, lots of desserts. Yeah, yelled Ye also drooling a little. Ye calm down your drooling, said Melissa trying to calm her friend down. And you two are helping me cook. 
How both girls stunned at Tomo's words. Don't give me that look. Izuku can go down and support Uri and master for all of us, and I know for a fact you two aren't going to be busy in the meantime. Well I've hunted and cooked wild game so I may be able to help, said Yi trying to act confident. But do you really want Melissa in the kitchen? Hey I've gotten better, said Melissa as her face slowly turned red. Toast doesn't count. Melissa was about to make a retort but Uri beat her to it. You burnt the toast remember, leaving Melissa to hang her head in shame. I can make a flux drive in my sleep yet I can't even cook a slice of bread. It's okay Melissa, I can't cook that well either, said Izuku beside no one here can invent like you can. This made her feel better as she blushed a little. Don't worry Melissa, you and ye can leave the more complicated stuff to me, said Tomo. Though we better start or else we won't have it done by the time they're all done with Yuri's surgery. She's right, are you ready Yuri? Asked Yushiro and Yuri nodded. Alright let's get going. As he took Yuri to the medical wing with Izuku in tow. I guess we should get started, said Yi as they headed towards the kitchen. Yeah but Tomo do you really need our help? Asked Melissa I've seen you wipe up big meals all on your own. Do you really need our help? Well to be honest not really, admitted Tomo. But this is a good chance for the three of us to have some girl talk, freezing the two in place. Oh, so let me get this straight. This little brat was the one who changed Yuri, said overhaul pointing at a picture of Yushiro in an airport, talking on his phone. I understand the confusion but I assure you that Brad is no child. He is one of our greatest enemies, said a raspy voice over an old monitor. This voice belongs to All for One, one of the if not the greatest villain in the entire world. Believe it or not that Brad is even older than I. This surprised many in the bar. Really sensei, why haven't you spoken about him before? Asked Tamura, putting down his PSP. He may be our enemy but he doesn't work like other heroes. He works in the shadow and he mostly stays out of the way. You see his power allows him to stay young forever and so far nothing I or anyone else has tried can kill him. I believe his form of immortality has gotten to him so he usually stays quiet and out of the affairs of heroes or villains. He seems content staying in his hole and working on his science projects here and there. It's because of this I didn't tell you about him early. I knew a few heroes that used the same combat style as our little demon slayer. But I didn't think Yushiro was involved not until that internet clip showed up. So he has some way of controlling and changing other people's quirks, asked Overhaul finding a new interest in this Yushiro. Yes, he was there in the beginning and knows more about quirks than I or any other. The only reason I haven't hunted him down and imprisoned him in some corner of the world is because of his knowledge and his resourcefulness. I've sent several assassins to try and capture him and only a few were able to find him. Those that did either never returned or came back with Barley their sanity intact. He is not someone to take lightly. To top it off he has the protection of several governments around the world. Tamura and Overhaul couldn't believe what they were hearing. This guy was sounding more and more like trouble. Now he sounds like a final boss, said Tamura grinning. It sounds fun, meeting the final boss so soon. It makes killing him all the sweeter. Overhaul ignored Tamura and stared at the picture for a bit. Is this why you asked me to bring some of Uri's blood? Holding up his briefcase. Do you think it will kill him? No, I have something else in mind. Kirajiri bring it out. Of course, said Kirajiri as he opened a portal. When the portal was fully opened a man in a full body suit with a journey was pushed through with a body on it. This here is twice a new recruit to the league. Hey who are you bastards? Divided by oh come now let's be friends. Divided by he said in two different voices. Tamura and Overhaul looked at him for a second before looking at Kirajiri with raised eyebrows. He has a fantastic quirk, but he's not exactly all there in the head. Divided by hey there's nothing in my head divided by. You want to see it's completely full, said twice energetically pointing to his head. Twice do you have it? Said all for one's voice. Yeah got it right here. He said holding up a beaker with a strange round object inside. It's a marble. No it's not. Hey sensei. What's with the dead body? Asked Tamura pulling up the cover on the journey revealing a small charred human body disgusting overhaul. The child is not dead. It was put into a coma after a burning building collapsed on top of them. But that's not important. Right now we are going to try a little experiment. So I need you all to do exactly as I tell you. Overhaul I would like you to bring a vial of Yuri's blood out and give it to I would like you to replicate her blood. Overhaul begrudgingly gave twice a vial of Yuri's blood. Twice took a moment to look at the vial. A boss I know my quirk is awesome and all but I don't think my quirk can replicate this. I quote him worthless. I know the limits of your quirk. Have no fear. Simply replicate the vial and put it in the beaker. Twice did as he was instructed. To the surprise of the bar when the vial of blood disintegrated into slug the blood came back when it made contact with the ball in the beaker. The ball began to glow a faint white color. Is it glowing? Asked all for one. Oh yes, said Overhaul inspecting the beaker. What's the ball? A form of trigger. A drug that increases the power of quirks. No it's an eyeball. Even though all for one couldn't see he could tell everyone was staring at the TV screen. 
Now without touching it. Overhaul I would like you as quickly as you can. Break both the contents of the beaker down in the body of the child, and then merge them. Overhaul was a cautious man and that side of him wanted to question this but his curiosity wanted to see what would happen. He carefully took the beaker from twice and put it on the body. He took his glove off and within a second he destroyed both and quickly reconstructed the body with the beaker now empty on top. Everyone was now silent as they stared at the body waiting for something to happen. A minute went by with nothing happening. When suddenly, hey, 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 the body suddenly jerked upright screaming. The child kept screaming as it fell off the journey and began to shake on the ground as if it was having a seizure. It slowly made its way to the wall as it was moving its skin was changing slowly turning from charred to pale, revealing a young boy. He slowly got into a sitting position as his hair rapidly grew on his head. When he finally stopped screaming he was sitting against the wall with a white mop of hair covering his face, breathing heavily. The hell, said Tamura it healed him. Is this some sort of treatment you are making for yourself? No, said all for one quickly. Ask him his name. What is his name? Hey kid, what's your name? He asked with no response come on tell us your name or else. Still no response. Annoying Tamura. I don't suppose I can kill him. No, have patience Shigaraki. They waited as the boy's breathing slowed. The boy slowly raised his head revealing his face that was covered with strange red markings. So gonna tell us your name now. The boy slowly opened and closed his mouth before quietly speaking. R. R. Rui before falling unconscious on the ground. Rui, said Tamura before looking at Overhaul. Don't look at me I don't know a Rui. They were about to ask all for one before he broke out into a hysterical villainous laugh. It was enough to scare some of the others in the bar. Soon the ancient villains will rise what will you do, sensei? Oh, okay we've been here for over an hour minutes, said Burn and nothing's here. She screamed right next to Naomasa and Endeavor. I hate to give up too soon but she's kinda right, said Lemillion to Night Eye we've checked all the nearby fields and the trees several times nothing's out here. Night Eye rubbed his chin as he tried to think. All the heroes from the meeting have been searching the field where the cab driver's GPS showed where he dropped Yi off. All Might and his sidekicks were still looking around the area with the pussycats. While he was thinking Hawks, Fat Gum, Gran Torino, Sun Eater and Rukyu approached him. Did any of you find anything? They all began to shake their head. Sorry Night Eye, said Fat Gum we couldn't find anything. Not even an underground entrance, nothing. It would appear that this is a dead end, said Rukyu. I couldn't even find anything searching the air. Said Hawks, I hate to say this but this is a dot. The kid must have found my feather and ditched it here. Oh well at least we're close enough to my favorite chicken place. I can pick some up on my way home. Chicken sounds good, said Fat Gum a bit hungry. Hey how does chicken sound Sun Eater? Sun Eater. Sun Eater was paying attention to the conversation as he was looking upward. What's Nijire doing? They all look upward to see Nijire randomly pointing in the sky and doing some strange aerial movements. I've never seen her do movements like that before, said Rukiu. Nijire what are you doing? She called to her intern. Why are all of you walking in circles? She called from the sky. What? You're all walking in circles. What is she talking about? Said Rukiu getting confused. Nijire we're searching the area. No, you're only searching the area over here. You haven't searched anywhere else. Getting the attention of others while also confusing them. Hawks ascended into the sky to see what she was talking about. You guys have only searched over here. She said before powering up her Nijire beam and firing a few short blasts in the sky. Nijire what are you doing? You can't just fire random blasts. What if you hit something by mistake? Said Rukyu trying to scold her intern. Yeah, said Nijire knowing she shouldn't do this but it was the best way she could think of. But you haven't looked this way. Firing a beam in the opposite direction. As the beam flew, swearing, spiraling in the air in one direction before suddenly unraveling in mid-air and going in all sorts of different directions. Something's here. Everyone saw the beam. Endeavor jumped and tried to rock it in the same direction. Endeavor wait. Said All Might before rushing to stop him catching him and bringing him to the ground. Why are you stopping me all might? You're going to hit Burnin. He said as he moved out of the way revealing Burnin. What? How you were behind me? I saw it sir. Said Burnin one second you were in the air heading that way before somehow turning around. As the other heroes gathered around them. I got this. Said Hawk scattering his feathers. In the same direction the Nijire beam went. All the heroes saw as the feathers changed direction before Hawks made them stop in mid-air. Before you all ask yes I made them all go straight. I wasn't making them change direction at all. Wait don't call them back yet, said Mandalay. Look that one over there it's still straight, pointing to a feather that hadn't changed course. Hawks called his feathers back as they went towards the feather that hadn't moved. Hawks began to send some feathers out in the same direction noticing all the shifts in the air and changes to his feathers. It's a path. It's about the size of a truck but if we turn here and here I don't think our directions will change. Pixabob. Search dog. Ordered Mandalay. On it, as Pixabob pulled a few dog-shaped earth dolls from the ground, 
The search dogs moved along the path a few meters ahead of the group before suddenly disappearing. What the they're still there I can feel them, but she walked forward a bit and reached her arm out before her hand began to vanish, rippling the air. She quickly pulled it out revealing her hand was still there. Oh yeah that's something alright. Without hesitation All Might walked forward and disappeared through the air, before his head reappeared. It's some sort of giant invisible cloak. Come on, before disappearing into the wall. Go, oh, slam. The noise startled Melissa and Yi. They both turned to see Tomo had stabbed her cutting knife into the cutting board. Insect she said with disdain and an angry look on her face. Um Tomo are you okay? Asked Melissa is this about our conversation from earlier or? Tomo quickly gathered herself. Excuse me there is something I must deal with. She said with her usual calmness. Tomo said ye stopping her. Did something happen? Every word dripping with seriousness. Tomo smiled. Oh don't worry there's just something I have to do. So please make sure the meat is cooked and Melissa if you could please continue to chop the vegetables please. As she tried to move to the exit only for ye to block it. He staring at Tomo in the eye. Tomo continued to smile. Don't worry ye I'll be fine, but here. A pen and notepad appeared in her hand. If I'm not back in 15 minutes call this number. As she handed ye the notepad. I'll be back shortly. As she left. Ye what's going on? Said Melissa trying not to freak out. Put a timer on for 10 minutes and be ready to move. Oh, I don't believe it. Said Pixabob staring at the mountain before them. It's real. Woohoo. Screamed Ragdoll with joy. It's real. The missing mountain is real. Ragdoll calm down. Now is not the time to get excited, said the tree line. Missing mountain, said Night Eye. What is she talking about? Before Mandalay could explain Ragdoll ran right back to the group. If you look at any map that's over 200 years ago it said that there is an extra mountain in Japan but most of those are so faded you can barely make out the words, let alone the pictures. And if you look at any electrical map it will tell you another story. This map according to my phone right now doesn't exist, showing everyone her phone. But it's right here. The legends and rumors were true. The missing mountain is right here. Several heroes took their own phones and supporting equipment out to confirm that there was no mountain here. Gran Torino looked up from his phone. A mountain that's been gone for 200 years. That timetable sounds interesting. This caught both All Might and Night Eye. The three had the same idea what was here. Yamasa, getting the detective's attention. Go and call the police for backup. This looks like we're going to need it. Okay but how will I find the place? Follow my feathers said Hawks I left a trail behind just in case. I can order my earth creature to follow the path as well, said Pixabop. In fact they already carved a path when we entered. You'd be surprised at how many times you can get turned around on rescue missions. With that Nayamasa nodded and left the way they came to call the police chief and tell him that they found something. Something big. HMPH I'm disappointed and you all might said endeavor. Do you really think all of us need backup? No but you never know what is going to happen you have to expect the unexpected. Be ready for anything. Like a girl, said Hawks pointing to the tree line as a young woman came to the edge of the tree line looking down on them from the incline. A really cute girl, making some of the heroes roll their eyes. None of you are supposed to be here. Leave now, she said her voice layered with anger. Or else I will have no choice but to beat each of you within an inch of your life. The heroes stood there in silence, some preparing themselves for a fight. It was clear to them that the woman in front of them was not joking and was fully prepared for a fight, though this was lost on the interns. Wow that's kind of a stupid move, said Nijire not reading the situation. Nijire, said Lamillion with urgency in his voice. Even though he had to admit this girl didn't seem like a threat, he could tell by the other heroes to be prepared. Let the pros handle this. Why are you being so uptight we got the top three heroes here? She said holding up three fingers. And we outnumber her by a lot. Tomo stood there watching the three interns. So these are heroes. For a moment I thought the Yakuza may have found us. I recognize a few from Izuku's notes, but that doesn't change anything. They shouldn't be here. Oh excuse me miss, said Hawks trying to be as friendly as possible. We are heroes and, I don't care. Leave. Look we are just trying to. Leave. Miss if you could give us a. Leave now, she said getting more frustrated. This is private property. None of you have been permitted to be here. Leave now and I will forget this transgression. Hawk stood there not sure what to say next and tag out so All Might gave it a try. Ma'am we have reason to believe that. Do you have a warrant? Oh I beg your pardon. Do. You. Have. A warrant. She said making sure every word was understood. Unless you have a warrant you are not allowed to be here and if we have any issues we will deal with them ourselves. Do you own this land? Spoke Gran Torino stepping forward. If not then can you bring us the one who does? My master is currently indisposed at the moment and I speak on his behalf. What is that old man getting at? He's clearly fishing for information. She thought looking at the group. Some of them look like I can convince to leave but this old man has a look that shows otherwise. Same goes for All Might and the one in glasses. She thought. It was true some of them realized that they don't have a warrant and they had no real cause to be here. 
None of that matters. Soon I'll have each of them tagged. I'll teleport them once I do. Tomo began to prepare to move. Today is a big day for us here and I don't have time to play with any of you. So just this once I'll allow you to leave. So turn around and leave. So just to make sure for 200 years your master has owned this mountain. Tomo narrowed her eyes at Gran Torino what is he doing? Does that matter? All Might, Gran Torino and Inaidai all had the same thought. It's him and he's still injured and can't move. It's now or never. Time to end this. But first I have to at least try to break through to this girl. He's a monster, he pleaded. Look I don't know what your connection with your master is but he is evil. He is a monster who would leave you behind in a heartbeat. He doesn't care for you in the slightest. So please step aside and let us deal with that demon. Tomo stood there wide-eyed staring directly at All Might, letting his words sink in. She then quietly spoke. Monster, Tomo be careful as he wrapped her finger. They may be flowers but they still have thorns. Evil, it's Monday, he said working in his lap. Sorry Tomo, I was caught up in my work. I was successful in increasing the drug's power now nerve transplants should be easier than ever. Doesn't care putting a hand on her metal and under her kimono. Okay Tomo you can take the blindfold off. When she did she saw a stunning kitchen and on the counter were ten brand new kimono and accessories. She stood there staring at all of it before turning to him and mouthing how. I have a friend who can teleport things. Sorry I'm terrible at buying gifts. Since you've been cooking so much. Even for me. I thought a more updated kitchen would work but that seemed a little selfish. I'm getting you a kitchen so you could cook more so I bought you some other stuff. I guess I was just unsure of what you wanted so I bought everything I could think of. Demon. As veins visible popped up around her eyes. She knew what he was but she also knew this was an insult. Tomo convinced Yushiro to take a break. Thank you Tomo. Sorry to drag you all the way down to South America. When I heard about the largest earthquake of the century I had to come and help. This was definitely an all-hands-on-deck situation. Tomo reminded him of the amount of lives he saved today. Yes while well, that is true, I wish I could have done more. I like to work in the background because I save more lives in the long run but at times like this I wish I was here sooner. Tomo tried to keep her voice as calm as possible but the utter rage on her face was clear as day. You have trespassed on private property and I'm well within my legal right to beat you to death for it. So before we get started tell me All Might do you have a successor yet? Successor, said Fat Gum as he and several other heroes were clearly confused. All Might how about we calm down? Said Ruki you've clearly pissed her off. Does it matter? Said Endeavor if this girl is foolish enough to think she can take us all then it's her fault. But she also has a point with the warrant. Said Mandalay with the other pussycats agreeing with her. We aren't supposed to be here. Though none of these reasons reached All Might as he continued to stare at Tomo in silent anger. I'll take your silence as a no, then. Part of me was hoping he would say yes so I could cut loose. Wow he has really pissed me off. I want to beat the crap out of him but it looks like I'll have to keep him functional for his hero duties. One chance. Apologize now while you can still move your jaw. All with a smile on her face. If that's how it is, then prepare yourself, villain. All Might got into a fighting stance. Well, said Hawks flying between the two. Let's chill out for a second you all make some valid points but Hawks was unable to finish as a ball was shot from the tree line and hitting him right in the face. A Temery Ball Before any of the heroes could act several Temery Balls came flying from the tree line behind Tomo. Each of the heroes tried to dodge but quickly found it difficult as they began to curve in the air. Tiger had to hit them away. Look out their homing. Even those who could fly had a hard time dodging the balls. We have to get her. As he charged Tomo who in return raised her hand making a slow swiping motion causing Tiger to spin down the hill. Hawk saw this and got an idea of her quirk. The balls themselves aren't her quirk she must have some sort vector controlling quirk. All might smash five Temery balls. I'm ending this. As he made a jump at Tomo. She didn't move a single muscle as he flew through the air. Everyone looking thought he would crash into her but he didn't as he suddenly hit an invisible wall centimeters in front of her. An invisible wall. She has more than one quirk. Tomo smiled as he showed her hands one with a ring in it and another with what appeared to be a seashell. She raised the one with the ring a little higher. Impact transfer. Before shoving the seashell through the invisible wall. When the shell connected to All Might he felt a massive force hit him from the seashell sending him flying down the hill. What was that? Said Pixabob. What did she do? Ryukyu saw and still didn't understand the girl's quirk. Okay my turn as she turned into her full dragon form. Before she could even roar or get close, Tomo began to play a pan flute. What is she? As several vines shot from the ground wrapping around Ryukyu. She can control plants. I can't break out. These aren't normal vines. Ryukyu I'll get you out. Said Nijaira as she began to blast the vines with her quirk. Fat Gum tried to help rip the vines up but his strength wasn't cutting it. It became quite clear to him that they underestimated this girl. Night Eye we need to figure out her next move or else we're all going down. He yelled at Night Eye as Endeavor and Burnin sent a torrent of flames at her. 
A Chinese mirror appeared in her hands and as the flames made contact it was absorbed in the mirror. She quickly did the same with Hawk's feathers before pointing the mirror at the other heroes as flaming feathers shot out of the mirror. Gran Torino tried to take advantage of this and maneuver behind her. She pulled out the hilt of a blade as a beam of pink energy came out like a whip in Gran Torino. It didn't hurt him but slowed down his movement into a crawl in midair. As he came in for a very slow landing her hilt changed to a weird snake staff as a black arrow appeared under Gran Torino when he made contact he was also launched down the hill. Fat Gum moved as quickly as he could and caught Gran Torneo before he made a crash landing. I gotcha. He looked up to see the girl with a rapier in hand and Endeavor and Burnin trapped in ice. This is not going well. Gia think, said Torino Night Eye we need something now. They looked over to Night Eye just standing there. Night Eye. His sidekicks were by his side. Sir, while Toma was countering each of their moves, Night Eye was seeing something else entirely. She isn't moving, as blood began to come out of his eyes, causing his friends to call for him. When Night Eye activated his quirk all he could see was Tomo just standing there on top of the hill. Not moving, not doing anything. Just standing. What's wrong with Night Eye? Said All Might finally getting his bearings after being thrown. I don't know, said Bubble Girl panicking. Centipter looked as Endeavor broke out of the ice, with a knocked out burn in whom he put down and charged again with Hawks trying to back him. She seems to have multiple abilities maybe one of them is doing this to Sir Night Eye. Gran Torino agreed with the assessment, as Endeavor fired fireballs and Hawks more powerful feathers at the girl who simply batted them away with a fan and countering with icicles. We need to take her out but she got more tricks up her sleeve than Houdini. We need a plan. Think of one. Sigh at All Might I'm going to stall her. As All Might jumped back into the fray. After Tomo made both Hawks and Endeavor bounce back with a floating green shield, All Might wait. That stupid brat. GT turned to the other, as Night Eye dropped to his knees. In turn stay with Night Eye. The rest of you have any ideas? I have one, said Bubble Girl. With a mighty roar All Might tried to attack Tomo, only to have her raise her again once more this time with a green ring on her finger. This ring glowed and produced a wall for All Might to punch. All Might kept punching until it began to crack, though this just made Tomo smile. In brightest day, in blackest night I will eradicate you from my sight. As she turned the wall into a giant fist smashing All Might into the ground, Hawks and Endeavor tried to back him up only to be pushed into the ground by an unknown force. They looked to see her hold a red ribbon in her hand. Don't worry I'm only adding pressure it shouldn't be enough to crush your organs. Now that I've calmed down a bit and humility them a bit, time to teleport them away. Ha huh, bubble. As she then was surrounded by a huge wave of bubbles, she quickly became unable to see any of her surroundings. She could hear a bit and guess they had her surrounded. She brought out a yo-yo and began swinging it over her head in a circle. Lightning began to crack on the yo-yo popping all the bubbles she was a little too slow as the heroes move. First centipider jumped in front of freaking her out. Gross, I hate insects. As she held her hand out now holding a pendant, that began to spin making an impossible air pressure blowing him away. She then quickly turned pulling out a giant ring with an emerald on top. It grabbed Fat Gum and made him rounder as she threw him at Bubble Girl and Torneo who were too close to dodge. In a flash she brought a pull out that extended right into Tiger's gut. Unfortunately he grabbed it forcing her to ditch the weapon. She lost her first weapon. She then had to sidestep Mandalay's attack to her side. She quickly countered by grabbing her right gloved hand and fire kicking her in the side taking Mandalay's glove. That was the first time she has had to move and the first physical attack she's made in this fight. Though this fight was hardly over she spun around to see several earth monsters surrounding her being created by Pixabop. She quickly pulled out her coin stopping all the earth movements around them. In the one second of confusion for Pixabop, Tomo summoned a chain from her sleeve wrapping it around Pixabob's left hand. She then whipped the chain sending her into Mandalay and taking Pixabob's left glove. As Tomo looked down on her opponents enough was enough. Enough this ends now. You have absolutely no hope of beating me, said Tomo as she put Mandalay and Pixabob's gloves on her hand. Shivering a little, gross, hey give those back, said Pixabob those belong to the... She stopped when she noticed the earth monster she made began to move without telling them to move. What the? I'm not doing that. Now how does this work? Everyone heard Tomo's voice in their head. That's my quirk, shouted Mandalay. Oh I get it, one way telepathy, said Tomo as she began to wiggle Pixabob's glove causing the earth monster to jitter a bit. HHMM these things are harder to move than I thought. How in the hell do you have our quirks? Tomo smiled as she reached down and picked up one of Hawk's discarded feathers. Now that we have a bit of a pause I realized I never introduced myself. My name is Tomo and you can call my quirk re quirk. The second she said a pair of pink wings sprouted from her back. As you can see my power allows me to use the abilities of others. If I have a bit of their DNA. I. E. That man's feather or be have something that the person has held onto for a very long time. Something personal like a necklace, a weapon or in this case some gloves. As she flexed the gloves, I can even use the quirks of people who have long left this world. 
Thanks to my master, my collection is quite big. Though what she didn't mention was the fact that she can't keep using the same quirk too many times in a row or else she will become exhausted quickly. She's somewhat able to get over this by using the same quirk through different items. Throughout the battle she has been switching her teleportation pendant with other ones. Another problem she has is that her body isn't built to withstand or use other people's quirks so the drawback is much worse for her. This is all possible because she is drawing power from something more than just quirks. Something demonic. I will admit that I don't have as much experience as a lot of you. She continued as she scanned her stunned audience. But I outgun all of you 10 to 1. Now I will give you all one last chance to. As she was making eye contact with each of them she noticed one was missing as she turned very close to her was Ragdoll. Ragdoll was there when they had surrounded Tomo. Ragdoll did something she shouldn't have. She tried to use her quirk on Tomo. Ragdoll's quirk search. Search allows her to track up to 100 people at a time and learn people's strengths and weak points. As she tried to use her quirk to find a weak spot she saw something else. Tomo didn't have a weak point. She had something else. Something that made her freeze in place. Now they were staring at each other. Or was he looking at her? Does she have a quirk that can see it? Thought Tomo as she sent the gloves and feather to her armory. She slowly began to walk towards Ragdoll who just stood there shaking in fear more and more as Tomo got close. Then Ragdoll began to cry blood and began to pour out of her nose. R-A-G-D-O-L-L. Screamed the pussycats as they rushed to help their friend only to meet an invisible wall. The other got up ready to help only to stop when a ear-piercing scream filled the air. The heroes turned to see Night Eye clutching his head as blood came out of his eyes and nose as well. He stared at Tomo. She stared back as well but Night Eye didn't see her. He saw something more demonic, something truly evil, a man. Not an ordinary man, but a man that filled every part of his body with fear. He didn't know why this man was so terrifying but he was. Tomo looked at them both. So they both have quirks that are strong enough to see him. I guess I have been using it a little too much. Thought Tomo it looks worse than it is but I should knock them out and get them some medical attention. Hold it. The new voice, getting her attention. She turned to see the three kids who have so far stood on the sidelines failing to free the dragon. They had moved and were on this side of the invisible wall. They were currently posing ready for a fight. Okay I'll bite. Who are you three supposed to be? I'm Lemillion. This is Sun Eater and she's Nijire Chan. The three of us are heroes in training and we're going to be the ones to defeat you. Tomo gave them a look of disbelief. She looked over the other heroes. The dragon was still trapped. The girl with fire hair was still out cold. Two of the heroes were currently experiencing a nightmare and the other heroes had taken a few good hits. The top three heroes looked the worse. I just went 10 to 1 with the pros over there and I'm still standing with barely any dirt on my kimono. What do you three think you could do? I mean one of you looks like you're going to piss your pants. She said pointing to Sun Eater. Lemillion put his hand on his friend's shoulder reassuring him. Don't worry, remember the plan. Lemillion then turned to Tomo. The reason is because I will beat you with my all-powerful quirk. He said with total confidence. Oh, okay I get it. You have some amazing quirk that was overpowered at birth and you think it's strong enough to beat me. Tomo would later deny that beating the other heroes may have gotten to her head, when it most definitely did. Oh I don't think it will beat you. I know it can. He said as he began his charge. Mijire, Sun Eater let's go. This is why the foolish die young. She said as she threw some stones on the ground that turned into mini golems dogs with purple markings. Sun Eater quickly turned his fingers and tentacles and tossed rocks at the golems crushing them. Nijire sent some of her spiral beams at Tomo who simply summoned a broken blade that reflected the beam back at her. Lucky her beams are kind of slow. As Lemillion got close Tomo summoned a brass knuckle gauntlet in her free hand ready to knock his lights out. Only for him to do something unexpected he jumped into the air and spun throwing his cape at her. Trying to blind me huh? She thought as she caught the cape with her counter blade just in case he used his quirk through the cape. She quickly moved it out of the way only for Lemillion to be gone. She quickly scanned the area. She saw Sun Eater and Nijire but she couldn't find him, until she turned around and found him standing a bit away, grinning and pumping his fists in the air. Victory, he shouted to the heavens. Huh, what are you talking about? You haven't won, she said confused. He stood there chuckling. Did he activate his quirk? Am I already in some sort of mental trap? If so, time to give him a taste of his own medicine. Okay if that's how you want to play it. As she held his cape out, what comes around goes. A, round. She instantly felt something was wrong. One she felt a bit lighter. Two she felt a breeze in places there shouldn't be a breeze. The second she looked down, as her face turned bright red and she did what any girl would do in her situation. She screamed, HHH as she tried to use the cape to cover herself. My clothes. She said as she tried to reach for them only for a hand to appear from the ground and snatch them from her reach. She turned to see Lemillion rise from the ground with her clothes in his hands. You. Yep I planned that. You see my quirk is permeation. It allows me to go through anything or allows anything to go through me. 
I had a hard time getting the hang of it growing up and when I saw your demonstration early I realized you may be able to use other people's quirks but you don't know how to use them. So I figured if you used my quirk you would drop all of your trinkets. As he moved a part of her kimono revealing several rings and other accessories. I'll kill you little son of. She was unable to finish as she noticed she was suddenly in the shade. She slowly turned around to see All Might, Endeavor, Hawks and a very pissed off Ryukyu standing over her. Oh right, without my things. The wall and vines disappeared. You're under arrest, said All Might Fat Gumhow's night eye. He's out cold and his face is covered in blood but other than that he looks alright. How about Ragdoll? Same over here, said Mandalay. She seems to be okay. All right that just leaves. That bitch. They all turned to see Gran Torino helping Bernan who is still covered in a bit of frost with a bit of blood going down her cheek. She's up, said the old man. And not too happy. You. She said most definitely pissed. You knocked me out. You froze me and now I'm going to fry your ass. All Mike could feel a bit of blood in his mouth. We don't have time for this. Endeavor. Endeavor gave a small grunt. Calm down Bernan. He's right, said Gran Torino. We may have stopped one thanks to those three hunters, but we are still in enemy territory. The heroes began to discuss the next course of action. While Tomo carefully adjusted the cape she was using to cover herself, she had successfully wrapped it around herself like a towel or a toga trying to cover her important parts. How humiliating. She thought to herself, I don't mind being defeated. I'm not a fighter but to be stripped in front of all these people, I'm going to kill that brat. She thought as her rage boiled. All Might clapped his hands together. Okay then we split up. One group takes the injured back and takes the girl in, while the rest of us continue. What we didn't decide on that, said Hawks. There could be more like her here and before you say anything I don't care about the odds. What I care about right now is you clearly not telling us everything. Pointing a large feather at All Might earning looks from the other heroes. You know something. The way you two talked was not the conversation of total strangers. You two may not have met but you two were both on similar pages. You're not telling us everything the same goes for you, Gran Torino. Gran Torino and All Might looked at each other having a slight conversion. How did they know about Master? Thought Tomo asking the question herself. They may have found this place by an investigation but Master Yushiro shouldn't exist on paper. Did the previous user of One for All tell him? Did she leave some sort of message? Then is this about her? She's the one that didn't want Master's help. She was the one being stupid. What was that? Tomo looked up to see All Might looking at her, realizing she said the last part out loud. Tomo was seething with rage but spoke slowly and clearly. She was the one who ran to her death. She was the one denied my master's offer. She was the one who was being stupid. Her death wasn't my master's fault. Don't blame him for her own fuck-ups. As she went on her little rent, the heroes looked between her and All Might. All Might was talking deeper and deeper breaths and even though his face remained neutral they could tell he too was getting angry as he was glaring at the girl. You are a delusional little girl. Hopefully a few years behind bars will straighten you out. He said in a deep voice that unnerved the heroes even Endeavor none of them have heard All Might talk like this. Arrest her. I'm going up the mountain. As he turned to the mountain, some of the heroes began to protest as Bernan was the only one willing to comply as she went to grab Tomo, who had her bangs covering her eyes. I didn't think I would have to use my trump card, but I can't let them stop the operation. I won't let them get master and I won't let her suffer. Bernan stopped in her tracks as she saw Kanji appear in Tomo's eyes. What the? Bernan didn't know what was going on with her eyes but she could tell she was about to try something. But it all stopped as they heard a very loud click. In a split second as if time stood still, both girls saw a smoking bullet fly in between them. The group of heroes and Tomo were engulfed in a smoke screen. The heroes on instinct moved out of the way and tried to get out of the smoke screen. Though before they could something really strong and really fast cut through the smoke screen making a beeline towards Tomo. Some of the heroes tried to intercept only to have a powerful whip quickly grab and toss them. Fat Gum got in front of Tomo and blocked a kick. The smoke screen lifted enough for him to see his opponent revealing a blonde girl with glasses. Another kid. She raised her right arm holding the whip as it wrapped around her arm and glowed. All crud. Armored heart punch. She yelled as she hit Fat Gum making him fly to the edge of the clearing. Tomo are you okay? Oh yeah. Yelled ye from the tree line. Don't worry Tomo your badass backup has arrived. You too. A smile of relief creeped onto Tomo's face. You know if my internal clock isn't off it's only been about 12 minutes. After the phone call it took us a minute to get down here. It's a big mountain after all, said Melissa happy to see her friend okay with a glaring problem that shocked her. What happened to your clothes? Tomo spoke through clenched teeth. That blonde little bastard over there took them. Flaring over at Lemillion who was looking a little nervous. If you can just get my necklace it holds the teleportation quirk. I can fix everything from there. Okay I can deal with the perf. She said now glaring at Lemillion but then noticing behind him was a very familiar dragon. Wait that's. Oh dragon lady. Said ye. And they say your trophies don't mount themselves. Wait that's the hero Ryukyu. 
said Melissa waving to Yi to not shoot. She's one of the heroes in Izuku's book. She then scanned the clearing. Those are the wild wild pussycats. That's Endeavor, Hawkson. She stopped as she made eye contact with a particular hero that made her jaw drop. Said hero was doing the same with his eyes almost bursting out of his skull. Uncle All Might, Melissa, said All Might equally as shocked. What's my niece doing here? Ishiro took a sigh of relief as he made his way to the waiting room with Izuku in tow. Sensei how do you think Ari's doing? Holding a water bottle for Yashiro. Yashiro gladly took the water bottle. She's doing great. Really, to be honest I couldn't tell. When working on a quirk it usually doesn't show physically unless the quirk is a mutation or appears on the body. The only thing Uri has is the horn so there won't be much change. Oh then did you really need all those other doctors? Of course Uri's quirk is strong and it changed her physically. I had to be prepared for the worse and you don't need to worry about them. Most of them haven't seen a surgery on someone's quirk. Most of them came for the opportunity just to see it. Some of them were taking as many notes as you. He said, taking a drink of water. That's good. That's one less thing to worry about. He said receiving a quizzical look from Yushiro. I'm kind of worried about the girls. You know too many cooks in the kitchen. You don't need to worry about that. Tomo will keep them in line. He said, pulling out his phone. If she didn't I would get. A call, staring at his phone intently. Sensei, is it Tomo? No I had my phone on do not disturb so I missed several calls from the generals and a few from the president. This shocking is a coup. He would sometimes forget how many powerful connections his sensei had. He was about to ask when the phone began to ring. Yushiro answered quickly. Yes prime minister. Yes I'm doing just fine is there another plague villain? What? What phone call? Balls deep in a dot 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 yes that sounds like he. What? Why? An invasion. Izuku now was very worried. No, no, the military is arriving in five minutes. Understood. I will. Ishiro hung up the phone and put a hand out for Izuku not to ask any questions for a moment so he could take a quick breath. Izuku, I'm going to the kitchen. I want you to go back and tell the other doctors to watch Yuri for a moment and tell them we have a situation and tell them to expect company. After that, meet me in the kitchen. The moment Yushiro was done with his instructions, Izuku bolted into the operation room. While Yushiro for the first time in a while used the breath of lightning to get to the kitchen as fast as he could. He could tell he was rusty. He accidentally hit the wall twice and almost broke the door down when he made it to the kitchen. To his horror there was no one there. It was empty, even the stove was turned off. Tomo he said under his breath. Sensei, said Izuku, arriving to the kitchen. Where are the others? If I had to guess they're at the bottom of the mountain dealing with some uninvited guests. Uninvited. The Yakuza, but how? There are a numerous number of quirks out there that can locate people or places. They most likely used something like that to find us. Tomo felt them come through the barrier and for the same reason I didn't feel them and why she didn't tell me is because I was in the middle of operating on Eri. I'll go and help. Hold it, said Yushiro with a serious look on his face. I'm coming too. This is my home and I'll be damned if I sit on the sidelines while everyone else fights to protect it. They both nodded as they began to race out of the house when suddenly they heard a crashing noise from the side of the manor. They wordlessly changed course and went to the side of the manor. They both stopped in their tracks at what they saw. Izuku had to ask. What is that? That's a scorpion class tank. On my lawn. There's a scorpion tank on my lawn. Why is there a tank on my lawn? Ishiro was about to forget and head down the mountain when they heard the familiar sound of a helicopter. They both looked up to see several helicopters with a lot of firepower flying over helicopter quickly descended and Ammon in a suit jumped down. Mr. Yushiro, are you alright sir? I'm fine agent. Just tell these people to not break anything. There's doctors in the medical wing, and for the love of sanity get that tank off my lawn. Izuku, let's go. What sir? We're here for your protection. Protect the doctors. He yelled over his shoulder as they dashed down the mountain. And get rid of that tank. Oh, Melissa and All Might just stared at each other. What are you doing here? They both said at the same time. Me, I'm supposed to be here. They said at the same time again. How are you supposed to be here? Everyone in the area was watching the two like a comedy skit. All Might has a niece. Asked Nijaira I had no idea. It really shouldn't be that surprising. Said Tiger. A lot of heroes have family. Mandalay nodded. Some just don't advertise it as much. Still it's kind of hard to believe. Said Pixabop. I believe it said Fat Gum rubbing his cheek. Enough of this, yelled Endeavor. All might do something about your niece now. Oh shut up, Flame Face, said Yi who still had her guns at the ready. Don't call me Flame Face. He screamed back making his face fire burn brighter. Ever since you called me that on TV every damn child on the street has begun calling me that. The sound of silence was quite prevalent. Everyone just looked at Endeavor for a moment, while Burnin was looking away from her boss. Wait do you really come here because she called you Flame Face? Asked Rukiu. I came here to put a stop to these vigilantes and to find out who's screwing with the government. But we only found out about the government problem during the meeting. All might hurry up with your niece. Endeavor growled. 
All Might walked over to Melissa and put his hands on her shoulders and kneeled. Melissa, what are you doing here and how on earth did you punch fat gum? I kind of live here. What why? Because dot 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 well dot 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 it's a bit complicated. Um my dad's new friend invited me to stay here to help with my quirk. All Might could feel his blood drain from his face, hoping his hearing was wrong. Quirk. Yeah I have a quirk now and he's been teaching me how to use it without. Uh uncle are you alright? All Might hung his head in shame. This is all my fault. I should have been honest with David. I should have told him. Hey, All Might, think it's time for a tactical retreat, suggested Gran Torino. Some of the other heroes had no idea what exactly was going on but they did like this idea. You're right, said All Might as he stood tall. I thank you all for coming and I promise a proper explanation but first I need to get my niece out of here. Huh, wait a minute, why? Melissa was now very confused on what was going on. I'm sure if I talk to Sensei we can sort this out. Melissa listen to me. That man is not a good person. He's tricked you and your father. Him and everyone who works for him is a criminal. Hey, I will not allow you to insult him, said Tomo, trying to ignore her current dress. Yeah, don't worry, I already got my sights on him, said Yi with her gun now pointed at All Might. I don't take kindly to people who insult my father and the old man like that. He's done a lot for my family. You might be a hero but I can guarantee that he's done more than you will ever do. So just try to take my friend Johnny Bravo and we'll see who's walking away. Johnny Bravo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. No one is going anywhere, said Melissa trying to get a hold of the situation. Uncle All Might. Look I don't know what's going on but I don't think Mr. Yushiro is a bad person. He even offered to help you. Melissa we need to go and I'm not taking any help from. Wait, who? Mr. Yushiro. He owns the mountain. He's the one who's been training me and Izuku. All Might thought for a moment it might be an alias but when he looked at Gran Torino it looked like he was lost in thought. Before he could ask they could hear a loud noise approaching from the distance. The sky became filled with engine noises as several helicopters flew over them circling everyone in the area. What in the fresh hell is this? Screamed Burnin over the propeller noise. Three of the helicopters landed and several soldiers came out surrounding the heroes pointing their rifles at the heroes. I don't think those soldiers are on our side. A man with a crew-cut haircut with a mustache in a high-ranking military uniform came down from one of the helicopters with a megaphone in hand. Attention all of you stand down. I'm General Bakaza. If you do not comply we will treat you as a hostile. Everyone was too stunned to say anything. Some began to silently panic while others began to prepare their quirks. Wait. Came from an unexpected place. Please wait. Look I know we were just fighting but I nor my master want anyone to die today. Especially here where we live. Miss Tomo are you alright and what exactly are you wearing? Asked the general. It's good to see you Mr. Bakaza, said Tomo, giving a small bow. And as you can see a lot has happened today. I can see that. Don't worry we'll arrest these trespassers, so rest easy. What? Yelled Endeavor. We are the heroes here on what grounds are you putting us under arrest? Several of the soldiers actually began to hesitate at Endeavor's point. Several of them were unaware of why they were there and all of them recognized the heroes in the area. What are you going to tell us? Jen. Bakaza didn't like being talked back to. Why you son of... We are the Japanese military. You are heroes and you will follow our orders. That isn't good enough. As Endeavor reached and grabbed Tomo's shoulder against her protest. If you don't give me a proper explanation I will treat the people here as criminals. Shocking the heroes and the soldiers. Don't you dare Endeavor. I will make the order. Flame face. He getting his attention. I won't miss. Pointing her gun at his head. The rifle began to glow. Whether you want to take a bullet is up to you but please make the wrong choice. The tension was reaching an all-time high. No one knew what was going to happen next. The pussycats were considering surrendering and getting medical attention for Ragdoll. The same could be said for those of the Night Eye Agency. Fat Gum and Ryukyu wanted answers but didn't want to get arrested. All Might and Gran Torino weren't leaving without answers and Hawks was about ready to knock Endeavor out before any more blood was shed. What in the hell is going on here? Everyone in the area turned to see Demon Slayer. And a pale kid wearing a doctor's coat. With various people have different reactions. Izuku, sensei, old man, said Melissa and Yi, happy to see them. Mr. Yushiro, said the general with a saluting Yushiro, shocking the troops. Master Yushiro Tomo said quietly but her voice was filled with joy. After hearing this endeavor took his eyes off the two for a second to look down at Tomo. When he looked back he only saw Izuku standing there and then he suddenly felt something grab his arm. He looked down to find the pale boy holding his arm. Yushiro had a look of anger and spoke in a low menacing voice. Let go of Tomo right now, was all Yushiro said. Even though he wasn't gripping Endeavor's arm very hard, his words were enough. Endeavor has been a pro hero for years and not once has he ever felt as much fear as he did looking at the boy in front of him. Every instinct in his body was telling him to run, as if he was facing an ancient beast and for the first time in his hero career he jumped back out of pure fear itself. 
The sudden release from Endeavor threw off Tomo's balance, but before she could fall, Yushiro catches her and gives her a huge, causing Tomo to blush and be a little embarrassed out of the open display of affection. Ma dot dot ma dot 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 master dot. Tomo are you okay? Asked Yushiro with concern in his voice as he broke the hug. What happened to your clothes? After the hug Tomo had turned her face away out of embarrassment. The blonde boy has it. Yushiro turned to a now panicking Lamillion. Yushiro with clear anger on his face forced himself to talk calmly. Boy please give those back. Now, leaving absolutely no room for arguing. Lamillion didn't move for a moment before seeing some of the other heroes nodding him to do so. He quickly walked over to the two holding out the clothes. Yushiro reached into the kimono grabbing the necklace and giving it to Tomo. The second she got a hold of it she quickly activated the quirk and was instantly wearing the clothes that were in Lamillion's hands. Tomo quickly put the necklace on. She then wordlessly dusted herself off before walking to Lamillion and giving him a slap on the face, leaving a solid handprint on his face before returning to Yushiro's side. Feel better? Tomo gave a silent nod to Yushiro's question. Okay with that out of the way. What is going on and why are all of you here? There was a moment of silence as none of the heroes knew exactly how to respond. Who the hell are you brat? What are you? Endeavor asking the million dollar question. How dare you? Said Jen Bakaza in a booming voice, walking up to Yushiro. This man here has done more for this country, nay for the world, than anyone else. You will treat him with the respect he deserves. This only served to confuse everyone else a lot more than they already were and Yushiro could clearly see that. General I thank you for helping me but I think it would help everyone if we explained a few things. The general nodded in understanding. Now I think the best way is with a demonstration. Ye if you could. Bang. As Yushiro head was blown to bits off of his shoulder. That should do it. Yae yelled both Melissa and Izuku. While causing Tomo to pinch the bridge of her nose. The general stood there with his mouth wide open as he stared at Yushiro's headless body. This also caused many soldiers to now aim their weapons at Yi and made many heroes to go back to a fighting stance. What the hell? said Rukiu in shock. I thought they were on the same side, said Sun Eater to try to keep his lunch in. Okay I did not see that coming, said Hawks. Bubble Girl just kept staring at the body. Um should we arrest her now or ah? Uh? She began to scream as the headless body began to move. Everyone in the area watched as the body stood up without a head. Then they all watched as veins and bones began to grow out of the body and form a skull then muscle and then skin. After the head was restored, Yushiro rubbed his eyes before turning and glaring at Yi. I was going to ask for you to make me a knife. I wasn't going to ask you to blow my head off. Yi simply shrugged. It worked didn't it? As the noise of a few soldiers vomiting could be heard along with the thud of one of them fainting, Yushiro took a deep breath before turning around and looking at the shocked faces of all the heroes. So questions. All the heroes were too shocked to form words. Silence was their response as for Bubble Girl in particular it was fainting. Yep that sounds about right. Okay let me go over the basics. My name is Yushiro and I'm 223 years old. My quirk is a form of hyper-regeneration and because of this I haven't aged in years. I've been alive since the dawn of quirks. Any questions so far? Hawk slowly raised his hand. So you've lived here for 200 years. Not the entire time. You see back in the day when quirks first appeared the populace was scared. Many people with quirks were attacked and I was no different. This place originally belonged to a military instructor who turned it into a safe haven for the first quirk users of Japan. He was able to use his connections with the government to have this place disappear from the maps. When he passed he asked me to watch over the place. This was mostly a lie but it was a believable lie and it's the same one they told Melissa when she first stayed. So why have you been hiding? Asked Fat Gum. I haven't exactly been hiding. You see back in the day no one really understood quirks some people thought it was magic. When people found out I was somewhat immortal they tried to find a way to use me so they could stay young as well. That's when I found out my blood is poisonous, extremely poisonous. Even up to 70 years ago people had the insane idea that if you drink my blood you will somehow gain eternal youth. It didn't work and I inadvertently killed a warlord and all of his followers. This included his captive civilians. After that I thought it would be best to stay and work in the shadows for a bit until the world got far enough with quirks to understand that they don't work like that. Demon blood was highly toxic. If ingested, hope someone is nearby for your last few words. Gran Torino had a question this time. What kind of work did you do in the shadows? Oh a few projects here and there that will hopefully help humanity a little. A little, said Bakaza sir you don't have to be so modest. You developed the technology for nerve transplants. You helped create I Island. Heck you even convinced the government to bring over the hero agency system from America. Our country would have most likely fallen apart without your genius. Ishiro gave the general a tried look. Thank you General Bakaza. Ishiro was about to continue when a new helicopter was heard overhead. 
As it landed everyone could see Helicopter 1 on the side of it. The presidential helicopter. As it was landing Bubble Girl decided it was time to wake up asking what happened. Someone catch her up to speed. As he walked to the helicopter as the Prime Minister stepped out with his security. Prime Minister Yubai Ashiki. The president looked like a young man with black hair and pale eyes. Mr. Yushiro I'm so sorry for the situation. Has it calmed down at all? Somewhat. We're talking now and from their reactions so far they had no idea who I am. The Prime Minister narrowed his eyes as he approached the heroes. Okay, I'll ask this once why are you all here? All of the heroes shifted in place like children getting scolded by their parents. All Might decided to speak. Mr. President we are because we were investigating the vigilante Demon Slayer. Why? I checked the police records and there were no investigations into Demon Slayer authorized. Are you kidding me? Said Gran Torino. A kid shows up and for months defeats criminal after criminal and you don't think that's suspicious? Not to mention the mysterious person who pays for everything from the medical bills to the construction and damages. Do you have any idea how much that cost? Way too much money to seem legit. That got Izuku's attention. Really? Was it a lot of money? The heroes looked at him. You don't know. Izuku shook his head. Bubble girl. Ooh yeah. Bubble Girl took out her phone that had a backup of all the info on her phone. Here, showing Izuku and the others of the amount. For a moment everyone was afraid Izuku's eyes would pop out of his head. Um are you okay it's just an estimate. Izuku looked at Yushiro with his face still in shock. Is. This. Accurate. Izuku for your own sake please blink your eyes. They look like they're going to fall out. As he took a quick glance at the phone. Oh wow that's actually really close. Just 2 million shy of the actual amount. The next thud they heard was Izuku collapsing to the ground with foam coming out of his mouth. Izuku said his friends as they checked on him. He took a look at the phone. Wow, old man, how do you have that kind of money? Well I have had a few investments that have gone quite well. Some of them are well over a hundred years old. That combined with a few patents and royalties I have and the fact that I don't need to eat to live and I make a lot of things myself. It all kind of builds over time. Oh and whenever I get asked to go somewhere most of the time the trip and all expenses are paid for. So in a nutshell with my life still it all just builds itself and I use several different accounts just in case the bank it's in gets shut down or robbed. A lot of things were making sense for the heroes right now, which made some of them feel a little guilty. It took a moment but Izuku came back to his senses. When he did he began to apologize to his sensei and offered to pay him back over the next hundred years. Though most there knew that wouldn't be nearly enough time to pay the money back. Then Yushiro shocked them all by informing him that Izuku Barley took more than 1% of his total amount in the bank. Yeah I don't spend a lot of money so I forget how much of it I have. I should donate more. What about your mansion on the mountain? I built it. I've been alive for a long time and I've had a few friends who've helped here and there but a majority of it was built with my own two hands. I get bored every now and then. So you're not a villain then? Asked Nijaya raising her hand. Who's manipulating kids? What? No, said Yushiro, wondering why heroes brought kids to his mountain. Is that what this is about? You think I'm some sort of villain operating from a mountain? Kinda. I mean how are we supposed to know that you are what the Prime Minister's doctor, assistant, what are you exactly? Again way too much money to be legit. Repeated Gran Torino interrupting Nijire's question. But definitely enough money to manipulate the government. The Prime Minister stepped forward at what he considered a bit of an insult. You shouldn't underestimate the government. We aren't that easy to manipulate as you may think. As for Mr. Yushiro here, think of the country as a village. I would be the chief, heroes as warriors, and the people as the villagers. In this analogy Mr. Yushiro would be the elder, the one everyone goes to for advice and a person who's respected from every other village in the world. People come far and wide for his advice or help with medicine. Even though elder is technically not an official job in the village. Oh I get it. He's smart so you got him for help when you or someone else screws up. Okay moving on said the president getting the conversation back on track and ignoring the girl's small insult. This does not excuse any of you for breaking into private property and attacking the residents. Wait, Mandalay said getting their attention. Look I know we're in trouble and all, but Ragdoll and Night Eye are out unconscious because of the fight and need medical attention. She pointed at the two. What did you do to them? Tomo realized she was asking her. Izuku, these two her have vision quirks correct. Yes, Sir Night Eye has the power to see into the future and Ragdoll has a quirk called Search that allows her to locate a person and find their weak points. It was most likely a temporary quirk overload. Their quirks allow them to read or see what quirk that a person is going to use. I technically use several quirks that teleport objects or change the space around me. I changed them so rapidly I overloaded their quirks by accident. This was also a lie they made up just in case this situation happened. The real reason is because their quirks reacted to Tomo's demonic power. Though it looked like the lie worked and satisfied most of them. 
Those who knew the truth knew that this would have to be something they would need to handle in the future. Mr. Prime Minister, said Yushiro I know what these heroes did was wrong but I don't think we need to deal out the punishment immediately and don't get me wrong they will pay for this. And no I don't want their money nor do I want their licenses taken away. We all know that would cause more problems than it would solve. But I do have a few ideas on how they can pay me back for this. Though for now we should tend to the wounded and I have to return back to my house. I was in the middle of surgery and my patient needs me. Surgery, said the president, making some of the heroes nervous. Yes I was taking a break but I need to get back to it. Excuse me sirs, said Bakaza in his usual booming voice. I just got a report from the soldiers at the temporary roadblock. There are several police officers outside along with the chief of police himself. What the president couldn't believe this. I can't believe I've lost this much trust with my own people. No this is partly my fault, said Yoshiro I owe these people and the country an explanation. It's time for me to return to society. Are you sure? Yes, I've been hidden long enough. Please inform the other cabinet members and the other world leaders that this may concern. I'll give you more details later this week. Very well. You've given us help whenever we have asked for it. We will back you any way we can. He said as he bowed to Yushiro. Yushiro bowed back. Thank you. Now then, all of you heroes expect to hear from me in the future. I will be in contact with all of you and I look forward to speaking with Night Eye and Ragdoll when they wake up. As he turned to Bakaza. Now would you mind escorting them off the mountain and please get the tank off my lawn? A tank, said Yi grinning from ear to ear. No Yi we are not keeping the tank, said Yushiro making her pout. Also for blowing my head off, you're weeding the garden this week, causing her to complain. Do it again and you're cleaning the whole house, causing Yi to gasp in horror. Wait, they turned to see Mandalay being blocked by the general and a few guards. What happened during the muscular incident? She shouted out, clearly desperate. Ishiro raised his eyebrow as he looked at Izuku who was shocked by the question. Izuku, how about you escort them down the mountain? Izuku nodded and began to follow the heroes. Ishiro also noticed Melissa fidgeting in place. You can invite All Might up if you want. I'm sure you two have much to talk about. Really, of course and tell him to bring Gran Torino as well. But first I would like a word with all of the heroes, said a clearly unhappy prime minister. Oh, so what would you like to know? Asked Izuku, walking alongside Mandalay. First of all I would like to apologize for all of this today. I didn't think things would go this far. It's fine. I know Mr. Yushiro as a whole is a big secret but he's a really nice person so I doubt he'll make your punishment too harsh, said Izuku, kind of worried what his sensei was cooking up as a punishment. But what is it that you would like to know about the muscular incident? The water hose duo, she said with sadness in her voice and eyes. Could you tell me what happened to them? To be honest, I can't, he said receiving a look of shock. When I got there Muscular was already running away with a massive injury on his face. I chased him down to an abandoned building, but then the building began to fall apart. Did he destroy the support beams? No, it was like the building was turning to dust. The last I saw of Muscular a person in a hoodie showed up right next to him and took him through a black portal. So someone saved him, he's not working alone. That's my guess. After I got out of the building I went to tell the police what happened. That's when they informed me that the water hose duo was fighting him. I never saw them that day. So you didn't see them at all, not even their bodies. No, I'm sorry. Don't be this gives me a little bit of hope that they're still out there. She said looking down and squeezing her hands. Hopefully, were they friends of yours? Family actually. In all honesty I wanted to meet you and ask but this was not how I thought it was going to happen. Sorry again by the way. It's alright. Hey if you hear anything, I'll tell you guys right away. Thanks. Oh, where the hell do you think you're going? Asked the president. Endeavor looked over his shoulder at the president. I'm going home. None of you are going anywhere. As the soldiers made a formation around the heroes as Night Eye and Ragdoll were put into ambulances. Mr. Yushiro may not have punished you right now but that doesn't mean any of you are getting off scot-free right now. If I didn't want to lose Mr. Yushiro's good graces right now I would strip all of you of your hero licenses and have you all arrested for trespassing on a government black site. Melissa was about to interject when Izuku came and put a hand on her shoulder and shook his head quietly. This was not their place. If you're so worried about your precious doctor. Why don't you have him locked away in some lab or on an island with the rest of the lab rats? Did you know we are currently on international land? All of these fields belong to other countries and many more are watching this mountain. When I get back to my office I'm expecting several phone calls from other world leaders as to why in hell did I let this happen. He has more standings around the world than anyone else. Even you all might. He yelled with clear anger in his voice, pointing to the number one hero. The last time someone tried to force him to work against his will there was almost another global war. They learned very quickly it was a bad idea to keep a demon against his will, especially one with many friends and several who want to be his friend. The reason this place isn't under heavy security is out of respect for him and because this place is of great historical significance to the country as the first safe haven for people with quirks. 
people even 200 years ago he helped. He's traveled the world helping millions of lives and putting an end to countless diseases and plagues, even the one that was killing my own family. He said the last part calmly. So when he told me he was training a hero and would pay for all of it, I would be lying if I wasn't overjoyed. With his track record I happily let it happen and not only did we get a fantastic hero in training that already has a better track record than some pros but the government save a lot of money and resources and since Mr. Yushiro was paying for all of it, our economy is having its biggest growth in the past 10 years. Prime Minister Yubayashiki had to take a deep breath after his rant and to collect his thoughts. Before he could continue one of his security details came and whispered in his ear. Sir you have been receiving calls from the President of America, China, the UK Prime Minister and many others. They're all asking about what's going on here. Tell them to give me five minutes and route all calls to my helicopter. He whispered back, before looking back to the group. Okay here's what's going to happen. I will let Mr. Yashiro decide your punishment but for now you're all getting babysitters. In a frustrated voice, as expected almost all of them protested. This is non-negotiable. You will each be assigned an agent for the time being until being informed otherwise. Not only to make sure nothing that happened here today gets out to the public but also to make sure you have a contact with both me and Mr. Yushiro. For now though I want you to go down and tell the police to calm down and I will personally talk to the chief at the station. That is all. General make sure all of them have an extra shadow by the end of the day and that the interns are sent back to the school for now. General Bakaza gave a loud yes sir. And make sure they all understand to keep their lips shut said the Prime Minister as he went towards the helicopter mentally preparing himself. So um, Sun Eater trying to find the right words. Did we fail our internships? General Bakaza looked at the trio. No, we will the school each of you passed. But all of you should be thankful that you're getting a slap on the wrist than spending your youth in Tartarus. Oh, Yushiro was able to make it back in time and finish Uri's surgery. The doctors thanked him for the opportunity before they left. With the help of Yitomo was able to salvage dinner while Melissa gave All Might and Gran Torino a tour of the mansion. Also was able to see All Might's skinny form firsthand. Afterwards Gran Torino got to watch as All Might was buried over the phone by David for causing so much trouble. It only made All Might feel even worse learning that his friend tried so much to help him. He really needed to do something for David after this. Things had finally calmed down for the day for Yushiro as he walked down the hall of his home. Until he looked out the window. What is that tank still doing on my lawn? He yelled as he saw the tank was still there. That loudmouth general forgot to get the stupid tank. He already was halfway dialing the number on his phone when Gran Torino and a skinny All Might walked up to him. I'm guessing it's time to talk. Yes, we have some questions. Don't worry, I'll tell you everything I know and the story of how I met Nana Shimura. 